All right. Uh, we got lots to do today. Uh, it's uh, Makeup Stuff Tuesday. Yeah, we were pondering a few things in the office. You know how Makeup Stuff Tuesday works. Uh, the first hour of the show, pretty much, we uh, we come up with something uh, that's a complete fabrication. Yes. It's completely fake. It's a lie. It's false. And um, we let you in on it, the people that are listening from 6 to 7 a.m. Eastern. And uh, then after uh, 7 o'clock, we just don't mention that it's uh, fake. And we go on and present it as fact. That's right. And uh, people seem to believe this. And the joke is on them because everybody else that was listening early gets to go, tee hee hee, that's funny because it's fake. And we have. And we know it. We've had uh, tremendous success with this little bit of ours. Yes. Gotten us a little press. Uh, Until last week when we tried to tell everybody that there was a Hitler balloon in the, <laughs> in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. No one believed that there was a Hitler balloon in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And we sold it pretty good, too, man. It was really working the Hitler <laughs> balloon angle, and no one seemed to care. We had a nice little angle. We were very vague about what the balloon looked like. I don't know if no one cared or, um, or uh, they didn't believe it. Like, I tend to think no one cared. Yeah. They would welcome the Hitler balloon. <laughs> I think it went a little too outrageous uh, last night. That was a little too uh, out there. So now the challenge Fine is Fine line, isn't it? Now the challenge is on to come up with something that's a little more believable than the yeah. Hitler balloon. So, Patrice, if you have a fake news story, that would, uh, that would be nice. So just think it over. Just something that uh, we could say, and people are gullible enough to start believing, and then they go to work and tell their friends, and that's where the joke happens. Because then the people at work that do listen to the show are like, you're just stupid. Believe in that crap. Yeah, something that people can really grab onto and, and, and chatter about at work. And we're at a loss today, so we might take one uh, for the listeners. Yeah, sometimes the listeners come up with good uh, ideas. I'm thinking maybe we tell everybody that Isaiah Thomas got fired, but that's an easy one. That's sort of niche, too. I mean, uh, of course, uh, it, basketball's pretty big, but you're not going to get everybody talking about it. We want a national story. We want like a national story, yeah. Something like uh, Hulk Hogan is getting a divorce because he was caught having sex with the Blue Meanie. Something <laughs> like that. <laughs> Something, yeah. Maybe a Hulk Hogan divorce. Uh, man on man sex gimmick. with the Blue Meanie <laughs> is causing the divorce with his wife. <laughs> How about Don Imus says something racist again? Ooh, I like that. Hmm. But he's not on the radio yet. Next week he that's, starts. It's a lie. He is on the radio. Yeah, see? People don't know. Ah. On his first day back. Why, why stop with the <laughs> with the little lies? Just the whole big lie. He's like, <laughs> it's fact and it's lie. On his bit. first day back, he threw out the N-bomb eight times in the first hour. <laughs> uh, let's go to the phones. We got uh, Jack in Ohio. Good afternoon to Cleveland. How are you, Jack? Hey, on Hey. Hey. I'm in Cleveland. I'm on XM. I'm listening to you live. All right, Cole. What do you got, man? I love throwing myself out of the bus. You guys caught me on the Hitler balloon. Oh, we got you on the Hitler balloon? You believe yeah, the Hitler balloon? Uh, Thanksgiving Day, we're watching the parade, my wife and family, and I'm telling them, oh, there's going to be a Hitler balloon. You got to look for the Hitler <laughs> You got to wait for it. <laughs> Here it comes, I think. Oh, no, a cat in the hat. Ah, uh, that's great. I thought uh, I thought more people yeah, would, uh, would go with the Hitler balloon thing. But. Yeah. Just because we... we I don't know. We sold it, I, I thought, just right. It could happen. It could happen. Because <laughs> people are like, is it going to be uh, an Adolf Hitler, his face on a balloon? They're like, I, I don't really I know. Don't, we're not sure. We kept it vague. That would obviously be outrageous. There's got to be more to this than we know. Do you think we kept it too vague, or we should have actually described the balloon? It's a 50-foot-high Adolf Hitler giving the um, Sig Heil salute. Yeah. Like, really make it offensive. That might have worked. All right. 37 people died eating Purdue turkeys this past. Uh, you think that'll do it? Yeah, and then we'll have Tom Chisano run in and say, Purdue's a sponsor. <laughs> oh, my God. You went after another sponsor. What are you doing? <laughs> don't you know sponsors don't have senses of humor? I must say, uh, speaking of that, yeah. remember when uh, Jimmy uh, was going off about um, American Telephone and Telegraph? AT&T. Ah, yes. He was going off about that, and Tom came in and said, hey, they're a sponsor. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Jimmy said something like, well, you know, I just had a problem with him, so I, I thought I'd voice it. Uh, well, I got something to say about AT&T. Oh, boy. I got a phone call after that tirade of Jimmy Norton's uh, from AT&T and was explained, they explained everything to me. 
and uh, changed around my billing plan, gave me uh, a credit, and um, gave me a new plan that doesn't charge me extra for uh, certain features that I have that um, they were charging me extra for because it wasn't in my plan. Totally hooked me up. I am completely satisfied with AT&T. How do they get your number? That was a little creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Is this Anthony Cumia from the Opie and Anthony show? Yeah. No, it was a lovely young lady who called up, and uh, she's a fan of the show, apparently. Oh, okay. You know, once they're a fan, they could just dig into their records and find you. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, called me up and, and explained everything. She goes, I heard you had a problem. I just wanted to, you know, and it would be the same thing if I called. Sure. Although, when she called, I wish I would have had 80 buttons she had to push to get to a live person. Uh, that would have been funny. Oh, I'm going to make a <laughs> list of all the people I have problems with so they can call me personally. <laughs> but everything got figured out. And hey, that's pretty cool, I, man. I thank them. All right, let's say hi to Phil in uh, Bayshore, Long Island. What's up, Phil? What's up, man? Phil? <laughs> Phil? Hey. You got me? Yeah, we got you, Phil. You're on. All right. I got a good one for makeup stuff. All right. All right. Kanye West killed the doctor that killed his mother. I like it. That one's going to fly. Oh, I like it. That is Start writing, good. boys. Start writing. That's not bad. I like that one. Because right? everyone's yeah. thinking that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, that's a good one. That's national. It's topical. It's plausible. I like it. Yes. Start Let's writing. go with it. Start That's writing. a good one. Let's go to Jay uh, Big Cat. Jay Big Cat, what's up? Hey, I got a good story to make up. All right. Hillary Clinton names Bill Clinton as a running mate for vice president. Something that people have wondered about. Mm-hmm. We can maybe throw that in as the, as the like, that'll the throw... The red him. herring? Yeah, that'll throw him off the scent a little bit. See, that's what we... Got well, I don't. we don't want to explain all our tricks. Let me mm. let me throw one in there just just in case. Yeah. All right, Patrice. Really give it up. How about we just listeners. really confuse everybody? We'll throw three or four out there today. <laughs> yeah. Why not? The they found Natalie Holloway alive in Thailand. She had been kidnapped. Oh, that is a good one. By by, yeah. by a prostitution ring, and they found her. That's a alive. good one. We got three now. Start writing. Look at that. They've oh, let, They've released that Vandersloot guy. Yeah, make sure you got Vandersloot. Vandersloot in, the in there. Story. Oh boy, you guys are news writers today. Look at look at the newsroom. Look at them. <laughs> Looking in the newsroom. <laughs> copy boy. Copy boy. <laughs> we now go to the Opie and Anthony newsroom. That is a good one. Where's my news ticker, E Rock? Tick tick tick. Tick to tick tick. Uh, let's go to Chris in Jersey. Chris, what's up? Yeah, what's happening, guys? How's it going? Hey, we're doing all right, Chris. All right, cool. Hey, listen, here's one. Barry Bonds announces his retirement and uh, tells all about his steroid use. Well, maybe the steroid thing we should steer away from. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have that then. All right. Thank you, sir. Let's okay, uh, let's say hi to Seth in Maine. Seth, what's up? Hey, what's going on, boys? B -b -b boys. What's going on? Boys, Patrice, what's going on? Hey, I got a, I got something. Maybe number four for your fake news today here. Okay. Um, Maybe sometime back in college, there was a certain um, sort of African-American presidential candidate, uh, Obama here. I heard he might have had some sort of a homosexual experience once back, <laughs> and then he might cast some doubt on his uh, campaign. Well, I, 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 don't, I think I'd fruit. steer clear of that one, too, but... <laughs> oh, come on. No. I, I personally love it. I love it, Seth. All, All right, right, we're in. All right, we'll try to figure out how we can word that possibly one. Possibly word that. Speaking of Obama, uh, the Oprah factor, it's all over the papers today. Yeah. Uh, it's on the front page of our papers here in New York. Uh, well, she's endorsing Obama officially. No well, she's going along racial lines, I think. No surprise there. I think uh, uh, the community would be outraged if she didn't uh, back Obama. And says, can this woman change the face of politics forever? Mm, so. He ain't a book. Huh? I know she sells books, but I don't know if she could sell a president. So you think all those uh, white housewives that, that buy the Oprah book aren't going to buy the... I don't uh, think they're going to buy the black the guy for president. <laughs> I don't think they pick women, though. I'm very surprised she didn't pick women. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that like, well, I'm sure it was very difficult for her uh, decision. Where would I go? She With the women? Pick, she had to pick Hillary. The, I don't the think woman? Or... 
uh, Obama. The race. I, yeah. I think gender is more powerful than race, personally. She yeah. Should've, she should have picked Hillary, right? I don't know who she should have picked, but, <laughs> but I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised if she picked Hillary. Either one, yeah. And I don't think anybody would have called her like. No, nah, no, nah, I don't think she'd have taken heat for that because uh, it doesn't matter. A Republican is going to win it anyway. Well, the latest poll is really saying, is the latest poll is saying that Hillary would lose to every single Republican candidate, <laughs> even a dude yeah. from uh, Die Hard too. Well, except oh, for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's great. I love him as an actor. <laughs> I, I, I think he'd make a great president. He could play a president. I'm just upset. I don't want to see him as a president. I love him. I love him in Die Hard, too. <laughs> he always plays the great boss of whatever he's supposed to be the boss of. Sure. <laughs> poll, poll shows uh, Hillary Clinton would lose to every Republican head to head. Wow. That's coming out today as how well. How many people do they ask? Uh, 10 or 12. And how many people do they represent? Do polls work? Yeah, they seem to. So they represent like what a hundred thousand a person? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you just, they pretty much know who's going to be president five minutes uh, after the voting begins. Yep. Uh, just nope, by they trends, the trends stuff, yeah. Except for the year of the uh, the Al Gore. Well, that debacle. The year of the Al Gore. The hanging chads. Who met the president yesterday? Has any president yeah. ever made a human difference in this world? Like a, just a different, a real difference as a human being, other than that Petsky uh, Lincoln. <laughs> I'm <a> Budinsky. <laughs> Are you saying he's the last president that actually did that? That you remember for doing something, something significant? It, it's significant on a hum on a human level. What about Kennedy? Uh, what did he do? Effing all those broads. That's pretty significant. <laughs> That's how it is. That's pretty significant. And uh, Truman uh, dropping a couple of giant mushrooms. But other than that, <laughs> when did, when, has any president done anything wonderful for this country? Where you, as a regular person, no. go, well, you gotta, I don't think it makes it. You know, there's just a fear of from politicians now. They're too scared to do anything on a human level because too many other humans get upset by it. They're afraid to annoy anybody, so they don't do anything for anybody. <laughs> they just sit there. Like, what's Bush done aside from the, the war? The war is a that's huge his, thing. That's his legacy, man. That is his legacy. Absolutely. He's done nothing but the war. And now he's in the home stretch of his presidency, and he's going to try to get a peace plan together between the... Uh, what he's got, he got Syria in there and Israel and it, it's <laughs> it's such a joke. He's brokering a peace plan as he's just bombing the hell out of a country. That's <laughs> look, you gotta well wherever you're at, you you gotta either you know agree with the war thing or the peace thing. You can't be like juggling both at the same time. If you're into war, be war guy. If you're into peace, be peace guy. Like Jimmy Carter's peace guy. Yeah. Yeah, President I, Bush is war guy. His, war guy. his legacy is that idiot should have been war guy. <laughs> he should have been just 100% war guy. No one is kidnapping any of Bush's citizens. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's just so war guy. As soon as I heard that, he's like, you know, negotiation, negotiating some peace stuff. I'm like, yeah. oh, come on. Stop already. Just because every president before you tried. Yeah, you have to now try. try. He wants to get that picture of the of the guys shaking hands in front of him, right? So he can and smile he, and, and he holds up their both of their fists in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that picture. How many times has that been done? And they're still blowing each other up over there. They're ridiculous. You know, this, yeah. girl, this girl told me why they wear burkas. This this Muslim girl, she's a middle of the road Muslim. Like she's not, but she just said, "Why those women over there wear the things that cover their face?" Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and again, Muslims don't be upset. I'm paraphrasing. Because I just heard this ridiculousness. Oh, boy. Here comes the Imus, man. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's basically true. Um, or oh, we can say this is lie uh, Tuesday. But anyway, <laughs> the, whoever the, the boss is, whoever the Jesus is, or, like for Muslims, yeah, his son like had a pretty wife, and he was turned on by her. And then he made her put on that thing so he would be turned on by his Wouldn't son's get, wife. Wow. If I'm not, if I'm, you can... Fix it up if I'm wrong, but it basically, it's not God said so. It's the dude was horny looking at the I, other, his son's wife. That's or, not far fetched. I would assume that, would that the, there there is a problem if you have to wrap your women up to the point where you can't even look at their eyes. There is a problem with uh, uh, them being being turned on it's by by, even, by women. It's not even a godly gesture. No, it's just a dude. <laughs> God would be able to shut that off. He would be able to go, well, I'm getting a little turned up, but I'm God.
So I, I'm not turned on anymore. You know? But, the, but yeah, to have to slap clothes from the top of their head to their feet. You know, that's a that's a human thing. Thus the la 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 la. You don't know what that is. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's clapping for the women. Is it? Is that how they? They can't show their hands to go. Oh, right. You know, good bombing. So they're all happy and they just go. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> so creepy. <laughs> That's something. All right, let's go to uh, Joby, Jesus. South Carolina. We're heading toward our first break. We want to like uh, make sure we got this makeup stuff Tuesday thing all set before the break. Yeah, because then we got to stop talking about it immediately. Uh, Joby, what's up? Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey. Hey, love the show. Love you guys. Thank you, sir. How's it going on? You got you're great, Patrice. Love you, man. Hey, listen, I uh, got a makeup stuff uh, story for you. Uh, the banning of a favorite Christmas carol. Santa Claus is coming to town because it promotes. Uh, Child pedophilia. The, the child predators. Well, what are the lyrics in there? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go through the lyrics what? real fast in my head. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. Better not cry. You better not pout. Kind of like, don't tell mommy. It is kind of creepy now that you, <laughs> now that you explain a little further. Yeah, it, it is. He sees you when you're sleeping. sleeping. He, he knows, knows when, when you're, you're awake. awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. And don't tell Daddy he you got touched there. Yeah, we we kind of knew that. Kinda got, we kind of get the touching thing. Kind of got that. Thanks, Joby. We'll uh, we'll figure it out. All right. So here we we got uh, the banning of Santa Claus is coming to town as a possibility. Yeah. We got, what else? I'm trying to remember everything already. I like the other one, though. Which one? The original. Uh... Well, throw in, uh, just throw in Isaiah Thomas got fired. Okay. Throw in Isaiah Thomas got fired. What mm -hmm. was the other one? Uh, the shooting. Yeah, yeah, that uh, or killing. Uh, Kanye West. Kanye West, right. Killed, that... the, killed the doctor that... Uh, That's big. Killed his mother. That's a biggie. And what else? What was the other one we told you? Natalie Hall, uh, Holloway. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. It's been, our, was found. That's the newsroom's favorite right now. Oh, it um, is? Yeah. And you're going to have Vandersloot? Yeah. Vandersloot. I can't wait it's, to say Vandersloot when I read the, the AP story. You get to use the word exonerated, too, I think. Exonerated. Nice. And do we want to stick with the Bill Hillary one? Because... Um, yeah, that'll that'll throw everybody off because no one's gonna buy that. Okay, <laughs> you need one in there that throws everybody off. So yeah. if you're listening now, you're in on the gig. Uh, even though we say we like promote till seven, we're gonna kind of like start shutting up about it immediately. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have lots to do today. We gotta talk about the Cougars in uh, Kenya after the break. Unbelievable. <laughs> we gotta uh, and, talk and, about the Cougars. Yeah, not quite the animal story you think. We're talking about desperate housewives. Oh wow! You know. This this is real desperation. And I don't know. It it, it sounds like if you're a, like an older chick, it's not that desperate at all. You're getting what you want. <laughs> I think you're getting a little more than you want. All right, that's your tease. We'll uh, we'll get into that next. It's Opie and Anthony. Uh, good morning. It's Opie and Anthony. E Rock, you should be playing some Quiet Riot right here. Really? The music world is mourning the death of the Quiet Riot dude. Just call him the Quiet Riot dude. The music industry is in mourning this morning. Quiet Riot dude is dead. The lead singer of Quiet Riot. Yeah. Dead at the age of 52. Found in his Vegas home. The white guy? Yeah, and they don't know what caused it. You might remember this uh, this fine song that they redid. Yes, this was Slade's song, right? That's right. I know the song very well. You do, right? That was one of those crossovers yeah, that made it to the black community, right, yeah, Patrice? We yes, did a whole uh, we did a whole uh, hour on that. I know this song. On a past Opie and Anthony show. Let's say hi to Jer uh, Jeremy in Germany. It is a faraway phone call Tuesday. Let's see what uh, Jeremy's all about. What's up, Jeremy? Hey, Owen. I love you. Love the show. You're in Ger uh, Germany. Bamberg, Germany. I just got here Saturday night. Ooh. What are you doing? Well, I'm in the Army. I'm assigned to R16FA. 
Ah, in Germany. Wow, we, we ought to pull our troops out of there. Out of oh, Germany? We, yeah, what are we doing over there? That's, we all Our troops were over in Europe just so uh, the Red Menace wouldn't uh, invade countries. But, I mean, now, just pull everyone back. Nah, Germany, everyone comes home. Germany is the place where a lot of guys go and just kind of... Hang out, waiting to go where they have to go. It's a great like staging area. But but if we don't send people a lot of places, then we don't need a staging area. Shut down uh, uh, a bunch of the bases worldwide. Pull all the soldiers back. I'm 19 years old. I can go into any bar in the country. I'm 19. Oh, okay, well that's important to him. Okay, well then stay. <laughs> what can he, I tell you? He wants to drink. Uh, he beer just wants to drink at from, 19. From those big steins. A stein and sing marching songs. You gotta get a throat <laughs> check up there, buddy. You sound like an old man. <laughs> yeah, when you said you were 19. Jeez. 19. All our eyes went wide. Seen some action. I'm 19 years old. Oh, my God. That sounds like years of redneck. When did you start your redneck? <laughs> years of redneck. He started, he started rednecking at five. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you originally from there, soldier? <laughs> I just wanted to call and say hi. I got to go. It's like 50 cents a minute to call you. Oh, Ooh, that's, that's expensive. All right, sir. You want to say hi to anybody uh, at home? Yeah, I just want to say hi to my mom and dad. I'm sorry I missed you guys for Thanksgiving. Why would oh. you blow off Thanksgiving if you were going to Germany? I just, I had to take a plane, man. I, it's my job. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you were like, you know, blowing off the family for some broad or something. He sounds like he's trying to be mysterious. He wants us to ask him something that he can't yeah. tell us. I know. <laughs> yeah, right? Ah, can't G tell you that. G10 classified. He's yeah. like, I can't, I gotta go. I can't say these things. Took a plane, fellas. Why'd you call, lonely? <laughs> he says a minute. He's the loneliest spy I've ever heard. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, I'll call you guys again next Tuesday, okay? All right, sure. man. Yeah. He just wants to be able to say, oh, that's classified. <laughs> gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> right. He's dressed hey, like Carmen San Diego. <laughs> was it Carmen San Diego? Was Carmen it? San Diego. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? <laughs> All right, Godspeed there, Jeremy. Thanks. All right, buddy. <laughs> there he is. Uh, wow. Sean Taylor, dead. He died? Yep. NFL's Sean Taylor, dead. Oh, my God. Gosh. Uh, Redskins safety Sean Taylor's died a day after he was shot in the leg. Oh, my gosh. They hit an artery, man. Yeah, yeah shot high up in the leg, uh, hit an artery, and caused a significant blood loss. Oh. When I first heard it on ESPN, I'm thinking he must have got shot right in the chest. And then I find out it was an, it was uh, the leg. and it was Yeah, in the artery. movies, you get shot in the leg. You're like, ah, I ah. could keep going. Yeah, but there's get some, all mad there's and stuff. Artery. You know, somebody left a knife in his bed. A week early, they broke in his house and just left a knife in his bed. Like what the hell is that about? Like that's personal, dude. Some they, somebody was after this dude, man. Yeah, he didn't make it through the night, huh? And I bet nope. when they shot him, I bet you it's something it's some because they, you know, no one shoots you in the leg. And just like you said, a lot of people with guns, they watch movies, so it's just like, yo, I want my money, or yo, you yeah. want my girl, or da da da. Bow. Shoot him in, in the, the, the leg. leg. He's this, okay. This is some type of warning, to let you know I'm serious. But there's a nasty. There's a major, there. major artery in there. <laughs> so rethink your leg warning shot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Plus exactly. It's now is now somebody looking for the murderer of the starting Pro Bowl safety of the Washington Redskins. Yeah, now this guy was a superstar. He's in bed with his girl. You know. Mm. You know. Damn. They said he, he was one. Died. Of the, they said he was one of the hardest hitters in the NFL too. Sean Taylor, man, he was the fourth pick in the in the, in the draft. Yeah, in uh, two thousand what four three? I don't know. He was good. The dude oh, could man. play. Man, I know he's been sitting out the last few games, but with an injury. Yeah, but he, the dude shot him in the see see what I'm saying? Man, what the hell? Yeah, if you watch too many movies, I'm gonna shoot you in the leg. Is a little warning. Yeah, it's a warning. You stay away from. Oh boy, he sure is bleeding. <laughs> you know. Oh, but hey, I'll shoot here. you in the leg. Oh boy. Lost oh, mind. that thing is spurting. Now they're saying he was shot in the groin area? In the leg. Upper, upper leg, leg. Upper leg, leg yeah, groin. Tony There's, artery, Tony's yeah. helping us out saying it was the upper leg near There's the groin. A, yeah, your femoral artery. I believe they call it the uh, femoral artery. Is that the artery that uh, fills up the balloon? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> no? Damn. That's not the artery that's used to fill up the balloon? No, no. <laughs> That's a big one, though. you got to have a big pipe there to uh, carry the blood down to your foot. Wow. You know, it's got to start out pretty big. Well, that's breaking news because I, I got an, we got an update just before we went on the air. 
They didn't have anything on him. No, that just came in. Is that true? It's on CNN.com. Yeah, it's true. If it's on CNN. We tell yeah. the truth here, uh, Patrice. What are you talking Say, about? CNN.com. And look, there it is. Look for yourself. Sean Taylor dies in Miami. That's it. Wait a minute. Friend says. Well. Friend says. I mean, come on. Sean Taylor. I'll wait till I see. Can we get it on the sports uh, channels here? Uh huh. Yeah. Jesus. All right. Uh, moving on to other things. There. We'll we'll get more info. Well, there's not much there. I mean, he got shot and he blood he bled to death basically, yeah. right? Yeah, but it's it's not going to just be. So I know it's not going to end up just being uh some random tiptoeing in your house and shooting. No, nah, I know they're talking about like burglar burglary or some kind of robbery it's thing. Not, that, nah, that's that's, that's, that's personal. personal. Yeah, something. Yeah. Like, which is the, endor is the endorsement for you sleeping with your big pistols. That's right. You got to sleep with your guns. Sleep with your guns. <laughs> and your cab partition on your front, in front of your doorway. <laughs> yeah, the cab part. One of those, uh, what's that What's that movie uh, with Jodie Foster? Um, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I need a, uh, the panic room. Oh, the panic room? <laughs> I, got, I need my panic room. This panic house. No, I, I, need a kitchen. I do have a pullback point. Thank you, sir. In my house, I have a retreat point. What's a pullback point? That's like your uh, the people that aren't paranoid. That's your rally point. <laughs> that's where you go your, when your rally point. Yeah, that's that's where you go. You pull you pull back, and that's your last resort. And what's your code? And and for everybody in the house, your cat and your girlfriend to get to that rally point. That's like oh man, rally point, rally point, being overtaken, zips in the wire. <laughs> Un unleash, unleash hell on my paws. <laughs> <laughs> Been a lovely effing war. <laughs> a pullback point. See, I got my pullback point, which is um, my uh, my uh, gigantic walk-in closet in the bedroom. See now, now the door to the walk-in closet. Right, right to uh, one side of it is my cover point. That's where I have a complete um, uh, line of sight. He's figured all this out. Just and, listen and, to how and crazy over, he is. Overlapping fields of fire yeah. uh, into the door coming into the bedroom. No one can enter my bedroom when I am at this cover point. I have full cover. I am behind a wall. I have full cover. And anyone coming in the bedroom door is completely exposed to my fire. What if they have marble bombs? Marble bombs? The bombs that roll like marbles into your closet. If they have that stuff, then I'm dead. You Take it. Die. Okay. Yeah, no God, one, God bless. No you. one has right. gotten marble bombs during a home invasion. <laughs> they get choked with phone cords. They get pistol whipped. It, no one's marble bombing. Yeah. So I haven't taken a defense up for marble bombing, but I will do a little research if into they, it. If they use that James Bond crap, then that, yeah, take whatever you want. But I, uh, I so I have a, a point where I am taking cover. If somehow, I don't see how this is happening, I get overrun, I can back off into my walk-in closet, leaving just one entry point, and then have to pile the bodies up at the door. Now, let me ask you this. Yes, sir. What's your warning system? Uh, I have I have an alarm. Against tiptoes. Oh, I have an alarm system. He's, he's got an alarm that system. That thing is going to so, so let and, me know someone's in the house. Immediately when the alarm goes off, you are in the closet. I, no, no, head. I'm at my cover point next to the closet with a bead drawn on the door to the bedroom. Now, I'm undercover. But if they got heavy fire, then you If you it's fall a back. few guys with some real heavy fire and I have to pull back, I could pull back to my closet let, and and that's where I have more guns in the closet. Let me ask you this: Can you survive a Scarface scenario? Uh, I wouldn't play it. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't play it like Scarface did. I wouldn't play it off like Scarface did. No, I'm not gonna stand there and get shot. So you would lose to Marble Bombs and the Scarface scenario. No, I think I could play out the Scarface scenario for a while, for quite a while. After you kill your sister's boyfriend, yeah, and then. And then I have to. And, she, and she's in a sexy gown saying, "Yeah, Tony, Tony." Dawn, Dawn has to buy it in the sexy gown. 
<laughs> my poor sister's got to buy it. A Scarface scenario. With That's that a good big, question. big head of hair. Scarface and, scenario. You don't just stand up by the railing though and start like shooting and go, "Come on, come on!" You know, that's silly. I have a funny feeling hope that this ass would get killed in his sleep. <laughs> oh as, no! As the alarm goes off and you just go, and uh, I feel I'm all groggy. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, People uh, open up on me <laughs> <laughs> with a pistol right to your stupid head. That's, all this preparation. I'm up. <laughs> and there's nothing that'll save you. <laughs> it's going to end up shooting um, someone close to him. They just no. want to come over with an apple pie. No, no. First of all, I will always identify my target. I would never. I have I have lights on my guns. Of I have night vision. Of course you do. I have holographic sights. Of course you do. I, I uh, Believe me, I have equipment. You have a silencer that's made out of a potato? No, I don't have the potato silencer. I want noise. I want noise. To let them know. If I fire, let's say... What's your little friend? My little friend? What gun is your little yeah, friend? Say hello to your... All right, right, is, uh, right, right now it's the gauge. The gauge, all that's right. your little friend? The 12 gauge is great for home invasion, especially with a door. He's, he's figured all this out, Patrice. <laughs> if I take cover by the door, someone's coming in the door, I'm hitting them. And I don't want a lot of collateral damage. If I pull out uh, my AR-15, you know, there's going to be uh, uh, rounds flying through the walls. And it may know? hit your neighbors. My, right. And then I got my uh, AK. I got AK the AK. is another one that could uh, hit your neighbors. I got the AK-47. Yeah, that's another one. But those are in the closet. How about your 50-50 on top of the that's room? My li that's my, like, my, my, my fallback point. Then I, br there's no more rules. Then I, gotta wor I can't worry about collateral damage. I'm shooting through the door with both of those guns. I will have the AK and the AR, one in each hand, and just firing through the door. So the, the gauge is it's, it's friendly... To the neighbors, but yeah. very deadly to the invasion. Exactly. If the, if someone's wa if someone comes through that door, that bedroom door, he is getting at least a groin and lower belly full of of and twelve. You got him in places where shot. it's just like you can press a button, it snaps out, or it's hanging somewhere. Or it's all I have to do. He doesn't want it. Is roll off the bed. Yeah, he doesn't want to tell you where his guns are. I roll off the bed, Safe and that thing is everywhere. in my hands. Yeah. It's under the bed. In my hands, and I'm at my cover point. It's under the bed. Like No. The Hold on. Someone's no, saying that's, no, not, no, no, no. that's not cover. Mike in Connecticut, go ahead. Hey, guys. How you doing? All right, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing really good, really great. Listen, the, there's a huge difference between cover and concealment. What you've got in your, in your spot there is you've got concealment. But anything, even a, even a center fire handgun round will go right through that. You've got to get cover. You've got to have, you're, you're referring to it as cover, but you need to have cover. What you've got is you're hiding out, but anybody can shoot right through the walls. First of all, uh, it's, it is concealment. Uh, they won't be looking for me there. When they come in, I will have the element of surprise. I will be hidden, and they will be completely exposed walking through the bedroom door. Once that door, once they uh, uh, walk through that door and are identified as hostiles, I open fire. Now, where's your bed in, in relation to the door? Uh, it's, where's your head? It's it's uh, uh, the furthest point from like the when door. You look, so to see your front door, you look down at your feet, you look over to the right, yeah, you it's look pretty much to the left. Straight ahead. Yeah, yeah, down. Yeah, so make, down at your feet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, and something else to add to this. And I could see completely down my hallway. I could see, like, I could see pretty far. You see what you're doing? Open or down close? The bedroom door. Uh, sometimes open, sometimes closed. Got I like leaving off. a little mystery. You got to throw them off. A little mystery and there. A, a, little, uh, a little fact, Anthony... Uh, Supposedly is building a pool in the backyard, but I I, I believe at this point it's a moat. You think it's a moat? <laughs> I, I think it's uh, a moat with oil. He's got the pool. <laughs> he's he's taking meetings with a pool company off and on for the last month, but I think they're installing a moat at this point. <laughs> Can you dodge bullets? Can you do a little matrix thing? Uh, no, I don't think I'd be doing any matrix. No, trying to like oh, th well that would be some cool stuff. Running sideways on the walls. Can you do some deep Just back bends? Firing off. How about a little back bend? Th yeah, bend back. Watch the round just miss me. I pop up. Wham! The guy's gone. Do you guys sharpen tree twig uh, booby traps? Nah, uh, no, uh, punji stakes. <laughs> no, I don't have any of those. <laughs> they toss. They're just sharpie sticks. It's they're sharp. he knows all the time. I, uh, I don't. I don't have those. But <laughs> he studies this crap late at night. 
when he should be sleeping. I do yeah. have some bayonets and swords if uh, no, you know no if, if I'm attacked by um, I don't know uh, a, a knight. <laughs> I can fend him off with a sword or a rapier. Why are you this paranoid, man? When did you is this really about? paranoia? Look, is man. it real? Let's think realistically here. That, is this the paranoia? Way, the way you live in, it just sounds. It just sounds like something's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is it nothing. This doesn't sound sexy at all. Like I, I enjoy these kind of conversations, but it just doesn't sound sexy to live like this. I'm, is I don't I have live he like healthy this. paranoia, but. You, you're going to kill somebody. I don't live like this. I don't drill. I don't, you know, go through things. I just am prepared so that if I'm in a situation where there's a home invasion, all I could think of when I hear of a home invasion is the fact that whoever is being invaded and that, that phone cords around their neck or the daughter's being assaulted or, or the wife is or the, and the husband's being pistol whipped is the one thing that guy is saying, and I know it, is God damn. Damn, I wish I had a gun. I wish I had had a gun right when those mother effers walked in that door. I could have defended my family. And that's all I'm talking about. I don't, I don't, I don't pick up my guns every day and go, yeah, come on in, baby. Come on. You're all dead. Are you feeling okay? I don't okay? say that. Are you feeling okay I'm today? I'm fine. Are you sure? Yeah, why? <laughs> You're out of your mind. No, it's just to have it there. I never, I is, never is, heard you speak this fast. It's in, in very my life. safe. All right, take a deep breath. It's, it's okay. It's much more safe. It's okay to know that it's there. All right, breathe. Than to have to worry and not have it there if you need it. I live in a a a, a, a county. That has had many home invasions. What is your what is your um, description of your your assailants? Your uh, your possible assailants. My in possible mind, assailants in my mind. You envision. Okay, it's the exact same description of every single assailant from every single home invasion that has happened in Nassau County. It can't be black. Of course it is. Black people in Nassau County don't come up in the home and they go from Hempstead. Patrice, I got to back him up on this one. It's always black guys. Yeah, they go from Hempstead and Uniondale, and they drive to the nicer neighborhoods. Bla they a, home a car, invade. A car full of black guys. How, yeah. many, how many are there usually? Usually, uh, three. And then on driving average, driving through Nassau County, I, I can't yep. drive through any of these counties. <laughs> Without ever getting pulled over for for no reason, they go to certain houses that are close to escape routes, uh, major highways, places. things like that. The, well, they, uh, not close. There's another but, there's another scam that happens on Long Island where uh, pe people will follow you home. Yeah, they will pick you up one. on the Long Island Expressway. They see, your, they see your nice car. They know the exits to the nice neighborhoods, and they follow you right to your driveway. That ain't happening. And rob you right in your driveway. I got eyes in the back of my head. What's your Preparation there. I have. Uh, How much a, does it cost to build a a bat, like a bat Batman cave? down drive down <laughs> in the driveway into your home underneath a button that you push <laughs> where you drive down and it comes back up. I don't need it. You know why? I look every day going in and out of my garage, and I have. A, a, first of all, I got the camera in the back of the Escalade. So now when when uh, in the morning when that garage door is going up I I I am for, I start the car first put it in reverse now I see my camera Are you and all away? I see is the hold garage Hold on hold on are you giving away too much info? No 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 right. and, and and then I see the garage door go up and I'm looking I'm looking at that camera that's all I'm looking at If I see anybody creeping in I gas that thing and it's in reverse already Wham I'm out of there they ain't getting me but they get boom! I'm out of there. But they get your girl that's still in the house. No, because the door is locked. Ah, uh, see, he's the door is locked. I have like an airlock type is, seal. This is it's, he's not well. There are, I are know, I love it. There, <laughs> there it's are awesome. steps that you take. You don't leave one door open, and, and then open another one. It's got to be like an airlock. You have to lock this one before you open this one. That way, people aren't just running into your house. And there's an acceptable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like it's almost an acceptable paranoia, like it's like it's acceptable, mm -hmm. and it, and he's very clear and very paranoid. Right. I've thought it out, but there, I've it all well thought out. out my defense. I am not going to be one of these guys he's, that uh, that has a, a a cord around his neck, going. I wish I would have thought about this. 
All he's doing is using his video gaming skills. and uh, Well, of course. you got to use video gaming skills. It's a first-person shooter. And applying You're going to be shooting a person, and it's going to be in a first-person perspective. He's just applying it to his real life. That's yeah. all, Patrice. That's all he's doing. That's, it's more than that. Oh, yeah, he's completely yeah, nuts. you got to keep guns We're all whispering. everywhere. We're all whispering behind his back, trust me. We're guns all, all over the place. There's that way of, you're never taken by surprise. There's a lot of chatter about Anthony when he's what not around. What if I around. just came to visit you unannounced? <laughs> That's fine. You're, you would be crazy. I'm not. Let me tell you something. <laughs> With the color of your skin, going I unannounced am, to Anthony's no, house would not be a good no, idea. No, yo, Anthony, no. yo, it's me. <laughs> Look outside, nigga. I have, I have uh, uh, people of color at my house uh, a lot. Yeah. People of color? They yeah. deliver things. <laughs> they deliver, like, furniture. Um, I have uh, uh, Mexicans that come in, and they clean the house on I, a weekly what basis. What about the furniture deliverer that looks around your house and goes, yo, this is a nice house, man? I, they've said that. Oh, boy. Where they go, this is a nice house, man. I make sure that where anything is being delivered... I put down my copies of uh, Guns and Ammo, and I stick a gun in the corner, just kind of sitting there, and go, yeah, it goes right there. So they know I am an armed well, citizen, and it's going to be a fight getting into my house. Well, I don't get that to the gun before you. you. Yeah, I think no, that makes can't. them think, oh, sh oh, we got a gun now. Right. We can get a gun. No. This dude got mad magazines. He got a lot of magazines. No. He got a lot of guns. He got a lot of exactly. stuff. Exactly. So it, it, and I'm going to steal a couch I just delivered. They would rather break into a house with some old people <laughs> that are going to be cringing and bleeding than break into a house where they know somebody is an armed right. citizen. Uh, we gotta take a break. I mean, we can. This is unbelievable, man. Oh, this is this. He discusses this from time and believe to time. me, I I would. I am not reckless. I would look. I identifying your target is nah. number one priority. You're not reckless with a bunker in your bedroom. That's not reckless. <laughs> it's <laughs> not reckless. It's safe. Hey, we got I'm audio safe. of Anthony Do starting you? his car <laughs> and leaving to go to work. Listen oh. to this. Atomic batteries to power. <laughs> Turbines to speed. <laughs> Roger. Ready to move out. <laughs> <laughs> That's All right. Hey, we gotta take a break. We can continue with this after the break, no problem. Because uh, you got the phones lit. <laughs> Do you practice how long you can hold your breath in the bathtub? Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, he 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 puts his head underwater, but he has, he has just one little straw popping up through the bubble bath. That's it. And breathing. By the way, we got Lydia from Ocean uh, Oceanside. She's on the phone. We'll talk to her next because she's a psychologist and she says Aunt really is crazy. Oh, okay. Make sure she goes nowhere. We I'll want to talk, talk to, to her. Next. It's Opie and Anthony. She needs to do something. She needs to mix it up. And well, uh, this is one of those rash moves that I think uh, probably boost her up in the uh, in the polls. There you go. Also on the way, we're going to talk about cougars on the hunt in Kenya. And not uh, the cougars that you would expect to be on the hunt. No, you know. Uh, yeah. Cougar hunting, you know, older women looking yep. for younger guys. Well, the older white women are going to Kenya for young black. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, this a great, great uh, uh, piece on that in the paper today oh, here yeah. in New York City. Remember Ginger from yesterday? Yeah, she was the, uh, the woman that doesn't like guys playing video games. Well, we did a whole thing on video games yesterday, and she was like boring, and she was kind of a... I didn't like her. I told her right to her face that I, yeah. I just didn't like her whatsoever. She doesn't understand uh, guys that play video games. Right. Well, uh, she's on the line. She wants to say something. And then we also have Lydia, the psychologist who thinks Ant is really crazy. And then we have a crazy. guy that actually killed two people in a home invasion. So <sighs> we got a lot, uh, a lot of things to get to right now. Ginger, what's going on? Yeah, hi. I really wanted to apologize for that generalization about... Men playing video games. It turns out it's really just Anthony that's the turnoff. Oh, why is Anthony a turnoff? Thank you. Well, because you're like a, with your home invasion thing. You're like a kid in junior high who who got money. What? Please explain. explain. That you're outfitting your home, your video games, your home invasion, you're backing out of your driveway. You're like a kid. You're not a, like a man. A kid. Wait, wait. Don't you? Don't you? You don't see at all that I'm just concerned about uh, uh, safety. Yeah, you live in Long Island. You know you're not in Iraq. Uh, have you have you looked at the news, Ginger? At all? Have you looked at the news? I have you seen room. that Nassau County has had nothing but uh, uh, home invasions? 
Nothing but home invasions? Well, I haven't noticed that. Well, well, there have been a lot of home invasions. What's a lot? Okay. A lot? Yeah. What is Enough. What? Let me tell you something. Enough uh, is a different word than uh, a lot. What's, how much? Uh, let me say pro figures? It probably, figures. probably a few a week. But but who cares? The average is three a week? Let's even say it's one a week. I don't care. That's one too many. I don't want to be the guy. 52 home invasions a year happen in Long Island? No, there's probably more I than that. Believe. But I, I'm I not going to be that. the guy. Hey, 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 Ginger, if you if your house got broken into... Uh, and you were ready to be attacked. What would you do? What what's what's your like spontaneous plan? What would you do? Well, I'd probably be attacked. Yeah. Broken. Okay. Yeah. So what's the dumb what's 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 this uh, uh, dumb move I'm doing by actually being prepared? Well, I, I'm also being prepared. I mean, I have nothing against guns, and you know, in the home. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, it's just a little much. It, what is a little much about being prepared and fighting fire with fire what in that you're way? Saying, is there a couple of hidden knives, maybe um, a, a butcher knife? I don't want to get into a knife maybe fight with somebody. In a, in a lock box. Why would I want to get into a knife fight with somebody? What, what, small and what am I going to lock two? guns up so I have to say, excuse me, could you wait until I get a key and open this before you what, shoot uh, me and r you're, rape my you're uh, girlfriend? Saturday night special. You, you want Anthony about. to get into a Broadway production with the home and Yeah. Did it? Jets, when you're a jet, you're a jet all the way from your first. What, what am I going to do? Dance? But, but, Dance and knife ginger. Knife fight? You, you, you're, <laughs> you're maybe, maybe I'm taking it to extreme one way, but you're just being complacent and, uh, you know, it, it could happen to anybody. Wait, well, what? you know, because I don't. I think if someone, I just couldn't trust myself that it wouldn't be one of my kids or. Oh, kids! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Hold it! Let me now. Let me say this: If you have kids in the house, you absolutely can't do what I'm doing. Okay. I understand that. That's your problem. Now you have kids, so you have to kind of sacrifice your own safety because you have children. So because you a, can't have guns just laying around. Give her a protection plan okay. instead of attacking her. Give her a protection because plan. she's attacking me. She's not really attacking me. She's attacking no, me. Not. She's bothered really by not. you. She's bothered by me no. for no reason other than I not have made bad. a plan and I'm I'm uh, uh She's safe. Not bothered by you. She's kind of just bothered by the radio show, thing. but she can't help but listen no, I every know. day. She had a problem with the show yesterday. She had a problem with the show today. Is she married? You keep saying that. I don't have a problem with You thought that. we bored everybody by talking about video games That's yesterday and, and we couldn't agree, uh, disagree but more. Don't you think if I listen every day once in a while, you might say something that I might just not agree with? Is once in a while? This is, this is two days in a row. How could you not agree with somebody just being uh, uh, safety conscious as far as uh, crime goes? I don't think I agree or disagree. I just, All right, Jen. I, I just think it's too much. Wait, I do have one more thing to say. Oh, right, go ahead. It's, uh, wait, it, I, just, this, I just want to redeem myself in Anthony's eyes. This is off the subject. I am divorced. I do have children. Mm -hmm. And when I did get divorced... I asked for absolutely nothing. Oh, oh now we yeah, love yeah, Ginger. Yeah. There you go. See, that, so you I turned. I just wanted to say that I was married for over ten years. I was at home with my kids. Where are you calling from, court. Kenya? I asked for not a penny. <laughs> Kenya, she's what? in Kenya right now. Well, were you, do you have like your own money or something? No, I did, went out and got a job. Did you get the house and the deal? Absolutely not. Mm hmm. Yeah, but what? Uh, you, you just know, turned a lot. Old she just turned around a lot of people right, right there with that statement. She's old school, though. Well, I knew that I was going to redeem myself with that. I uh, didn't. There was mm. no reason why I couldn't go out and work, and I did. And there was no reason why I would tear down his house. I mean, I knew my kids would always have a, you know, a safety net there that I couldn't go out and work, and I did. How old are your children? Now? Yeah. Fifteen and twelve. Oh, okay. I thought she came up in a time where you can like punch a woman, but they wouldn't call the cop. <laughs> <laughs> like, like the late you know right. God bless Ginger today. All right, Ginger, we'll we'll uh, see you next time. All right, back when women would. Hey. Uh, hopefully, uh -huh. if uh, her home isn't invaded and she isn't found choked on I a don't phone think she cord, cares. I think if somebody choked her, it'll turn yeah, her off. She She's care. finished. Yeah, Let's right. go right to Frank in Boston. Uh, Frank, you had a home invasion. Yeah, I was on the uh, second floor. My parents were away on vacation. This happened when I was twenty-one. I'm twenty-seven now. And I heard glass breaking, so mm. I automatically knew nobody was nobody that was supposed to be coming into the house was coming into the house. So I loaded up the shotgun just like you had. It was a 12 gauge slugs, 
I tiptoed down the stairs, and there's a there's a there's a doorway on the right, and there's a hall there, and I knew that they were in there because I could hear them going through the stuff. So I open the door. They're basically in alignment. I look at the guy for a second. He doesn't even hear the door open. He just looks at me, and he he almost he he almost says something. I pull the trigger, <laughs> blows his chest right open. It's the other guy in the arm, and I was feeling real good right then. The other guy, I mean, this guy's body's on the ground. It's making this weird noise, and I was feeling pumped, you know. This and the other guy looks at me, and he just he tries to turn around, and I get him too. Blows his chest open. It's the most disgusting thing I ever see. I've ever seen in my life. I felt really good, you know. I, I mean, the cops came and they were making me feel bad, but <laughs> for the most part, I was feeling good. But now. You know, I just... This is the worst murder story I've ever... How can you make... Blow on a people's chest bar? <laughs> He's like... What part of Revere were you from? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where where did this happen in Boston, Frank? I don't want to say where this happened, but you don't feel like a man after killing people, especially as the years go on. You just feel worse and worse, and I, I think I'm just going to do myself in any day. He's lying. I yeah, lying. I'm I not do, buying I, it yeah, there. Not even yeah. a drop. 9-11 was an inside job for you. <laughs> and you can tell. Inside that was job. the worst I, I killed somebody's story I've ever I heard. I just said uh, I watched his chest blow up and I was feeling really good. Then the other uh, guy's chest blew the up. The other guy's way. chest blew up and an alien came out. I don't want to tell you what part of Revere it is. <laughs> right, let's go to the psychologist finally. It's uh, Lydia from Oceanside. Lydia, what's up? Hi, guys. Hey. Yeah, I wanted to let you know that uh, I am a clinical psychologist mm -hmm. with two master's degrees and a PhD, mm -hmm. and um, I love you guys. I went to see a comedy show at Jones Beach, but I have to say, Anthony, yes. therapy would do you a world of good. Now, why is that? Well, I'm not saying that you're right. You know, what you were saying to Ginger is 100% correct. You do have to be safety conscious. But what Patrice is saying makes a lot of sense. I think it's just a little over the edge with you. I personally it's think taxi it all driver -ish. back to the... I'm sorry? It's taxi driver-ish. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Right, exactly, exactly. I personally think it dates back to that feeling of vulnerability in the uh, tree fort. <laughs> I mean, that was sexy, not vulnerable. <laughs> I didn't know that was sexy for you, Anthony. You know, I'm just being safe. Why, why, why is it when someone wants to be safe and not be victimized that they're crazy? You're, I, I, you're preparing. This mm -hmm. is why you're crazy. Mm -hmm. You're preparing for a. You have escalated a paranoid delusion mm -hmm. to where you're prepared for that paranoid delusion you're not prepared safety is a seatbelt. safety is put that cigarette out safety is imminent but you're not any imminent danger from a from a guy breaking in your home but that's what people are never prepared for non-imminent danger people are never prepared for it and they are the worst being a victim like that would be the worst Life ruining, Wait. devastating thing that could happen to somebody. I, I want to know why she thinks you're crazy, though. Yeah. She's well, just touching. Because, oh, thank you. <laughs> because Anthony, Anthony is prepared, and I agree with him that you have to be safety conscious. I live in Nassau County. I just said all that already. Why is Anthony crazy? Because he is more than prepared. He's obsessed. No, no, I'm just I talking about it here on the air. Uh, but but it isn't it isn't like how I would lead. But my, this is well thought out. Is but what I don't, he's getting at. I uh, at some point I thought it out. I think just about every person listening. But I don't has, lead my life on a daily basis, going through drills and marching <laughs> around the house uh, <laughs> with my guns. Actually, you I, have to be. I bet to you prepare your woman and your cat. I, my go, cat. I bet you he has rolled around. off his bed a few times. Like he I, has roll, to I gun, have never. Cover. First of all, you never you're, rolled you're, off. What are you? Fifty-eight? You're fifty-eight. <laughs> fifty. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! I'm not even close to the fifty. You have to practice some type of muscle memory to slide a fifty-eight-year-old body off the bed <laughs> to grab his gun from out of the floor. Hey, <laughs> Anthony's working out these days. Did you see? You want to see the guns? Let's see the guns. You want? 
Look at Whoa. the guns. Look That's at the guns. Thurston Howell had the same arms <laughs> on Gilligan's <laughs> Island. <laughs> Look at the guns. Why, 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 Anthony, why do you need more than one gun? Because there's more than one room. He's, he's showing off his muscles, dearie. What am I going to say if, if they get, if, if they break in downstairs? I'm going to say, could you excuse me while I go upstairs and get the gun to shoot you with? You gotta be prepared. But there's a okay. What is the lifestyle? Mm -hmm. How many times a day? Yeah. Do you think on that level? Do you actually That's live your life? Oh no, there are days, weeks go by where I don't even think about that. But if I'm asleep, and I hear something, I'll kind of lift my head up. I look around, and and then I know. I go, okay, the the gun's there. If, if that sound develops into anything else, I know where everything is. So, yeah, you're crazy. I'm with No, you. but th that doesn't you're, happen for like weeks. You're overthinking it a little too much. No, I'm not. Why? What are you, crazy? <laughs> We're with you on You a would be level. scared crapless if you were laying in bed and heard a window break downstairs and you hear some people going and and then you'd be like what do i do what you'd be looking around with a, grabbing a pencil that but your hopes are jabbing the guy's that's eye what the average citizen would do. the average citizen is a victim and an idiot you know what you're preparing for a war on the North well North. some weird yeah, war no it's not a weird war it's been called a certain type of war but <laughs> that's the one i'm preparing for <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Patrice. I can't but, believe you said 52 home invasions a year. <laughs> that is ridiculous. I, I, Patrice, no, I said a lot. if there was there's one. There's a lot out there. If there was this one. This isn't one of these uh, just but every once in a you while look, If you look at the news, all you see are Nassau County police cars with tape around a house. Yeah. It's all the, all the time. <laughs> oh, my God. There will be tape around it's, my house, but oh it'll be me God. out front giving the interview. <laughs> Why don't you live in the city? The city doesn't allow you to have guns. He needs guns, Patrice. But you don't worry about that at all, right? Because nah. you live in a, a building. Nah, you got you a hire man a, and stuff. a security guard? I don't want a security guard. Have someone just walk over here? Something called an inside job. <laughs> <laughs> just walk. Have someone walk the perimeter every day. Why night? have a security guard when you have security cameras? You can get Kenny to walk. And the you perimeter. can look. Thank you. Hey, Kenny, how much does it cost to to, to do yeah, how, how security much? for a year? The personal security, your your person's security guard, not even or bodyguard, twenty just hours a day. overnight security from let's say yeah, six seven o'clock at night to six seven in the morning. The that's going rate is fifty dollars an hour. That's it. Fifty dollars yeah. an hour, sit, and you can get someone like walking your booth perimeter. that I build in front of the driveway. Right. And just fifty bucks an hour right. to sit in a car outside his place and walk the perimeter every once in a while. There you go. So six hundred bucks a day? Yeah. To be a sentry. That's nothing. All right, thank You're you. You're date, Lydia. Your, your bullets cost thank more. You guys. All right, residential burglaries, one thousand ninety-three in Nassau County. One thousand ninety-three residential burglaries. Now that doesn't necessarily mean last year that uh, uh, people were home at the time, but I'm, I'm but looking home for invasions, home most invasion. Home invasion. You gotta understand, home invasion is a life sentence, man. Most of the time, people are not trying to rob you while you're at home, because they're going to jail for the rest of their life. Yeah, but if that door is open, if that you know that 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 sliding door or a window is open, that's when you got trouble. I bet you have a, you invite in some weird way. You invite a home invasion, like no, you got candy, Xboxes. On your <laughs> I do not. <laughs> He got something going on. He just <laughs> what I did, hey man. Most of the callers and when in people right now agree with Anthony, when so. strangers are in my house, like uh, 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 the the cleaning people or something, I will then go around the entire house and make sure all my windows are locked because I don't want somebody going click. I'll leave that open for later. See, so I'm not inviting a home invasion. I make sure I lock all the wow, windows you're again. You're overthinking it, just like Lydia. No, said. what? Let, if, let's go to Jimmy in Boston. Holy jeez, you're all victims. You're victims waiting to happen. All right, calm down. Sheep. I told you already, calm I'm down. I'm the wolf. Take a not breath. Not the sheep. Take a breath. Okay. Jimmy in Boston listening on BCN, the home of Toucher and Rich. What's up, Jimmy? What's going on, guys? Hey, man. Hey, I just wanted to, like... Toucher's home intoxication, <laughs> which is almost like home invasion, only drunk. <laughs> yeah, he gets, a, he gets around situations by just handing out beer to everybody. <laughs> Let's just have a they party. They just drink together. Let's just have a party. Everyone leaves happy. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Jimmy, what do you got? 
Hey, I was just thinking, I mean, do you guys think it's crazy that families that come up with escape routes and uh, meeting places that are in, like, a home fire are crazy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, that's fine. They kind of just, you know, preparing for something that's not as common, you know? How do you prepare your kid for Negroes coming through your front door and trying to kill you? Well, your kids are very difficult. You don't want to turn them off to, you know, different cultures. But uh, somebody as jaded as me, um, who was brought up in a predominantly racist household, right? Uh, you know, I have my, it's had its effect on me. I just said, <laughs> <laughs> you've never had any, any, you've never had a black person, let me tell you something, you've yeah. never had a black person do anything wrong to you ever that's changed your life. No, no, that's, that's never. That's not true. You've never had. A I black went to Central. I, I went to Central Islip School you District. Punching your stomach. I'm yeah, it was about like traumatic, dude. Like, like, like being like, stabbed on or... this level where you're worried about black people. Oh no! Is coming oh, in you know home. something? I want that to continue. <laughs> right, listen, let me uh, let me ask you this before we go to break. <laughs> yeah. Do you want a home invasion to happen? He does. No. Thank you. Thank you. It would be Thank the you. most frightening thing, and I think if I killed somebody. I would, I would be uh, it, a changed person. It's not a good thing to kill people. It, it, it would haunt you. It's, you know, it would, it would just haunt me. Should, I don't want it. But I am not gonna. I think what's more traumatic than killing someone that that is invaded your home is sitting there during that those moments, watching the horror that is ensuing as you and your loved ones are being tortured, perhaps killed. And you are powerless. That's the thing, is being powerless. I am not going to be a victim. I will fight it out till the end, till somebody's dead. That's how it's got to work, because I'm not going to sit there and then and then uh, uh, have it all end and, and go through years and of it, this. Of this uh, st- in his paranoia, it, yeah. it, it's, it's at the highest level. Mm-hmm. Because it doesn't even involve maybe not being killed, maybe just being robbed. I don't want to be robbed. I don't want anyone in my goddamn house. But of course not. But if they get the bead on you, you got to be thinking, all right, look, just take this little bit of money. No, that would traumatize me worse than than shooting somebody. Would be uh, me getting strangled or or pistol whipped, uh, getting my my possessions taken in front of me. Having people just come and then go and they're gone, uh, uh, having a great old time after they just robbed me and perhaps they're off robbing somebody else, that would kill me. I couldn't live like that. I, I'd, I'd live better having so shot somebody. It's, it's to right. the death. It's to the death. That's what he said, to the it's death. It's to the death. Once it passes my doorway, to the death. All right, it's uh, the Opie and Anthony Show. Patrice O'Neill, what are we promoting today, Patrice? My website, my podcast. PatriceO'Neill.com. PatriceO'Neill.com. And there that's you go. my weekly podcast, sir. Uh, yeah. Very fun. All right. We're very in the middle funny. of uh, Make Up Stuff Tuesday, Rock Scream Tuesday, Far Away Phone Call Tuesday, and of course, 80s New Wave Tuesday. Yeah. That was supposed to be a big out right there. That was supposed to be a great out. <laughs> oh, boy. What is this? This isn't. I have no idea. Look, Steve's looking intently. I don't know what that is. Oh, I didn't know what that was. <laughs> he thinks you should be uh, fighting the invaders. What? Hand-to-hand combat. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. You got cops agreeing with you. Of course. Uh, just a lot of people in general agreeing with you. And it, it's funny, but this happened overnight. We got a, a fine little news story that helps out Ant's little... Uh, little cause here. Uh Listen to this. Well, the man known as the Ninja Burglar strikes again. As Arthur Chain reports, after a two-month break, the thief is back to terrorizing homes in Staten Island. Well, they're scared. I mean, it it doesn't matter where where you live. You know, you live on a mountain or a beautiful home. He's still going to get in. Two more homes, this time in Toad Hill, have been struck, beginning with this mansion on Louise Lane, where a family with young children were home sleeping at the time. Mm -hmm. Then police say the burglar hit another home nearby on Ocean Terrace, slipping into a rear sliding door. See? This is your fear, right? Right here. And I don't get people that, like, leave their, their crap open. Shut your windows. They leave their doors unlocked in Canada. I like, you know, because sometimes it's hot, so I leave my window open in my bedroom. 
Uh, you kook. I was so paranoid in Brooklyn when I lived there. First of all, pain in the ass to even get a shotgun. Never mind a pistol in uh, in uh, the New York City limits. Uh, and then I had a fire escape coming right up to my window. Hello, just walk right up. <laughs> just walk right up. There's a stairway there, bad guy. You're so paranoid. I open. I, I keep my windows open all the time. Hey, good luck to you. It's, well, you're on the 80th floor or something. Uh, on the 40th floor. So whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. They have to be Spider-Man to get to yes, the Spider-Man burglar. It's arbitrary, though, man. It's what? like it's just arbitrary for them to show up at your house. Yeah. Like, it's just but, that's life, really. Yeah, and and my way of dealing with that is with uh, with a, a heavy weaponry. Let's find out uh, more about the ninja burglar here. The few who have seen the felon describe him as a ninja burglar. While the ninja burglar has stayed off the radar for two months, police believe he is now back and fearless. In 13 of the 18 incidents, the home was occupied, yet he still got away with cash, jewelry, and cell phones. You always worry. You always feel that somebody intruded your privacy, which is very bad. It's just very, See? very bad. You always feel like uh, somebody intruded, and then you live with that for the rest of your life. Right. Well, uh, the boys took that audio and uh, and played the beep game with the it. The beep game. Okay. We love the beep game. Same audio. You just throw a few beeps in there, and it sounds a little different. All right. Ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might want to slow down your car a little bit. Well, the man known as the burglar strikes again as arthur chain reports after a two-month break the is back to terrorizing homes in staten island well it's scared i mean it, it doesn't matter where, where you live you know you live on a mountain or a beautiful home two more homes this time in toad hill have been struck beginning with this mansion on louise lane where a family with young children were home sleeping at the time then police say the hit another home nearby on ocean terrace <laughs> <laughs> Why is Patrice shaking his head? That's not doctor. There's just a beep in there. There seems to be a beep. Uh, There's just a beep in there. Yeah, over... Uh, if you're shaking your head now, you're going to shake it uh, a little more after this next right. one. It gets even better. The few who have seen the felon describe him as a nipper. While the nipper has stayed off the radar for two months, police believe he is now back and fearless. In 13 of the 18 incidents, the home was occupied, yet he still got away with cash, jewelry, and cell phones. You always worry. You always feel that some truly you promise, which is very bad. Oh, my God. Well, all right, that's... <laughs> that kind of changes the story a little bit. Yeah. Hey, uh, we're looking for some honest women to call the show. We're going to seg into something else in a minute or two here. Honest women. We're looking for the desperate housewives, the cougars out there. Cougars? Because we got a great cougar story uh, that we're going to get to in a second. But uh, <laughs> uh, some uh, compliments coming in. Hats off to the mulatto twink, Sam, for that one. <laughs> mulatto twink. <laughs> of course, that's Steve from Bayshore. Yeah, Travis Bronx, what's up? Hey, uh, I don't think Anthony's crazy. It just sounds like he's trying to start his own A team. Ooh, the A team. That's yeah, not a bad idea. They never killed anybody, the A team. It was just rolled over Jeeps, and they showed the people getting out, and they were okay. They'd fire 8,000 rounds out of machine guns and never really hit anybody. By the way, this is a bit unorthodox, but people are actually uh, yelling encore, encore for the beef game. <laughs> wow. All right. Oh, it's no. very rare that you get an encore. We'll play the second track. Mm -hmm. The few who have seen the felon describe him as a nipper. <laughs> While the nipper has stayed off the radar for two months, police believe he is now back and fearless. In 13 of the 18 incidents, the home was occupied, yet he still got away with cash, jewelry, and cell phones. You always worry. You always feel that some truly you promise, which is very bad. There you go. There's your yeah. encore. Very bad. Very, very bad. Uh, one more call, and then we'll move on to this cougar story. It's uh, Stacia in Boston. What's up, Stacia? 
Hey, I actually agree with you. I grew up in a household full of, full of guns. My grandfather made his own, and I'm a single woman who's lived on my own since I was 18 years old, and I'm 33. I firmly believe that people should have more guns. I know plenty of cops. I know plenty of criminals. And if there was more people that realized that people had guns in their homes, they'd be less likely to break in. I agree with you. I think there's there's a difference between paranoia and being healthy afraid. And if you've got things in your house or yourself that you're protecting, have it. As long as you're very aware of what you have in your house, like you know how to use a gun to have it, just to have it, no, that's where the danger lies. But if you that's have one right. and you know how to use it, well, then sure. What part I, of La- like the I agree. Thinks. I've lived in major cities my entire life. What part of um, Lawrence do you live in? <laughs> what part of Boston do I live in? Dorchester. No, Lawrence. Lawrence. What, what part of Holyoke are you from? Lawrence is a pretty uh, pretty tough neighborhood. What there. part of Savin Hill in Dorchester? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you, Stacia. There you go. Thank you. We're going to move on. I mean, we could talk about that uh, all day long, but uh, <laughs> that topic comes up for discussion a lot on this show. <laughs> we'll yes, wait it till, certainly does. We'll wait till next time, and we'll get a little more of Anthony's <laughs> paranoia. Think of the break if I ever had a home invasion. I just think of the break we could do. That's what I'm hoping for. Oh, of course. See, I'm, you're I'm, hoping more than I am for a I, home invasion. I'm so hoping for one. How would that be? Come uh, in the next day and go, yeah. Uh, and I'm also hoping it works out in your favor, obviously. Well, yeah. That would kind of <laughs> suck. If, you know. I had a report that I was shot 80 times <laughs> with my own guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would suck. All right, hey, we need Anthony to- armed with nothing but a rapier was shot with his own shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> God, these phones. Oh, okay, we got Cougars calling in. All right, cool. Allison, uh, Jersey used to be a Cougar. Used to be. Well, the New York papers. Mm. I, forgot, mm. I forgot which paper, but there's uh, there's something going on. I had no idea. Cougars on hunt in Kenya. Yep. When I read that headline, I'm like, what's up with the Cougars in Kenya? Yeah. They're getting hungry or something. They're starting to eat humans, but it, well, that is the case. <laughs> we're talking about the uh, the old ladies. Yeah, the uh, the cougars. They're known as uh, women who are past uh, their prime. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> stupid sex in the city. I hate sex. Women that are kind of past, you know, speaking that, of that level level of. Uh, you know, they're past their prime, and uh, they they look for younger guys. Uh, I go to Kenya all the time. Kenya. Speaking of Kenya, can you put your? Oops, that wasn't the beep. <laughs> Damn it. Speaking of Kenya, <laughs> I sure can. <laughs> Kenya, uh, we get it. Yeah, you still and they have go sex. They go out to the bars and yeah. uh, cruise for uh, for young guys. Well, now they're going to Kenya, and they're they're going as uh, as uh, as uh, tourists there. A bunch mm-hmm. of them go to Kenya, and they're on the hunt, and they're meeting giant African men that uh, take them out and uh, give them what they need. Some of that sex. Well, uh, Bethan, she's fifty six. She lives in England on the same street as best friend Ali, sixty sixty four. Whoa! Uh, I bet it's like grape nuts. <laughs> uh, they are on their first trip to Kenya. You got this 56 year old, this, uh, 64 year old, their first trip to Kenya. A country they say is just full of big young boys who like us older gals. And wow. Our, and our money. But God bless them. I can't even hate this story. I can't even hate them. I'm yeah. already on their side. You're just digging the fact that. God bless them. They're going over there and. God, God bless them so <laughs> Hard figures are difficult to come by, but locals on the coast estimate that as many as one in five single women visiting from rich countries are in search of sex. Allie and Bethan, who both declined to give their full name, said they plan to spend a month, a month touring, a month. touring Kenya's beaches. Whoa, they're yeah. going to come back walking like John Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kenya's beaches. It's not evil, said uh, Jake, uh, blah, 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 chairman of the Kenya Tours Board, when asked about older rich women traveling for sex with young Kenyan men. But it's certainly something we frown upon. Why? Well, the health risks, first of all, there. Oh. Uh, yeah. AIDS prevalence. Well, 
of 6.9% in the country. That's why there's condoms, dude. The, pe- uh, the beaches uh, stretched uh, before the friends as they walked arm in arm with young African men. Yeah. Allie rested her white haired head on the shoulder of her companion, a six foot four, 23 year old from the Maasai oh, tribe. Oh, man. I, hey, I, where are the white women at? <laughs> <laughs> I read a book about the Maasai tribe, dude. <laughs> Oh, uh, the Monster yeah, Tribe. There was a book called Monster Tribe. What are they about? Oh, <laughs> what are they about? <laughs> the, the, the name of the book is Monster Tribe. Ouch. <laughs> 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 they ain't playing. No. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Wow. These, uh, the, I guess they're size queens. Yeah. It's, yeah. They say they, the monster guys are big enough to reverse menopause. <laughs> 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 What is this guy doing with like a sixty-four-year-old woman, though? Hey, What's uh, in it for him? The money. The money. money. That's yeah. obvious. Yeah. yeah, she's handing over some money. Okay. Playing to like <laughs> prostitution, like gigolo. I pay some big basketball dude. player from Africa to. <laughs> dude, we've we we went on vacation together back in the day, and you know what this is all about. No, I don't know. Just I not... don't remember us picking up black men. No, but <laughs> they, but in in all these tourist area, there's there's guys. That's their whole gig. Yeah. They're hanging around just, you know, getting you know what, and they're getting uh, some some extra stuff. Richard Gears, Mm. a lot of Richard Gears. Whether it's a a nice meal or some jewelry or some cold hard cash. Wow. That's what they're in it for. And they, like, what the hell? And they and they give the name. Oh, here it is. Best ones. Here it is. You you asked the next line. He wore new sunglasses. He said were a gift from her. Absolutely. Ah, the sunglasses. So you you, you bang That's the sixty four year old broad, and she goes home, and you got brand new sunglasses. She should go Gucci, deeper. Chanel sunglasses for that big African. She should just go deeper into the bush, and get like you know some kind of uh, get get the sex for like a lighter, where they all go. Oh! Billy, Billy, yeah, Billy, Billy. They probably start scra- scratching her with some with their <laughs> necklace made out of <laughs> made out of real cougar foot. <laughs> right, right. A real as they, they orangutan uh, <laughs> like teeth. <laughs> we kill white women around here. <laughs> they cook them. We, cook we, her up in a big pot. <laughs> we're from the killer white women tribe. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, it gets it gets better here. We both get something we want. Where's the negative? Allie asked in a bar later, nursing a cocktail. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I bet she was. <laughs> I thought I thought the sentence was going to be. I mean, the obvious nursing a cocktail is pretty funny, but I thought yeah. I was going to say nursing a uh, uh, a sore seat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you imagine? I got to read that again because that's oh. just that, that's just comedy, people. Uh, we both get something we want. Where's the negative? Ali asked in a bar later, nursing a cocktail. Uh, Greaves Cook and many hotel managers say they are doing all they can to discourage the practice. The head of a local uh, hotel association told me they have begun taking measures like refusing guests who want to change from a single to a double room. Oh. <laughs> can you imagine the choices? Old white woman or oats being thrown out of a helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like that's your choice. Right. That's your it's choice. Like, it's like yeah. I'm with the rest of the tribe, where I gotta catch g- giant bags of rice without water and eat, eat that eat that gruel out of that wooden bowl. Oh, oh man! Or just it's or eat that gruel <laughs> or eat that gruel out of a dry wooden bowl. You gotta, you gotta think this is a no brainer, man. <laughs> right. Either way. It's, oh man, it's probably uh, like either way it's, stomach. Either way, it's gonna leave a bad taste oh, in your mouth. Yeah. Oh man, those poor African men. <laughs> why couldn't it just? Why couldn't? See, this is what I'm saying. If I was a woman, man, I would sell my body until no one wanted me. <laughs> like, I. Why do you have to have? Di- See what a waste of time dignity is. Is that these women now go? Why didn't I enjoy sex my whole life? Now I have to go to Africa, risk AIDS, risk like getting attacked right. by something. Yeah, uh, to, <laughs> get eaten by a lion. A lion. <laughs> to, right. sport, to have sports sex. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. B- b- women now, like women twenty to forty or whatever, they're just dignity, integrity, and now it's like. It's these women flying from wherever they're from. Probably the Queen of England too. She flies over there, <laughs> pretending this. Is... You gotta. <laughs> I'm on a diplomatic mission. Trying to get you gotta, her from uh, you, Forrest Whitaker. You gotta avoid lions and angry giraffes to get to the Kenya. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, I mean that don't make. Do you see what it, integrity does for you, ladies? You end up being a 70 year old woman flying over, sleeping with. Flying Africa. over to Kenya. 
Uh, it's a fine line. We're 100% against anything illegal, such as prostitution, but wow. it's different with something like this. It's just unwholesome. <laughs> uh, these unwholesome. beaches have been long been notorious for attracting another type of sex tourist, men who abuse children. One type of sex tourist attracted the other, said one manager at a bar, blah, 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 blah. All right. Uh, Cougar is uh, going after the Kenyan men here. Yeah, one club, a, a group of about 25 dancing men edged closer and closer to a crowd of more than a dozen <laughs> white women. <laughs> I didn't come here looking for a husband, Bethan said. It's a social arrangement. I buy him a nice shirt, and we go out for dinner. A <laughs> shirt. For as long as he stays with me, he doesn't pay for anything, and I get what I want. A good time. How's that different from a man buying a young girl dinner? Yeah, there you go. I, you, it's only fair, but they got it. But see, here's the difference. We wanted, We start out wanting to do that at 15, <laughs> and, and we quit at 60. Now, you're, get, you're starting at 60, old wrinkle yeah. mess. Well, Going to Africa. <laughs> Let's go to Robin. She's in Oklahoma. Robin, you're a cougar. Robin. Uh, Robin. Hey, Robin. Oklahoma. Cougar. 42 years old. Say hi. Gone. No. All right. Let's say hi to Allison in Jersey. Allison. <laughs> Allison. <what's up? laughs> Wait a minute. Hi. Robin and Allison. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Allison. How are you? Good. How are you? You're 31 years old, and you consider yourself an old cougar? Not an old cougar, but... No, you, it, well, it says used to be a cougar. You're 31 years old. When were you it's cougaring? It's a cougar. Just a couple of years ago. I was married, and it was a pretty boring marriage. So when I got out of it, I just needed something fresh and new. So I was dating a 20-year-old. So there was a, almost a 10-year age difference. Mm -hmm. Now, did you, did you wish you didn't waste all that time with integrity all those years? Oh yeah, because I was with yeah, my. What's wrong? That she's that thirty-one episode. years old. She's still she's young. Old. She's no, she's not. That's old. Yeah, I've always been. <laughs> hey, I'm not old. Yeah, I'm you're old. You're pretty old in the game. game. You're you're pretty old. That's Thirty-one. Old. Thirty-one is what old. What's wrong with you? Twenty to. I thought we were talking like a forty-something or 30 whatever. Is thirty-one is not old. Uh, re reports coming in saying she's a milf, not a cougar. Yeah, milf. Uh, if milf. you're a mom, are you a mom? <laughs> I am a mom now. Yeah. Say you'd be a milf. Now nah, you're more in the milf category. She's a mooger. <laughs> mooger. <laughs> I think you got to be. Uh, when does the cougar age start? Thirty-five. <clears throat> Forty. Forty. I'd say depending on the age of the guy that they're going for, uh, probably would start at forty. You know, if you're, you're 40 and you're going for a guy in his 30s, it's not really cougaring. What if it's but a 35-year-old girl, 21-year-old guy? Uh, mil more milfish. Millfish? Yeah, I I think I think once they get forty, then you're cougaring if if you, you're going for a guy in his twenties. If you wasted it, it's, it's, there's a lot of extenuating circumstances. Mm -hmm. There's some forty year old really hot women who aren't cougars. They're still yeah. sexual entities. Yeah. This this lady wasted her time with the marriage and the kids and the this and the that. Right. There was a time frame where she should have been living her life. Now she's living it. I think she is a cougar because she's living. She missed out on a, on, on a, a thing. You know right, what I mean? Right. She missed out on something. All right, let's uh, thank mm. you, Allison. We're going to go back to Robin. She's 42 years old. Uh, Robin, you there finally? Yeah, I'm sorry about that, guys. All right, yeah, so. I'm 40. Go it, ahead. No, go. Oh, I'm 42. Yeah. I, I've been married for, for a year now, but I love younger men. I wasted 10 years in a marriage, a sexless, sexless marriage, and when I got a divorce, I said, screw it. I'm going after the younger guys. And. It can't be beat. I, I recommend it to women. I don't, I, you know, there's better answers for men. Can I ask you a quick question, miss? Quick question. Why didn't yes. you have all the sex with the guys who wanted to have all the sex with you at a certain time? Why is it when you, when you miss the, 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 to the thing where your husband wasn't horny like he was when he was younger. Now he doesn't want to sleep with you, but now you're over sex. Why didn't you just want to sleep with the guy when he wanted to sleep with you? What, well, why don't women sleep with guys when they're 20 and hot instead of these wrinkled up messes flying to Africa? <laughs> because I was a virgin when I got married. I fought into that crap, and I was married for a long time. And my husband, he was just, he never was real sexual, you know? I always was, and I missed it. And then when we got a divorce, I said, She just went wild. Yeah, she went nuts. So where'd you, where'd you pick up the guys? I barked it for years, so that's all I had to do. If I wanted a guy, I had one right there, man. And then, you know, sit on the other side if I wanted to buy drinks. I mean, I'm married now to someone 10 years younger than me, and I, I you know, I, gave, I did it for a while. I wouldn't want a long term, but, you know, it's worth it. it where else are we? Can I, can I warn you about something real quick? Mm -hmm. 
in another yeah. five years, you'll be wondering why this guy doesn't sleep with you either. It doesn't change. <laughs> it's not that you're not sexy. He's just going to get tired of you. We need different. <laughs> Yeah, the good is good as long as you can get it, man. I'll sit there yelling. Hey, hey, Robin, would you consider going to Kenya to get some young, uh, some young, uh, you know what? Uh, no, no, no. Maybe Kenya a few years back, yeah, maybe. I think if you have to go to Kenya, that's the that's the real desperate cougars. That's the oh, yeah. that's the mangy cougars. Yeah. That, that, are you, are you that, that have no luck in the sports bars of America, so they're like, oh man, our last hope is to go to Kenya. Go to Kenya and, and risk yeah. HIV. Yeah. Is, she, is, she, is, it, is it with a white guy, Robin? Yes, I'm married to a white guy. Have you ever have you ever t uh, tested a little uh, a Maasai Louisville slugger? No, no. <laughs> Not interested, huh? No, no, Not interested no, no. in a baby arm. Excuse me. Not interested <laughs> in a in a Negro baby arm. Oh uh, no, I think that would be a little too much. So no, no Kenya for me. Okay. All right, but, thank you. All righty, bye. All right, uh, let's go to Jay in Massachusetts. Jay, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, man. Uh, yeah, I just broke up with a, a cougar, man. I'm actually out of my, uh, ass now. I lived in a house for about a year and a half. Wait, wait, we laughed over that. Lived in a house for a year and a half, rent-free, right? Oh, yeah, but she got me a car, you know. It, it, uh, it was nice. She's good-looking, too, man. Viagra, my man, Viagra. No, it's hilarious. We usually when we go down this road, we talk to the cougars. I, maybe maybe the bit is to talk to the guys that got dumped by cougars. When yeah, they were, when they were living the high life, man. And he stopped. He stopped slinging I, it. He stopped I, slinging it. I yeah. bet you, Jay, that you were still banging other broads behind her back. Younger. Uh, she's probably listening. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she likes you guys. I mean, we're still friends. We just broke up recently, but uh, it, it sucks, man. I'm homeless right now. I'm so, <laughs> so you were getting something out of it as well? Free rent, uh, free dinners, uh, gifts. It don't oh, work ev out. Oh, everything. It was five star restaurants all day long. It was great. I mean, she was loaded. She's a CFO. So, so one day you got comfortable. And just walked around the house and didn't do your job. Is that the, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I probably should have got down on my knees a little bit more. Yeah. You know, I'm uh, I'm down and out now, man. It's 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 bad. I'm I'm missing her. She's the exact same age as my mother. They got along great. Oh, oh wow. God, that's hilarious. Uh, yeah. We got another guy that got dumped. Thanks, man. Let's yeah. say uh, hi to Dave in New York. Dave, what's up? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. <laughs> Hey, yeah, I was a victim of a cougar, too. I was 28, and she was 52. Cougar attack. 52. Yeah, but she was hot, man. She had the implants going and everything. So, Downstairs what, a pacemaker? Hey, you, you know, <laughs> implants. You know how to ask the question, right? Mm. Ask him what 52-year-old is like. Yeah, uh, like, yeah, yeah. How do you describe what it's like? There's like a difference. There's got to be a difference between uh, uh, a 22 and... And 52, as far as, uh, the, let's just uh, vaguely say the feeling goes. Uh, um, there is a mush factor, I call it. The mush factor. Oh! Yeah. What's that? <laughs> oh! Um, <laughs> well, as you know, it's not quite as firm as a, as a 22-year-old. Uh, oh! Oh! Okay, so you, you're saying... Uh, it seems a little looser. So things are, yeah, things are a little, like, uh, shaky. A little uh, looser and and um. It's like a turducken. Kind <laughs> of, you know. I, I, the mush factor. <laughs> you don't want to deal with the mush factor. <laughs> Jesus, I never heard that no. before. Yeah, and, and then, we need T-shirts. I've dealt with the mush factor. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's kind of tough. The turducken was a great example because one time. <laughs> <laughs> I walked into the bathroom when she was showering, and then what I saw from behind, you know, it, it was uh, kind of like a little droopy. <laughs> oh. You asked her why she brought her luggage into the shower? <laughs> it's like Nicholson walking into the hotel room in The Shining. <laughs> the woman yeah. in the tub. <laughs> when did we get a baby? <laughs> when did we get a baby elephant as a pet? <laughs> right. Why are you washing your bat inside the shower? <laughs> you a bat? I didn't know you had a pet bat. <laughs> so, uh, why did the uh, relationship end there? Well, well, her kids didn't appreciate that I was younger than her youngest child. Oh, uh, that's never good. And you were living with her and all that. 
No, no, it wasn't liver. It didn't quite make that jump. <laughs> After a few times in the, the mush factor, it kind of settled in. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, now, was, guys, she the best, was she the best you ever had? No, she wasn't, but uh, from the neck up, she was beautiful. But was anything, <laughs> from she, the neck was anything she did the best you ever had? Like, was any? did she have any tricks that some young bra just didn't do? Um, no, I, I think she was a little repressed, but uh, not really, no. So nothing, I, all right. Nothing. I, I, no think, I think, I think, no, no, I was, I was hoping for some circus tricks, but nothing. I think she was a... Uh, Worry about the age factor too. No purpose. All right, thank you, Dave. Uh, we got. All right, guys, have a good day. We got to take Thanks, a break. Man. We got so many guys on hold. Uh, Nineteen, <laughs> thirty-five year old. I'm twenty-four. My girl's forty-five. <laughs> Hate it, but I get money. <laughs> uh, it's just the calls are coming oh in God like damn. crazy. We'll continue in just a bit. It's yeah, man. I'm twenty-four. My girlfriend's forty-two, and uh, it's it's really no different because after a couple of years, it, it just totally goes away. But I actually met her. She I worked at a chemotherapy uh, facility, and she was she had a she had breast cancer, and she was like really really bad. And she started getting a little better. We started dating, whatever. It's been four years, and she's still around. But she pays. She she gives me money. So you kind of hate it? I say, oh, it's horrible. I mean, she had, um, I hope she's not listening. She had like a C-section back when C-sections weren't that easy to do. Oh, no. <laughs> Did it with a hatchet. <laughs> when, Wait, when I got to start. Yeah. Hold on. I got to start taking notes, man. The, what, the mushy factor we learned about? Yeah, the mushy factor. Right, I got to write down mushy factor, and I got to write down C-sections when they really didn't know what they were doing yet. <laughs> didn't know what they were doing yet. <laughs> he makes a great point because now the C-sections are like itty-bitty scars. Yeah, the they figured of, it out. Back in the day, it was like... <laughs> just sawing away. There is nothing itty bitty about that scar. Oh, really? Okay. Continue. Um, and but the problem was that when I met her, she had she had just gone through breast cancer, and to do it with with that with someone who has two mastectomy scars with the, down there, but the money is pretty good. How poor are you? Um, I don't have to pay for anything. I mean, I get you know, I get like. You know, an allowance, quote unquote, but I do have access to, to, to the ATM, which is good. But uh, I live, I don't have to do anything at all except for that, which is a lot. Wow. All right. There you go. That, He's going through a lot to get, wow. get his bills paid. Yeah. It's better than just, a job. What, I was just going to say, why don't you just get a job? That is a job. <laughs> Horrible job. <laughs> it's, it's the worst job in yeah, the world. Yeah. You're. <laughs> Uh, Got to deal with the mushy factor and and uh, bad C-section scars. Let's go to Mark in Carolina. I don't know which one. North, south, where are you, Mark? South Carolina. South Carolina. What do you got? <laughs> hey, I was letting you guys know my cougar story. I lost my virginity to a cougar. I went to uh, stay with my father when I was about 17. He owned a boarding house. There was a woman in her 50s that kept flirting and flirting and no big deal. Well, she got me drunk one night, took me back to her room, and... Uh, we're laying in bed, and she told me, I'm going to give you a special blowjob. Well, I'm thinking, hell, when you're uh, 15, any blowjob's a special blowjob. Oh, God, how many more times can he say it, though? Jesus. Yeah. Well, well, well Mark, Mark, slow that down, will you? Yeah. Let's calm yeah. down a little bit. Dump, dump, dump. You do understand you're on regular radio as well, oh, right? I do apologize. Yeah. I, I'm an XM guy. Sorry. All right. Uh, yeah. She was going to give me oral treats. And Who knows? You're 17, <laughs> this, this, how many months and we got left? Four, I think. I just yeah, give, four to go. Give up. Four lousy months to go. Uh, yeah. Mark. Oh. Yes. Anyway, I was down. She has her teeth out in a cup. Yeah. And it's like, oh, my God. And it was the most Mark. incredible feeling. Yes. All right, Mark. He's just not uh, very you're, skilled in this. You're not radio friendly, sir. Yeah. Basically, yeah. you were 17, she was 50, she had no teeth. End of yeah. story. All yeah. right? We, End can, of story. we can figure it out. All right, thank you, sir. Let's go to James in Jersey. James, what's up? Hey, how you guys doing today? Pretty good. Good, good. When I was, uh, when I was in college, toward the end of my college days, I was a personal trainer, and uh, there was a couple of women there that were, I was 23, 22, they were in their mid-30s, a little bit older, and... Um, they were just, you know, crazy for the young guys. 
especially being in my profession. You know, I was around them all the time. When I left, changed careers, and I went over to uh, more of a business the environment, they, I mean, I, I was walking in the door as a 23-year-old guy into a, into a business environment, and these women just took care of me in the sense that bought me anything I wanted, you know, $500 attache cases, suits, ties, you name it, and they took care of me as a 23-year-old guy. These girls are in their mid-30s. It was great. You were a and whore. They were, and they were hot. They were hot. You are a dirty whore. How do you feel about that? I, Spectacular. I love the guys that are trying to convince us. And they were hot, I tell you, hot. Yeah. Not was, hot. Was, listen, what was great was I was I personal trained them. So, you know, I kept them in shape. You know, I, I stayed on, you know, on top of them, make sure they ate well. It was, it was, it was a win. Sweaty situation. old muscular women. All right, sir. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Thank you. Let's go to Bronx Johnny uh, or, or Johnny from the Bronx. We know a Bronx Johnny. So, hey, Johnny, what's up? What's going on, Ole? Oh, it is Bronx Johnny. <laughs> yeah, man, what's up? What's up, bro? That's the bunch. Oh, I'm running fast, 12 to 3 or 4, I forget. All right, very um, good. When I was in uh, college, uh, we kind of need, my boy was going out with somebody's daughter. His The chick was like 24. Her mom was like 47. <laughs> so we were just hanging out in the crib one day, and she always used to say how, you know, I'm a nice-looking young man and all that. So like it was kind of it was kind of tough, and I needed some new hats and some sneakers. <laughs> so we did one day just hanging out, and like she got a rug in front of the cot, so I guess she pretend slipped on me and uh, it got a little out of hand. So uh, we kind of did some stuff for a couple weeks. And uh, one thing I tell everybody out there: when you're in the car with these old folks, they creak a lot and crack. It's not very sexy. <laughs> they creak a lot and crack. Yeah, man, and uh, you got to kind of watch, like, I was getting uh, oral treats from Shorty, and uh, this, this saber tooth was missing some back teeth, like, it hurt a little bit. She actually ripped the rubber with some of the back of her mouth. Oh, oh gosh. But uh, I kind of started a fad now, because, like, in the hood, they're not messing with these old Spanish widows. They're looking for these nice, young uh, white ladies. Yeah. What'd you get out of this woman, but, you know... I got a couple of new fitted hats, some sneakers, and some shirts. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah. You said, you said, it's all about the I, clothes. She was probably the ugliest thing I've ever been, but yeah. she was also the most grateful, so you kind of respect that. You're like, you know, yeah, your husband beat you, but hey, I'm not. What's the, what was the, the well, let me ask you a question, man, because this, this is this part of the story that a lot of guys are having that's bothering me. Yeah. You, everybody's going in like this is, this is the going thing, the gigolo thing, but a woman buying you something kind of happens on the back end. What was what's yeah, the what's yeah. the wait a minute what the what's the courtship process that mm. leads up to this time where you where you whining and diner and then it then it leads to her going do you want something sweetie because that's how it happens it's a motherly thing you don't go in going yo ma if I let you do this if I let you do this to me I I need some hats <laughs> like how did that happen this this this, this takes time. That's the thing, Pimpin, we never went out. Like, I, I met her at her own crib, so it was never like, oh, let's go. I think she, I was more... It was a it was a booty like, call, right? It was a, it was just a booty call, and you would sleep with an old abroad, but she ended up giving you gifts. So basically, oh, you yeah. was you was in it for the old broad thing in the beginning. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. I didn't even look at That's it. That's all I, of them are saying that. They don't oh. go in going like the dude before when he was like the cancer girl. Yeah. I want to ask him the courtship process. He did not go in, hey, m money taken care of. He didn't go in with that. Right, right. That, he was attracted uh, to cancer broad he in was, some way. He was going out Somehow, with cancer broad right. and now yeah. she takes care of him. Yeah, there you go. Oh. What's the courtship process? Well, like, basically, you just, like, she was more into, it was no question, she was just horny, Pimpin'. So you, it was just like, if you would have been there, she would have banged guy. on you. And yeah. then how That's long did you do what you did till you got your fitted? Oh, no, nah, I got it the first week. I did it for three more weeks because I needed some other, like, accessories for my stuff. So did you ask? Wait, did you say fitted? I, I don't know. She was like, she fitted. came at me. She was man like, whole, like, every time we banged out, she made, like, at least waffles or pancakes. Oh, so she was, very, she was, she just knew to give you stuff. Okay, fair like, enough. Like I was saying, yeah, she was okay. man grateful. Like, you got to appreciate the gratefulness of old people, man. I love okay, that. okay. Shout out to A O P, man. Sounds like uh, she didn't have to make pancakes. <laughs> Sounds like she had a, <laughs> had a couple of her own. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. All right. Well, you got you got to do what you got to do. What is a fitters? 
fitted. Uh, fitted hat, man. New era cap. All right. Anthony All has right. a not fitted. He probably has a strap on the back. Let me see the back. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a little. Yeah, it is a thing. I go with the. I, I try to go with the fitted. Yeah, fitted. Fitted. The fitted. Fitted. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Our ratings just went way up in the ghetto. <laughs> fitted. Keep talking, boys. <laughs> All right, Bronx Johnny. I'll catch y'all later, man. Run the fast 12 to 3. By the way, there you go. There's the plug. Bronx Johnny's the only listener that calls in and gets his own music. Yeah. If you want your own music, I guess you could request it, but... Uh, you got to be as cool as Bronx Johnny. Yeah, but you got to prove your coolness, and then you get your own music the next time you call. Let's go to Bobo in New York. Bobo. Oh, hey, what's going on, fellas? Hey, what's up, Bobo? I'm just going to start off by saying I'm a bad, bad boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, so... Look, he expected like more this. out of that. Uh, no, nah, don't start. Uh, I've been seeing this lady... Uh, we started off like as uh, working together, this and that, and I've been hanging out like at her house, and like they took me in as their family, and just out of the blue, like a couple of weeks ago, me and her are just going at it like crazy. The thing about it is, she's still married, lives with both her kids and her husband. The husband still treats me like a friggin' son. And and you're living wow. in the same house. We're not living in the same house. I live in my house, but I'm there like so many oh, nights see. a week, and they nobody has a clue. That's a hell of a way to live, man. It, it's it, I don't know. It's that's like, got to be my, like nerve wracking. Yeah. What are you getting my, out of it? Yeah. What are you getting out of it? Uh, you know, I you know exactly what I'm getting out of it. That's that like older woman fantasy that all us young boys have, but it, it's out of this world. And oh, it's, the, I, it's I, just I, the sex for you. Period. No extra oh, yeah. curriculum. This guy doesn't care about any goods or yeah, no services. Cars. No, no cars, no number two pencils. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, it started off as just that fantasy, but like once I like jumped into it, I jumped in head first, and I, I can't complain. You're in love, right? Uh, I'm not in love because, you know, I got to stay with the younger girls because uh, by the time mm. like I'm 30 and you care about like her? 60, I, I don't want to mess with like colostomy bags. And, like, okay, <laughs> so what you're doing, you, you care about her. You do care about it, all right? Yeah, I care about so it. So what's what you, your fear is? Your fear is like I love her family, and like they treat me like a brother and like a son. And you would betray them like this? Uh, yeah, betrayal is uh yeah. I, I, I don't, I'm going <laughs> I don't, I'm going I don't care, man. But I want you to be honest with yourself. Yeah. You're debaucher. <laughs> don't try to jazz it up, you piece of garbage. All right, Bubba. <laughs> I gotta get to two more before the break. Let's say hi to Mike. Mike, go ahead. Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, man. Yeah, uh, so me and my buddies take a road trip to Virginia this this weekend, and uh turns out I meet up with this cougar. She's 36, actually posed in a porno magazine back in uh, 93, and I don't know. It's kind of like Bronx Johnny was saying. They use those incisors, man, because I kind of got cut up down there, too. It's pretty crazy, but uh I don't know. Now it's like I'm being stalked by her. She's, like, calling me 24-7. She's already looking up flights to come up to Jersey, like... I don't know, man. It's pretty crazy. Oh boy. And what do you say when she says I'm buying a plane ticket to come see you? I'm just kind of brushing it off because I, I don't know what to do here, man. It's a tell her don't situation. don't come here. You don't come here. I don't like you. See, he didn't. <laughs> see, this is what it is. Another one. These, these guys aren't being honest, man. Mm -hmm. They end these. They're messing around with these broads. It, he's keeping her hanging on as best as he can. But she's getting, a, she's getting a little too serious. It was just yeah, man. popping old lady day. Now, <laughs> now old ladies don't play the games. Like young bras don't have no money to to circulate. They don't have no money yeah. to do things to do certain <laughs> things. These dudes are not men enough to mess with these old ladies, man, and keep them in check. That's why yeah. it's all falling yeah. apart. See, the thing is, too, though, when we were down there, I almost got jumped by her uh, her boyfriend's semi pro hockey team. They were all at the bar that night, and they're all giving me looks. And shit. He's I'm staying talking. with her. He's staying yeah, with her. Opie for the stories. He just likes having yeah, the you're, stories. You're keeping her around. Yeah, you're not trying to get rid of. All right, it. thanks. Let's go to Bellport. Mike, what's up? Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, Mike. Hey, Mikey. What's up? Yeah, uh, yeah I was uh, 17 <laughs> two years Confusion. ago. I was going out with a 39-year-old. Uh, 17 and a 39 year old. Huh? It, it also yeah, says that it was uh, your. Uh, my, girlfriend, my girlfriend's mother. Okay, it was. Oof. Did the girlfriend find out? Well, you know what? She used to drink with us. You know, we would hang out in her backyard and stuff. And, oh, one uh, of the cool moms. Kind of, you know, she kind of mm. came on to me, got her son to go to sleep, which was one of my friends at the time. Before I know it, I'm banging her in, uh, in her backyard. 
And fucking after that, after that, it was over. That's a sexy story, though. To just, <laughs> just kind of <laughs> your, your friends inside asleep. Yeah, you're yeah, hot no, mom. Oh. How does the mother do that to her own daughter? That's that's the weird part of that. That's all. Yeah, that. there's some kind of resentment going on yeah. there. How do you do that to your own what daughter? Yeah, she, she's she's smoking. I'm telling you. And she, anyway, her son came outside the first time that that happened. He caught us. Kept it away from his dad for I don't know how long. And all of a sudden, we kept disappearing at the same times. And you know, eventually, he kind of caught on. Mothers and daughters hate each other. You think they do? Oh my god, my girl, see, wow. my girl, without a doubt, would sleep with my her daughter's boyfriend one day. <laughs> without a yeah, without a doubt, without it. She's yeah, fifty, I mean, yeah, and her she just, you know, it turned her on to see me hanging out with her daughter. She wanted it. Like I didn't even know. You know, she'd be laying on the couch telling me to, uh, you know, all right. Her and shit. You know, I just kind of just went from you know from there to then, and all of a sudden I'm hanging out with her. Meanwhile, she's friends with my mother. You know. Wow. There you go. Yeah, That's a good story. All right, Mike, to tell thank you. Keep that to yourself, though. Yeah, we got to uh, mm -hmm. step aside, take a quick break here. It's Opie and Anthony Patrice, O'Neill.com. Yes, for Jimmy my podcast, sir. Uh, it's Opie and Anthony. Trying to move on, but the phone's still lit here. We'll uh, we'll talk to Annie. She's from Queens. Annie, what's up? Hi, how are you? Pretty good, man. Yeah, um, young guys, they just look at older women, I'm in my 40s, for sex, and it's a pain. I'm, I mean, younger guys, meaning, who who do we have to choose from? Someone who's like 70? I was online, this man, 70 years old, married, asked me out. It's horrible, you know? Yeah. Well, how old are you? You said 45? Uh, what did she say? Something old and ridiculous. 41. 41, I'm sorry. Eh? <laughs> so what would, what's wrong with uh, going after the young guys for a little while? Well, what do you think is appropriate for a 41-year-old? A 70-year-old man who's oh. going to treat you like you're a, 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 a young woman? Like a, you know, what do you call him? Um, a chippy. Daddy. Don't, don't oh. you want, no, no, when no, you no. want a seventy year old man who, treat who you is, like you're a sugar dad, like you're his sugar, you're his sugar mama? I have no sugar to give any guy. Oh God! <laughs> go. It's all she's, saccharine. She's now. left. <laughs> it's, uh, right. she, it's left. Her uh, no sweetness left. That's why she's sugarless. She's got she's got some of that sugar. cooking chocolate. Oh, yeah, be a companion. Hey, so what? You want someone? No, no, no. I don't want. Uh, listen. Um, I've been abstinent now for five years. Oh, you got to stop. Oh, boy. Oh, I man. Did not, I never married. I was always waiting for the oh, right Jesus. man to, to... What? Oh, jeez. What, please. do you got a long dress oh, and witch shoes and... No, 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 what no. Do oh, like, what do you dress oh, like, no, Lizzie I Borden? No, I believe in love. Why don't you just, why don't you just why have you kids and throw them in the bathtub love. and go to love jail? Love hey, she believes in love, Patrice. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Let the woman be. You're too old. But, you know, why should she have settled? I There's a lot of people out there, they, they get a little older, and they just settle and say, yeah, it's, it's not going to get better than this. I, I'm not in love with this person. We're going to... Oh, you. I got... Oh, and I was trying to defend you. I got two words for you, sweetie. Tick-tock. <laughs> yeah, that's TikTok for you too. No, oh. it's not it's TikTok. Not don't you? Oh, it's oh, really? not. It's you don't not. Think you'll ever be in diapers? No, I, I will. But here's the diapers. thing. Here's the difference between you and us. One oh, is that there will be a woman who will love me enough to walk around in, 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 with my diapers because I'm a guy. You're gonna have trouble finding a guy that's okay, gonna do I'm that for you. Change my diapers. You gotta start giving <laughs> it up. Why would you I hold on to 45 year old goods? 42. 40. 42? That's like that's like having 40. unfrozen 40. meat sitting around on the counter uh, for five okay, years. Okay, first of all, be respectful. Be nice. No, no, no. This is this is respectful. respectful. I'm being respectful. You know what show you called? Here's here's a here's a here's, a, here's a thing. This is this is why you're not finding love. Listen to you. You don't give it up. You're a, you just you sound like a giant parrot. You, you, this is this is the problem. You're not you're not in a bargaining chip. Let me tell you your value. The value the value of women. Listen, the value of of, of women is like cars. It ain't like houses. <laughs> I should That's explain. That's a horrible statement. Because are you married? Uh, Annie, uh, hold on, hold on. Let me jump in here, Annie. I got to explain that Patrice looks at relationships a bit different than almost yeah. Yeah. almost so ninety percent of the people out there. That got bored with their husbands. Mm -hmm. Why get married? I never married because I wanted to be with. Someone and you forever. sound so happy. 
And you wi- and forever is only a, wait, 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 wait. She years. still has hope in her heart. Wait. Hope. She still has hope. I, hope and no plan. I'm actually with this one. I, Boy, I, I hope I, I get hold rid. Hold on. I, 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 I respect what she's saying because there's a lot of people that get married because and go ah time to get married and they settle. She's not saying that she's, though. She, she's still hoping to find someone around her age that she can fall in love with and marry. What is she screeching about though? Exactly. That's let what let I'm me hear what she's about. screeching about. She's screeching because. What do you have to she's say? Attacked. And she called the radio show. Wait, what do you have to say? Let let, let her, her let her have her piece here. What do you say? Well, women have to be respectable and be and not run around and say, "Look, I got bored of my husband after a year or two. That is disgusting and ridiculous. And they're not cougars; they're just idiots. Because marriage is about being forever. I mean, it's supposed to be the mm. best. And may, and you guys have so much power in your hands. You could change the minds of people and tell them, listen. 30 years ago was forever. Why within 30 years it's changed and it's been for a year all on board because uh, he doesn't get me off? I mean, that's horrible. It's, it's, it's totally, it's, it's not even human. So uh, God bless you guys, and I hope you wake some people up to the right way and to marry forever. Oh, boy. Marry all right. forever. That's why I did not marry. Don't they? Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> and that's why I did what not marry. What part of Pennsylvania you live in? Marry should Queen. be forever. Or Utah. Which part of Utah do you live in? Utah. <laughs> You don't Listen, live where I'm regular born people and be. I raised in New York City. No um, way, no way. Where do you live now? New, Am- New Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Thing. This is worldwide, okay? <laughs> it's worldwide. What? Look at the Muslims. We're we have we our have enemies. <laughs> our enemies, not we our enemies. We can't. They cover everything you know, up. Whatever they are, who knows? <laughs> we were right. Our enemies. Uh, look at the uh, Muslims. They they stay together forever. <laughs> In the world market. All right, so we should start beating our women with sticks and 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 uh, uh, victimizing uh, rape victims and and arresting them and doing. Are you insane? Were you just trying to equate Muslim marriages to to, to our own? The fact that they stay together. They stay together because if the woman leaves, she gets killed. No, not at all. What I'm trying to say. How many cats do you own? Will hold till the end. Crazy cat lady. Because they don't believe in. I'm not a Catholic. I'm a Greek Orthodox. Now, how many Their cats do you own? Will hold till the end because they don't believe. I don't think they believe in divorce. But they do other horrible things. They marry many women, so I won't even go into. They that. don't believe in divorce. No, it, it, like the woman just gets killed. Okay. So if she leaves or looks at another guy, you're you're talking about a no, no, you're talking this about savage way of life. Have you ever had a relationship, ma'am? Of course. When. Uh, in my uh, years ago. Years ago. What years happened? Ago. What yeah, happened? something bad ah, happened. In your what happened? She's not well. Why? No. What how, how did the relationship end? It sounds like it didn't end uh, well whatsoever. Not that any relationship ends well. What happened? Seems like what it was happened? real bad. Yeah. Well, I was working on a, a big film. I got him a job driving Emma Thompson around in the camper. Uh, he, I don't know. He, uh, he just wasn't there for me emotionally when I was. I, you know, I had a. Uh, he wasn't there for me, and I didn't want to marry him. <clears throat> you got sick or something? He wasn't. No, he wanted me to marry him and live in a small town in Greece, and and raise his. Oh, kids. Greece! I didn't want to do that. And no, I, I regret doing that. I, I get regret it. not raising, just marrying and being his wife and raising his kids and having his family. I regret that now that I'm in my forties and I haven't married and haven't had children and don't have a family. Oh, a little and regret. Wait out for the guy to come along and have the family with. Just me. waiting. I regret. I regret uh, d- uh, giving up marriage for a career. Just waiting, just waiting. You're waiting. Make it happen, ma'am. I am. I am making. A yeah, she's online. A 70 year old married guy just uh, hit on her. Yeah. Online. She's, You're meeting people she's online. Trying. <laughs> she's trying, man. Go, just go out and and say hello to people. Touch people. Let people touch you. Yeah, that computer crap is. You know, that ain't gonna you? get the job done. Are you on well, Match. dot com or something? I tell you guys that a lot of people respect your opinions. No, they don't. And when you, uh, yes, they do. And Not you really. Can change you can change the world, and I hope what? you you change it to women. Don't leave their. If I could change the world, that would be the last on my list. <laughs> you know, they leave their husbands because the sex isn't good. That's ridiculous. You're supposed to be. But a you're a person who has not been satisfied sexually to even say that. You can't qualify that statement because right. you haven't had what? good sex. All right, hold on, I hold on. Hold on, we got Steve. All right, hold on, Annie. I'm going to try to set you up here. We got we got Steve in Westchester. Steve, you're on with Annie from Queens. We might have a love match here, believe it or not. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, oh Steve. There was your phone. chance, Annie, and he has a bad there cell phone. I, I, look, you, you heard him. Uh, Steve. Yeah. 
Oh, boy. I'm not even kidding. Steve says, I want to marry Annie. I've been on over 50 dates in the past year, and it's just horrible to be in your 40s. And look Can I ask you 50 dates in the past year? So, 50. I, I believe 50. So what are, you, what, are, what, are you, what are these dates like for you? What are they like? Shut up. Steve, what what are the dates like? Well, I don't want I, I don't want to make an effort and go far from my home, so I I meet them usually. We're talking to a cyber whore, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my God! So what do they do? They. I at a cafe because at first we used to go out to dinner. I don't want them oh, wasting money, shit. you know. So. I mean, I was with this. I was with I you. Told you. Why don't I was you ever, why? Hey, why? I, why do you I, do this to me? I can I, hear I, I it. I right have a little bit of an open mind the, uh, these days. I was with her, but man, this is. And you're not gonna have sex till marriage, right, Andy? Um, I no, don't know. Wait, you're not having sex? No, I'm not a virgin. You haven't had sex in five years, but you're doing other things, right? I'm not a virgin. <laughs> Like yeah, but when I you to be a nun. No, the oh, truth just is, spit I, one out as, I, I, as I, I, I'm <laughs> picturing her looking yeah. like a pit, like one of the the whores that um that Jack the Ripper killed. She's dressed. <laughs> Her wig, she has some long okay, are boots. Okay, you some kind of a computer that's typing all this to you so you could come up with stuff? No, that, we're kind of brilliant, to be honest with you. She just sounds... She, I, you, I you sound just like sound, a no, 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 not that a whore. I'm I picturing... Sound, do I sound like those women? Ma'am, 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 there's a, there's a thing called context, and I'm sure time? since you've been locked hold in... On, hold on, hold on. You, know, you, you know, brought up Africa, Kenya. Would you go to Kenya for some young black uh, males? Absolutely not. Are you not? <laughs> better, better, better thing. Are you crazy? Kathy Bates from that movie where she killed her husband. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Listen, I definitely know Kathy Bates. What's the What's the, the movie right with now. Kathy Bates? Not Claire. Claire. That's uh, who this whatever, this woman is. That's right? the, well, what? Liz Claiborne. Liz like that. Cla no, Liz like Claiborne. Liz, exactly. I know what you. <laughs> you <laughs> sounds like Liz Claiborne. Kathy though. Bates. Oh you, let me tell you something. Dolores Claiborne. Dolores Claiborne. Dolores Claiborne. Like that. That's right. this woman. Hey, I like Annie. A I, I, I like don't Annie. dislike Annie, but she's Dolores Claiborne. She doesn't want to go to Kenya for young black males. She oh, thinks no, I'm you nuts. If she gets a hold of you, she's going to break your ankles with a hammer. What is she doing, though, on the dates if she hasn't had sex in five years? <laughs> Go to, I used to, yeah, they wanted to take me. Then I said, no, no, we're going to go for either coffee or tea. I don't want you spending money because then it turns out they spend money. You, they, you owe them something. Guilty. Oh, 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 yeah. this one guy, this one guy, he didn't even want to pay for the dinner. And I'm from a generation. <laughs> and then I realized, look, they, uh, it's only right to go 50-50. You know, I mean, I don't know these people. They want to take You know what? Dinner. That If a guy isn't willing to pay for dinner or, or, or he wants to go 50-50, run. No, no, she, does, she doesn't want the Wait, guy you don't to want, pay. You don't because want then she's she obligated. Them. Oh, really? She, she owes him something. He had to be a gentleman, you know. He should have been a gentleman. What are you looking for in these dates? I'm looking for a long-term relationship leading to marriage. What else? Is that? Holy oh, mother of God. How are you going to do right. that when these guys are just out trying to get some? Yeah, but what? maybe she runs into one that uh, isn't. I don't yeah. know. It happens all the time. It's a race to who kills who. She's probably just. She's probably ugly. Oh, Jesus! I used to do stand up in New York. Um, anyway, I'm not going to even say. My name. She looks. She's Kathy Bates. No, I. Not, I don't look like Kathy Bates. Okay. I, I kind of like. Her. I used to be with a modeling agency, so I'm not. I'm not. Bad. Oh, you did. So I'm she's just some bad. crazy, good-looking broad. Look, she's got she's got hopes and she's got dreams. What's oh, wrong with that? Man. I kind of like Annie. I just want to find a nice. But man it's scary that you've had fifty so dates in the last yeah. year. Fifty yes. dates. And change his diapers one day. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's not a bad thing oh, to my want. God. That's right. Because if you love someone, if, let's say, look, you marry someone, and yeah. one year he like loses it. Mm. It's gone. He can't anymore. What are you gonna do? Leave him? Oh, the sex isn't good anymore. Too bad. Lady. You can stay <laughs> with him. You can stay with him, but you can get some side. <laughs> no, it's not about sex. I'm I think uh, I think sex is really important to a relationship, not to I her. Don't think so. And these women, these young women, this one, one or this especially girl for the first called, twenty or thirty years. <laughs> now I'm I'm really going to try to say this the right way. Uh -huh. Annie, no, have you had an orgasm in the last five years? Hmm. 
This young lady that called earlier oh boy, she and uh, said she left her husband because it's, uh, she married a virgin and married, and after a year she got bored. Why did you hold on to your virginity? Annie. What did you think a it was going to be? Annie, have you had an orgasm in the last five years? Or ever in your life? Mm. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh. hey, Annie, we want to set you up with a... Oh, my God, if that's your question. But anyway... Hold on, we got Mike in uh, Brooklyn. <laughs> my my dream for Annie is to set, bye, bye, set her... Bye. Wait, no, we... Hey! Eh. She, hey. she oh, hung up. Oh, she, no. She's nuts. She there's, is... There's some men tied up somewhere that oh, said, please, yeah. God, help nah, us. she's this. not. She's not nuts. She, she's not nuts. She's she's not crazy. Are you serious? She's, she's a dreamer. <laughs> She's not nuts, I'm telling you. We've heard nuts on this show. That woman is crazy. She's not crazy, man. Crazy I'm, as a crap house rat. I, I like her. I want to I wanna have a cup of coffee with her. I want to get to know this. Girl. Go out on one of our 50 no, days. You could be one of the 50. I don't want to go out the on few, a few, the proud. I don't want to go out on a date or anything. She's just, there's something about her. I like her. She used to do stand-up. She's a dreamer. Know. What did Mike want? I think Mike wanted to uh, meet Annie. Uh, Mike, Brooklyn, what's up? Hey, what are you doing, Oak? Hey, man. Where exactly in New York City is Annie? She's in uh, Queens, and she's Greek, so I'm thinking Astoria. Mm. Oh, okay. How old is she? <laughs> 41 or 2, I think. Uh, 41, I think oh, she okay. said. Now go look for her. How old are you? <laughs> I'm 48. Do you want to bang her, or you want to get to know her? No, I'll get to know her first before I bang her. <laughs> but, but you don't want to marry her or any, any of that crap, right? Uh, no, I've been there, done that twice. Yeah, you're just looking for twice. some uh, some action. Yeah. All right, maybe she'll call back. Hell gets married twice. How about Annie calls back and we and we set her up on a date? I want to get her like a black dude from Brooklyn. <laughs> what is what is it with the interracial hookups you want to do here? You want to send her to Kenya? She said no way to Kenya. That was hilarious. Yeah, to me. well. She goes, are you nuts? And we think she's nuts because she has she's had fifty dates. That's one a week. That's one a week. Yeah. That didn't work out. So she's got to be, uh, and she's meeting him online. She said a 70-year-old married guy hit on her the other night. And she has <laughs> that, that awful chalkboard scratch voice. It's, oh, I know. And she's insane. She's <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, not the worst voice of the day. She's unreasonable. Who was? The psychologist had. You know, yeah, that was her a horrid voice. voice. It was awful. We didn't acknowledge it after she hung up. She oh. was. She had the worst voice of the day. That lady's unreasonable too. She's cr that woman's un that woman has no rationale. She's nuts. Who Annie? Oh, I'm surprised. Yeah, got fifty rape cases out right now in Queens. She's not, she's not telling us everything. He touched me. Oh my god! He shake her hand. Yeah. She runs down the street screaming for the cops. I can. She's nuts. She stopped short of something. Whether I, I think she might have been sick. Something. Yeah, pills. She take pills. Nah. Mental pills. She Mental has, pills? She has one of them conditions. Uh, Steve. Mental pills. <laughs> Idaho, what's up, Steve? Hey, guys. Uh, I hate to call in and rat out my mother, but uh, she's probably a little off like uh, the last caller or whatever. But uh, I don't know. She kind of went crazy after the third marriage, and she started dating uh, young Mexican men. And <laughs> the only reason I know, uh, the only reason why I knew about it is, is uh, she she came over and you know to pick up some furniture with a small U-Haul, and here's this kid. He must be not even 18 years old, and and he's helping. I go, oh, okay, cool. You know, you got some help to move this stuff into your place and stuff. And then a little later, I see him off in the corner uh, holding hands and kissing. Well, holy crap! <laughs> what's did going he, on here? <laughs> did he kid, did he did he lick your mother's neck and then give you the, a wink and a finger gun? <laughs> 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 the kid doesn't, kid doesn't speak one bit of English, not one big bit of English or whatever, you know, so she's kind of interracial there and stuff. And, and uh, you know, at the time, she was 52, okay? She's 60 now. And uh, I know that they were doing something, obviously, because I yeah. says, you know, uh, you know, you know, I mean, hold hands and kissing in the corner. <laughs> Don't you want to see your mom happy, though? Yeah, that's what I would uh, think. She's happy with a little Mexican guy, a little young Mexican well, guy. Maybe that's how young she Mexican oh, kid. Well, uh, maybe that's how she pays for getting the pool clean, <laughs> all intact. <laughs> Hasn't had any of that religious stuff. Have to cut things off. Sure, she likes them like that, huh? Exactly. Well, and you—you you guys were talking about uh, likes the old burrito. <laughs> 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 I, I know you guys were talking about Kenya. Uh, Taco balls. 
He's a, <laughs> he's a fan of the burrito that you get. That's just a mess. It's like yeah. the shredded lettuce is just hanging over the side. Oh, uh, yeah. A little too much cheese just oh, dripping off man. the side of the taco shell. Well, that's like the taco, yeah, because I went to get Mexican the other day, and the taco <laughs> I got, uh, I couldn't even tell it was a taco. Right. Because there was just oh. stuff just spilling out of it, oh. and the shell cracked because it was all dry. and A lot of avocado. <laughs> the meat's just hanging out of it. you got to throw some some sour cream in there. Just uh, to, it has enough sour cream. <laughs> sour cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know how that could be, those tacos. All right, Steve. All right, guys. Congratulations to your mom. She, yeah. It's not Misery. It's Liz Claiborne was the movie. <laughs> no, it's and then we, And then we did uh, reference Misery, so let's <laughs> relax Liz on Clay that. Born, what is that, a designer? <laughs> yeah, of course it is. Uh, Christian in Boston listening on BCN. Hurry up, Christian. we got to get out of here. What's going on, fellas? I think hey, you know this girl's problem is. It's the, it's the way she's raised or she's holding on to something for, for, for whatever it is. I'm Greek. I'm from Boston area. And I think it's her own family values that are holding her back. Man, I've heard, uh, she's, go ahead, she's sorry. She's not living her life for herself. She's living it for her family, which is, re which is ridiculous. Well, yeah, uh, do that. my big fat Greek wedding, uh, opened our eyes to the Greek culture. And, uh, you know, I was born and raised, not raised. I, we moved out when I was five, but Astoria Queens, uh, is very, very Greek. And so I know a little bit about the Greek culture and they treat their, in general, I should say, the, the Greeks don't treat their women quite right. I just know one thing about the Greek culture. It's what everyone knows about it. <laughs> and the 300 were doing it, too. Right. The 300. King Leonidas was doing it up, too. <laughs> yeah. Flip over. This one's for Sparta. <laughs> All right. Thank you, uh, Christian from Boston. And if you're listening. Who? 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 Oh, come on, man. Don't do that. <laughs> Leonidas. Did you see that sex scene? with Leonidas and his chick at one point he was kissing the back of her neck <laughs> yeah. stuff going on yeah your highness your highness <laughs> right, we gotta get out of here hey if you are listening on BCN stick around for our pal Adam 12 he's on your radio dial next on your radio dial if you're uh, listening through BCN and who comes uh, next in New York do we even know at this point is it still it's music listen to Rock. It's rock here in New York. Yes. Who's on after Kick us on the edge? Rock. Who's up next in Syracuse? Uh, just tune in and find out. Right. Let us know. Just trying to give them a little, uh, yeah, little promotion. Put everyone today. on the spot here. <laughs> hey, it was fun today. Yes. More, thank you, Patrice O'Neill. Our new thing is more phone calls. More yeah. phone calls. They're more gooder. Yeah, we like uh, the interaction uh, with you, you freaks. And creeps and psychos and Annie, who I like. Oh. <laughs> There's something about her I liked. I don't know what it was. All right, guys, we're uh, off to XM. Have a great day. Bye. Hello. <laughs> Patrice O'Neill. Hello, sir. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You want to do some Wolper and, and Schmitty or oh, what? Oh, that was so fun yesterday. You think I forgot? I didn't that forget. That was really fun yesterday. I should, uh, we should explain to Patrice. Patrice, which one is he using? This one? You. Oh, oh, wow, look, okay. All right, I got you. Um, recently we got uh, kicked off West Palm Beach Radio. West Palm Beach, Florida radio. Right. Ask never to return. And it happens. You know, you syndicate a radio show, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. Right. And we lost West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, the, the PD down there in general wasn't into into our thing. Excuse the squeak. He was uh, Thank you. not really into us. He wanted a local show. Right, that uh, kind of fit the image of the station, which you know they captured they, the flavor. They they rock. They're an alternate alternate rock type station, and uh, so we got replaced. And as much as it frustrates me, I do understand to a point. You know, if it, if it's a show where you you look at the show and you go, all right, not happy, but all right, I can but see what he's thinking. They should they should do well with that show, or I can understand as a business decision kind of a thing. Yeah, one of those deals. Right. Well. We got replaced by this show called uh, Loper and Schmitty. 
where he talks about his awesome kids. They, I, I got awesome kids. They pop lope wisers. You want because, a Lopewiser? Because we his get name is Lopewiser. So he calls it a Lopewiser, and he just makes this sound effect of... <laughs> it, 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 it's beyond Here, here's awful. your Lopewiser. There you go, Patrice. Enjoy. There's your Lopewiser. Oh, yeah. Isn't that great? Great radio? And we basically got uh, replaced by uh, hacks. So uh, one hack and an intern and an intern, a hack and an intern. That's what replaced the great Opie Anthony show. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you have it. And we like to tell people that it's a virus spreading. Yeah, well, yeah. This virus was cured with a little Nyquil. I think they a little, found a a cure and a good a, night's sleep. That's all it took. I think the fever broke. <laughs> yeah, the fever broke. The little. <laughs> I was running at a hundred uh, degrees, and I it's feel better. Back down to ninety-eight point six. I think I might have. To, I might be able to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> so we played some of their audio yesterday, Patrice, and uh, oh, the fans just ate it up. Loved it. They love the uh, Loper, Loper and Schmitty stuff. Who wouldn't? All right. Uh, well, we uh, we start with more audio. Thank God, I couldn't get enough yesterday. Sam's all excited. No, it sucks. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, glad the TV shows I watch aren't 25 minutes late starting. <laughs> Dude, we were in an intense meeting at the other joint. Well, a little chit chat. I love. I love that they think we're just kind of like. Da, 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 we're, we, we're shopping on the da, walkover. Da, hey, that's a nice watch. <laughs> just like twiddling our thumbs. Da. Yeah. Talking to the magazine stand guy. What do you think we're doing? I would like people to think logically. Yeah. I, that's what I try to do. Now, think logically. Why would we want to just sit around and waste time? Yeah, and not. Wouldn't it be a lot easier show. to just turn the mics on and go, keep the energy going and all right. that? Keep the flow going. So if we are if we come in here 20 minutes after 9, don't you think there's a pretty good reason? There was it's a not reason. Because and I decided to hit a diner. <laughs> Give us give us a little credit, just a tad. Just think logically at times, and then you don't have to like bitch as much. Yeah, it's so much easier to go from one show to the other immediately and continue the flow mm -hmm. and the energy. All right, uh, Loper and Schmitty, this is uh, how they started their show to replace us yesterday. Yes, this is the first. We missed the first half hour yesterday, so we went. E Rock luckily taped it at home. Thank God for the E Rock. <laughs> yeah, so we got they they did a like a pre produced minute limerick type of thing okay oh and they kind of bashed everybody that had come within the last about several great. years on the buzz and uh know what i love about this sam is taking this assignment very seriously you got we got like 20 tracks in front of me oh you said sam we need nice more. <laughs> never enough of these two is there is there gold in here or what i think that they're starting to hit their stride okay <laughs> all right here's their pre-produced intro they uh they started uh with yesterday okay get Good a load of this us. You see, for those who don't know me, my name is Johnny. A guy who loves booze, hot chicks that are horny. From 1995 to 2004, I hung here with Fatty, the lush and his whores. But something went wrong in the heart of New York when they gave too much power to a balding corporate dork. Then without warning, the plug was yanked. And before you knew it, the morning buzz was tanked. They said syndication will bring you success. But all that it brought us were complaints in a mess. They force-fed us, a six-foot-five Jew. But shortly thereafter, off the satellite, he flew. Thirty days later. All uh, right, can I tell you something, you fucking cocks? And, you know, and, and we're pretty honest on the show. Fucking Howard gave this station huge ratings, you <laughs> fucking douches. Yeah, at least be honest. Be fucking Jesus. honest. We are. <sighs> Howard had great success down there and then went to satellite. Off the satellite, he flew. 30 days later, here comes David Lee, a washed up rock star with the brain of a pea. Lucky for us, oh. his stay was cut short when they realized his talent rivaled genital warts. And then in an effort, some say was last ditch, they signed ONA in their comic midget bitch. Although the show was at times quite mannish, we knew for sure if we kept it, we were sure to flip Spanish. So now here we are, back in our fair city, with a new morning buzz. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Lopa and Smitty. The Morning Buzz with Lopa and Smitty. 103.1, The Buzz. So now that they have officially made fun of us, I uh, I just have one word to say. Yeah. And that would be attack. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's uh, that, that that's the first the first volley has been launched by them. All right. All right. If we had no well, listeners, technically. enjoy with our uh, enjoy it was yesterday. Enjoy our no listeners yeah. in the coming months. Enjoy uh, how we had no listeners and how they will crucify you. And the station was going to go Spanish if we continued. Oh, really? How about you look at the last ratings? Yeah, look at the ratings uh, that now you have to uh, Could do better than. Could they have been better? Than... Yes. Were we doing okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. We were doing more than okay. Were they going up, up, up? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Ah, please. So this, this is the oh, business we, uh, we're part of. Wonderful. And then they uh, went into this, their uh, wake and bake trivia question. Yeah. I wake and bake trivia. I highlighted today because we don't have the whole uh, wake and bake trivia, but this question was just such a, it, it, they do it at like 6.15. So it's one of the, it's the first bit of the brand new show and the trivia question that they chose. Uh, it was one to remember. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say hi to Vinny and Poughkeepsie. Vinny! Yo, what's up, boys? Hey, Vinny. How you doing? What's up? Those fucking fairies got the nerve to call Norton a bitch when he's talking about his little fairy wife and kids. Exactly. Yeah, well, there you go. There he is talking about his his fucking who gives a shit wife and kids. Really? Does it, that's another that's a prime example of a self-important little cunt who thinks that anyone gives a shit about your wife and fucking kids. Well, no one yeah, cares. Sure. If you're in the market rather... for 20 fucking years, perhaps somebody might want to know what your life is about. Your first day on the air, you're, you're talking about how awesome your wife and kids are. Let me give you a little advice that might help your show out. No one gives a fuck. No one cares about your dopey wife or stupid kids. You got to do that in very small doses. Oh, very small doses. And at the beginning, in none doses. I, I'm kind of bummed Norton's not here, so he could... Uh... Oh, Discuss how they called him a little bitch. Yeah. There you go. Please. Oh, All right, Vinny, thank you. Uh, Dan in Utah, you um, you have something about us being late today? Yeah, I okay. do. All right, go ahead. All right. <laughs> All right, he got us. After yourself. No, that was me. Okay. Uh, first ever Wake and Bake yeah, uh, trivia question. Here we go. It is time for a new segment here on The Buzz. It is called Wake and Bake Trivia. It is uh, your new hosts of the Morning Buzz, Loper and Smitty. Yes, uh, Jeremy Loper and Smitty Balls, a.k.a. the artist formerly known as Whisker Biscuit. It is good to be home. <laughs> Do you understand the, the outrage we're what? feeling, Patrice? What? <laughs> It's this just what we, we have to sit here. I'm going down slow right now, dude. It, like, is, isn't it just? Oh, yeah. This is. This is. Th we have to. This is the business we're in. We got replaced by this. This. A.K.A. the artist formerly known as Whisker Biscuit. It is good to be home, my friend. <laughs> it is good to be home. I don't want to be replaced by Whisker Biscuit. Whisker. <laughs> Whisker Biscuit. Whatever. Well. It just seems. It just seems like Whisker it, Biscuit. They're following the rules, man. They're following the rhythm. They they kind of enjoyable right now. Like actually, let me listen to the chair, bit more. dummy. All right, all right, let's go to Oliver <laughs> in Texas. Oliver. Hey, good morning, boys. Hey, thank you. Hey, I was listening to that poem and I kind of made up one on the spot. I don't know how good it is, but here it goes. All right. It goes, uh, Loper and Smitty. They are quite shitty. Walking around thinking their show's very witty. They walk around thinking they're very smart. And thinking their jokes come with a knock. But when they open up their mouth, hey, here comes a cock. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. The guy, uh, the guy only had a minute to made come up, up on the, the spot. Poem. I give you credit for that. All right, let's get back to the, the whisker biscuit. It, it is good to be home, my friend. <laughs> it is good to be home. And uh, unlike the past two years, you can actually win things now in the morning. Yeah, so uh, we have a Morning Buzz uh, prize pack. Boy, is that another shot at us? I guess so. Was that a shot at us, Loper and Schmitty? You, you guys were dopes. Giving, you weren't giving away prize packs. Uh, See, that's uh, the, that, see. that's going to get the ratings yeah, uh, yeah, flying. Giving away Lincoln Park fucking CDs is going to get the ratings up. Was that another shot? Fuck. Well, this business fucking blows. Yeah. 
two years, you can actually win things now in the morning. Wow. Yeah, so uh, we have a Morning Buzz sure uh, I... prize pack. It's been a long time since the Morning, morning Buzz prize pack is back. And yes. uh, if you can score today's Wake and Make Trivia question, we will set you up. So uh, without any further ado, Mr. Smitty Balls, if you will, uh, sir, give us our Wake and Make Trivia question. Balls. The category. Yeah. <laughs> what is I that? think it's a takeoff on, like, sweaty balls. Like, you got oh. Smitty Balls. What a douche. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Ah. <laughs> prize packs. They're proud. They're proud that they can give away prize packs. Prize packs. That's what they're doing. Does anyone else feel my pain? That's all they, I need to know. They, they, uh, I can't, I can't, I, they're bragging about the fact they can give away prize packs, that they play uh, music in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Less talking. And they could, like, give people lope wisers. <laughs> oh, and, and Smitty Balls is with them. <laughs> Who used to be Whisket Biscuit. Whisket <laughs> Biscuit. That's his name now. Whisket Biscuit. <laughs> Smitty Balls. God. Mr. Smitty this... Balls, if you will, uh, sir, give us our Wake and Bake trivia question. The category. Lighthouses. I love lighthouses. Lighthouses are the best. Lighthouses. <laughs> Holy mother of fucking cock. Are you shitting me? Lighthouses are the best. I love lighthouses. What are you, a merchant marine? What do you love seamen? You I love lighthouses. <laughs> I want to make lighthouse, lighthouse movies. movies. If are, this isn't enough <laughs> ammo for the the pests to uh, attack, are they doing lighthouse trivia? Yes. Did we get replaced by lighthouse <laughs> trivia? Dude, this is the shit we should have been doing. Lighthouse trivia. Lighthouse trivia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. Lighthouse trivia. What? I want to see if I can answer this. Do you have the question? Oh, thank you. Start the wake and bake trivia question. The category. Lighthouses. Okay. I love lighthouses. Lighthouses are the best. Lighthouses <laughs> rule. This is the question, people. All right. All right. What U.S. state has more lighthouses than any other U.S. state? All right, stop it. All right. I got the state. All right. The state of who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, holy oh, mother. You got to be kidding me. I'm going to go with Nevada. <laughs> Nevada. At least that would make for funny radio. I'm, uh, uh Schmitty, right. I'm gonna say Nevada. Get it? We need something with a very long, rickety, rocky coastline. Um, I am going to say, uh, Virginia. <laughs> Have you lost your mind? <laughs> I'm play lighthouses rule. <laughs> They're the best. Uh, mm. Five six one five five zero oh, nine nine one zero three. Mm. Five six one five five zero oh, nine one zero oh, three. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Maine. Maine, no, that's stupid. <laughs> You're crazy. I'm gonna go. Aren't with... you a lighthouse fan? I'm gonna go with uh, um, I'm gonna go with mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the state of who gives a shit, <laughs> right? Who gives a shit? More lighthouses than any other U.S. state. Jeopardy music. It's a staple. All right. I'll give you a hint right off the bat. It is not Iowa. It's not Iowa. Not Iowa. So you got 49 to choose from. We're that's like, fucking <laughs> funny because... See, that's my Nevada joke, but he used a different... Oh, you got the answer. Yeah. Well, right now they're not taking live calls because they're in the middle of doing 90s at 9. <laughs> fucking losers. That's great. Uh, all right. That was a hint. All right. I'll give you a hint right off the bat. It is not Iowa. It's not Iowa? Mm -hmm. Not Iowa. So you got 49 to choose from. We are looking for the U.S. state with more lighthouses than any other U.S. state. If you can get the answer correct, we will hook you up with a morning buzz Virginia? prize pack. Do you really want to know? Florida? Well, people need to know. Donna wants to know. 
I mean, in the age of Google, this is really... <laughs> Yeah, contests like this is stupid. <laughs> you could just punch it up and, and sound like a genius. It took 20 seconds, and I, I got Michigan. It's Michigan? Followed closely with 90. Um, yeah. Followed closely by Maine with 80. Say, oh. And you guys laughed at Maine. That was a good guess. Thank it you. It was a good guess. <laughs> Jesus. They have lighthouses and mooses. <laughs> Moosin. Where does the state of who gives a shit uh, fall on the list? Because I thought that was number one. It actually has 110. So <laughs> who gives a shit? Actually, 250 million uh, people. Well, that was day one. Uh, that wraps up day one. We played a lot of the day one clips yesterday. We are now up to day two. All right. With the show that replaced us in West Palm Beach, Florida. Here's their intro. Oh, it's wacky. <laughs> Holy shit, I can't, I can't. What's with the wacky music and the clapping? It's Patrice, go over there. Are those people it's, just hanging those out. Those chairs are Is much better. Is this radio? Huh? Well, what's the matter? Oh, Patrice is I'm falling out. Dude, I got well, he had a burger at 3 in the morning. I remember you said <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not shutting down. This thing is shit. This is, <laughs> I'm not shutting down. I'm just, whew. yeah. Well, it's it's awful. All right, let's listen. It's again. awful. Wow. Well, maybe maybe we're just uh, bitter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's listen with an open mind. All right. Open. All mind. right. All right. Hold it. Hold it. Let me that's get what the, that's what they would say. They're just bitter. So let me they, get the mood here. Did they give y'all a reason? Like, what's the reason they said? They never talked to us. No. They never another really great thing told that us happens. Anything. In, that's another great thing that uh, happens in this business. You just like. Stop communicating, even though mm -hmm. it's the communication business. <laughs> yeah, we're in communications, <laughs> except with people you have to communicate with. Right, and then they decide not to c communicate. All right, boss. let's all picture we're in our cars, we're driving to work, All right. you turn on the radio, we're waiting for your favorite show. No jealousy, no bitterness. And here's what comes on. I'm honestly, I'm driving, I want to know exactly, I want to feel this Okay. like I would not knowing all right. That they're the show that replaced us. It's nothing like that. It's just a radio show. All right, I'm Here we going to give a little dead air. So it, let's just make believe you're turning on the radio for the first okay. time, and this is what you hear. All right. Here comes the dead air. And here's you getting ready to turn on the okay. radio station. The Morning Buzz with Jeremy Loper and Smitty here on 103.1 The Buzz, Florida's new rock alternative. Welcome to day number two. I am so glad day number one is over. It's always like, you know, that, that nerve-wracking show. Now that's that's all behind us, and uh, it is uh, it is time to rock. This replaced us. <laughs> okay. well, seriously. This is college radio. Wait, wait, wait. No, this no. This is college radio shit. Oh. I, I got to go with the fantasy of the. the oh, I'm sorry. I no, I I ran my car into a pole, <laughs> uh, and killed myself. <laughs> the, I uh, see what what our fine do, 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 do. What, what our fine listeners don't understand fully is the fact that behind the scenes, uh, especially myself and certainly Anthony as well, hmm. we're taking a lot of phone calls from people. And they told us this was coming, that uh, we were going to be replaced in West Palm Beach, Florida. Yeah. Lots of calls. So you're sitting there like, fuck, man, they must they must have like a fucking power hitter coming back into the market. That's like one of these one market sensations that, that you just can't compete against. Frustrating, but shit. Yeah. Lots of conversations. But Lots. <laughs> and we were replaced by this shit in the end. And I'm... Wow. It's local. They could give away prizes. Do, well, do, prize, do, packs. Do, do. <laughs> prize packs. Prize packs. Right. That means you get more than just a CD. Probably get like maybe a DVD, a oh. T-shirt, and maybe a coupon. Yeah. Let's rock. All right. Here's uh, the. They hype up how great their show will be in this next clip. And uh, like you said, day one's over. Because all right, first it's the first break, right? You're like, all right, we got to get through this first. <laughs> Crack that <laughs> microphone. Got that. So I'm like, all right, all right. Just got to get through the show. Day one's over, and day two is going to kick ass. We got uh, bake sale tickets to give away today. I believe we got some uh, tattoo gift certificates. We got wake and bake trivia coming up next. A jam-packed show. Stay tuned, and we will let you know about everything going on today. <laughs> I 
can't fucking <laughs> take it. <laughs> Dude, I can't take it. I hope people could appreciate the, the suffering that is happening right in front of their eyes. <laughs> this is the listen. worst type of hack <laughs> right out of college radio. Like, like it. it's so fucking bad. If this is where radio is going, there's no place for us. I'm telling no. you right now, there's no we fucking place. We are misplaced. Place. There's no fucking place. I even said it yesterday. Like if, if like Howard went back to regular radio and they decided to go back with uh, Howard down there, you know, it'd be frustrating. But you would at least understand why that would happen. Had success. He's got a great track record. Blah blah blah. Yeah. I know. I'm saying that people are like, what does he really lose his mind? No, but we do try to be honest on this show. But to be replaced by <clears throat> this, I don't know what this is. This, this is hack small market radio that's not even good enough to be the top fucking show in a small market. Well, uh, Loper and Schmitty take a call that insults O and A. Right. It is one hundred three point one. The Buzz, Florida's new rock alternative. It is the morning buzz. Hi. With Loper and Smitty. How you doing over there, buddy? Chillin'. All right, cool. Uh, you know what? Phones are ringing. Uh, Let's take some phone calls. Hello, the buzz. Yo, Loper, Smitty, a.k.a. Whisker. <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> Who's this? This is Super Dave, dude. I call, like, all the time. I've been hounding John O for the longest time. I talk to everyone. I've been talking to my homie, Trey, you know, Davis, everybody, and... I was like, you got to get these idiots O and A off the radio. You need to just bring back the old school, the way it was before. Y'all have the morning show, do a little bit of music in between. It's awesome, you know. man. Uh, five six one five five zero nine one zero three. Yeah, give him a call. We'll get in trouble for this too. Trust me. Hey, if you they're watch. gonna fucking bash us, you watch. Fair game, motherfucker. You watch. Fair game. Uh, just kill. That's great. Take a call trashing us, and you haven't even done anything on your show yet. That's, yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah. At least entertain your audience, and then uh, well, day, after a while, you can eh? bash whoever you want. Oh, yeah, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, day two, we're up to Wake and Bake Trivia. Again? Oh, yeah. Well, Is this we, every day? We played the one from yesterday, the Lighthouse Trivia. Let's see what uh, today's uh, Wake and Bake Trivia Gee, is. I hope it's Caboose Trivia. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got to do trivia, man. Thanks for the call, bro. All right, man, no problem. I'll be calling you guys a lot, man. Cool. Mm, All right, man, take it easy. Keep it rocking. Wipe away the fog and get to the haze with Wake and Bake Trivia. That's a bong. All right, Thanks. time for Wake and Bake Trivia. Do appreciate the call from him, and uh, it is six nineteen. Wake and Bake Trivia time. Go ahead, dude. Very nice. The category today: presidents. The prize, a morning buzz prize pack. The question goes a little something like this: Who is the only U.S. president? To ever been known to wear a Nazi uniform. A Nazi uniform? Yes. Hitler style. All right, cool, man. Wake and make trivia. Holy God. <laughs> Hitler style. <laughs> what? What? I said a la Hitler. Uh, George W. Um, I, I <laughs> have no idea who would wear a Nazi uh, uniform. Woodrow Wilson? <laughs> I don't know. That's before. Um I I got the answer if you need. Oh, do you? Yeah, he was uh he was the president in the early uh fifties. Okay, and what was his name? Who gives a <laughs> shit? <laughs> president who gives a shit. <laughs> hey, we gotta do trivia, man. Thanks for the call, bro. Oh, well, here's the answer, I guess. Oh. All right, 550-9103 or toll-free at 866-954-ROCK. What is your guess? Hey, anyone get it? Uh, not yet, dude. Go ahead. Uh, is it Reagan? Yes, it is Ronald Reagan. Uh, first guess, very, very good. <laughs> the reason, if you're wondering... This guy is the epitome of wake and bake trivia right here. Whatever, bro. Uh, the reason Ronald Reagan wore a Nazi uniform is because before his presidential career... 
He was an actor. Get out of here. He played a Nazi in the 1942 like film. A Nazi, bro? Yes, a Nazi bro. <laughs> he played one in the 1942 okay. film Desperate Journey. <laughs> Have you ever seen that film? Yeah, like 17 uh, times. <laughs> okay, man. Well, hang on one second. We'll get your morning bus prize back, okay? <laughs> hang on All one right. second. <laughs> the hilarity's so it, out of control that he can't help himself. It, it, it's <laughs> the fake laughing, the fake applause because someone answered a question right oh god these are all so... the things we refuse to do on our show always have refused it, it, to do. it's what it's what like anyone would refuse to do why would you do these this is such small market shit fucking radio it, it's just shit radio <sighs> presidential trivia Let's go to fucking lighthouses. Let's go to David, Wisconsin. Dave. Hey, man. And oh, yeah, that show really isn't all that bad. I mean, all they're trying to do is catch the local. I <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's pet. Uh, very good. Let's say hi to Danny in Louisiana. Danny, what's up? Hey, guys. Love you. Love the show. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, hey, man, like, Whisker Biscuit's got to be the stupidest radio name I've ever heard of since Sex Bagel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it uh, similar? There's a biscuit. we got to do the top ten worst, bagel. worst radio names of all time. Mine might be in there. Sex Bagel well, is Mine top. was a nickname no. as a kid. I didn't make it uh, for the radio. Sex Bagel. Sex Bagel's up there. It's the worst, <laughs> I think. Number one. <laughs> Bubba the Love Sponge is way up there. Yeah, that's a bad one. Uh, whisker Biscuit. Whisker Biscuit or whisker. Schmitty Balls. Schmitty Balls. <laughs> Free Beer and Hot Wings got to be up there. Yeah, that's Free Beer and bad. Hot Wings is awful. All right, well, uh, Schmitty does the sports smack. How come I'm getting a little thirsty? I haven't had a, a Oh, you want a Lopewizer? Hey, can we get Anthony a Lopewizer? Hey, where's my uh, Lopewizer? A-Rock, wake the fuck up! Come on, A-Rock. He's writing something. He's... <laughs> hope it's his last will and oh. testament. Oh. Uh, oh, nice. Can Creamy. I point something out? Iraq's whole job when we get to XM is sit there and wait for a cue. And it could be two minutes. It could be 20 minutes. Just wait, though. And if we finally had to go to him, and I, I don't give a shit oh, you're writing. Oh, oh, boy. I can multitask. Oh, boy. Here he comes, and he's pissed. You can't listen with half an ear and write at the same time? We were on the phone. What is, what is this? This is different than what? The other phone number, they did something to it. You can't call the 561 number anymore, so you have to call this number now. What is it? 866-654-ROCK. Oh, okay. Six or nine. Uh, I, what, I don't know what that is. I'm, I'm just trying to help. <laughs> what is that? I think it's, I think is it's that a nine. six? I think I heard him say it. I think it's a nine. Nine, five, four. Oh, my God. Shut Jeez. up for two minutes! <laughs> oh, my God. 866-954-ROCK. <laughs> All right. Well, let's uh, let's uh, get into some uh, <clears throat> sports schmack with Schmitty. <laughs> oh, shitty. The game sucks. It was super boring, super sloppy. It was zero to zero uh, until 17 seconds left in the game when the Pittsburgh Steelers finally scored the a music, field goal Dad. to Lord. win. <laughs> To win a riveting NFL game with the final score of three to nothing, this now makes the Miami Dolphins 0 and 11. I mean, Yikes. you know, it's not even fun. It's not. It. it it's. It's just. It's not pointless. Even. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll give pointless. you that. <laughs> you that said is it. fucking pointless. You said it with the the sports <laughs> music bed behind them. You said it. They got to pick the hacky beds for everything they do. Uh, yeah, well. The hackiest, like. It's all about sounds, remember? Jody in Columbus, what's up? <laughs> I thought this was the Listener's Tuesday. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. There it is. Good luck. Well, we got Enjoy. Joy. John in Albany. John, what's up? Hey, uh, you were up here for a while. In those questions for the, the whatever buzz, I think they were afternoon or something up here. It's the same exact fucking questions they were asking up here about Nazi uniforms and all that shit. Oh, really? Um, yeah, they're taking the same shit down there, obviously. Oh, bro. Um, well, that phone call we played yesterday. Eh, whatever. Yeah, right. that was fake. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well, we move on to Schmitty tries to convince Loper to root against the Dolphins, then wraps up his, smor uh, his sports smack. 
Yeah, so Miami's 0-11. I'm telling you, man, like a, a few of my friends who are Dolphins fans, you got to hop on the root for 0-16 bandwagon. I'm not hopping on that bandwagon, man. It, it's depressing enough, and that's... Uh, I'm going to root against my team every week? Is that what you're proposing? I don't know, but you're coming... Then I don't have anybody to root for. No, you're rooting for a draft pick. And you're rooting for the fact that your team... It is so incredibly unique in the fact that they went both 16-0 and 0-16. And 0 no other team has done either. I'm telling you, that's the way to go. My name is Smitty, the artist formerly known as Whisker Biscuit, and that is your Sports Smack. This is this is baby radio, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This it, is like, you know when, uh, what was it, the Archies? They they put out the special <laughs> baby, baby Archies. Archies. Yeah. This is baby radio. <laughs> baby yeah, radio. Like the voice is like a little, yeah. like baby. <laughs> I'm Schmitty. I have former, I'm formerly known. He got a little chuckle out of it. Yeah, I'm That he said Schmitty, it again about much. himself. They don't even talk like human beings. No. Human fucking beings. Like, uh, uh, That's uh, what I think is upsetting you the, the, the most is that they're, they're not. I think any radio guys that ha have that, you know, we. I hate that. Yeah. The fake it's, uh, yeah. it's not a. It's something that you go, wow, how can you hold that up? And yeah, it's like, it, that's what it is. It's like, they're not saying nothing, you know, super bad or super good, but it's just. Yeah, but to, it's just a thing that they were doing. getting some. We were getting some things done down there, and to be replaced by it's this such is what well, bothers me. Well, some people me. don't want reality, man. You guys, are, you know, you try, you 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 speak. It's not you want, a they, thing. They just want basic. They death. just need Safe that. Shit. Some people, because yeah, you know, oh. you know, most of the most of the guys that come on here, man, you know, comments, dude, they'll tell you. It's like the people. If you out there with the people, they they're fucking stupid. Like they're not begging. For what you give, they're begging for two guys going. Hey, Colin, it's comfortable. They don't want to uh, go nowhere. They don't want to uh, think, man. It's such a hack. But well, it's, it's scary business for for some normal people to fucking well, listen normal. Hey. Well, we're on to uh, later in the show. Loper and Schmitty take a spontaneous live phone call. <laughs> then we get a Lopeweiser. What's this about? <laughs> a spontaneous. Uh, Something tells me he's being sarcastic. No, they're just hanging out in the studio, and they figure, well, I'd go to the phones and see who's there. And luckily, this person is cool enough to get a Lopeweiser. <laughs> <laughs> All right. More phoniness as they take a pre-recorded phone call. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, as a there's certain comics, dude, that I get the same feeling. It's not that you hate Smitty and Lo. There's ten million of those guys. That's what's bothering yeah. so. Why would you, you want? Hate why would you want something different and people. real on your radio station? You hate the people. Like yeah. you hate people for even accepting that. Like this comic. Yeah. Out there anybody that I know, who likes this, I would. I would like. Punch in the face. Like you. You couldn't. I wouldn't be able to hang out with anybody that listened to a show like this. No. All right, here we go. The spontaneous phone call. Uh, phones are ringing. Let's uh, take a call. 103.1 The Buzz, hello. Hey, listen, I got a trivia for you. Wait, you're asking us trivia questions? Like, real quick. Wait, what's your name? Yeah, nice My cut. name's Sunshine. What, do you want to stump the morning buzz? Wait, do I win a Sunshine morning well, buzz prize pack? I do want to stump the morning buzz, actually, <laughs> but this is like some old school metal <laughs> All right, go, go, stuff. hold on, hold on. Stuff. Go. Hold on. First <laughs> of all, there's a massive sloppy cut in the beginning. He goes, all right, uh, uh, he goes to the phones, and then sh she says something. It's a she? Yeah. I Sounds like yeah. a she. She, she says something, and then it's cut off very abruptly because she must have said something that didn't fit the call or whatever. And then... Let me let me also uh, fill you in on this little tidbit of radio. There's no way to bleep a live phone call. If someone curses, there's no way you can bleep that. You can dump out of it, but there's nothing that can put a beep in over the curse when you're taking a live call. This is a recorded call that he is very, uh, uh, in a phony way, trying to pass off as live. My mistake. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, Sam. Sam. Uh, phones are ringing. Let's uh, take a call. 103.1 The Buzz. Hello. Hey, listen. I got a trivia for you. Wait, you're asking us trivia for questions? <laughs> like, real quick. Wait, what's your name? My name's Sunshine. What, do you want to stump the morning buzz? Wait, do I win a Sunshine morning well, buzz prize pack? I do want pack? to stump the morning buzz, actually, <laughs> but this is like some old school metal shit. All right. Stuff. All right, well, we can't All wait. Right. Go ahead. Bring that old school metal stuff. Stuff, yeah. Stuff, go. The boys are telling me that the lead singer from Quiet Riot passed away. Dead. Yeah. 
Uh, and we do not know his name. His name's Kevin Dubrow. Kevin Dubrow, guys. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, are, are you guys yeah. like, are you up partying right now? What are you doing? Yeah, we're, yeah, we are actually. Oh, you're up from the night before? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> and we're getting ready to go out and get some more beer. Yeah, well, um, you might want to take a cab. Well, Drinking and driving, driving is kind of frowned upon. And you know, know what? And oh, it's really it's great to advice. have you guys good back advice. in the morning, man. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, uh, hey, here's a Lopewiser for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Jesus. You, oh god, just You talk about me. that drinking and driving shit if you work for an AC station, like yeah, a family hey. friendly radio station. If you're working on a station called The Buzz where it's about alternative rock and living that alternative like, you know, you're a rocker and stuff. You you don't want your morning show going, "Hey, hey safety first." He's got two awesome kids. He doesn't want them getting hurt from a drunk drivers oh drink and drive i don't give a shit <laughs> oh i just don't think a lope wiser's worth that much they give it out for anything <laughs> <laughs> are you starting to think it really doesn't make much of a well, there's no value to it no i'm disappointed oh guys <laughs> A low pricer. What the fuck? Well, it's time now for the dirty word spelling bee. Oh. <laughs> Are you guys ready for the dirty word spelling bee out there on the bleachers? I hope Thumbs so. Up. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Oh, man. Uh, Loper and Schmidt explain the rules and, and give the first word. What's this about, Sam? Okay. Well, it's uh, they get a little edgy. Uh, oh, wow. They kind of, I mean, this is where I kind of was like, you know what? Maybe these guys do know what they're doing. All right. All right. Let's give All right, a Sam. Let's give him a chance. Here we go. Welcome to a game we call Dirty Word Spelling Bee. Here's how it goes, fellas. Okay. I'm going to give you a word, a dirty word. Where's the bed? Very simple. All you have to do is say the word, spell the word, and then say the word again in spelling bee fashion. Just like school, man. The first one to get three correct will be the winner in today's Dirty Word Spelling Bee. All right, Josh from Green Acres, you will be first. Smitty with the first word in Dirty Word Spelling Bee. Are you ready, Josh? I'm ready. All right, Josh. Your first word <laughs> in the Dirty Word Spelling Bee is scrotum. Scrotum, S. C R O T U M. That's scrotum. correct. Scrotum. Yes. Proper spellage of scrotum. Josh from Green Acres, nail in the scrotum. Mm. It's not uh, spelling, it's spellage. Spellage. And I don't think it's about the spelling thing. I really think it's about saying the dirty word. I think that's the edgy part. It's pretty outrageous to say scrotum. I don't think they're really trying to educate show. people. Scrotum. He said scrotum. Not as outrageous as saying cunt, but right. uh, scrotum, okay. Oh. And, and and he nailed the scrotum. Yeah. What's yeah. that about? Like Schmitty Ball's scrotum <laughs> is in Lopster's mouth. That would be the loper, the lop lopster. He pops a lope cock and <laughs> lope scrotum. <laughs> well, it continues. Uh, of course. Right, it I'm does. ready. Rick from Gardens, your first word in the dirty word spelling Penis. is genital herpes. Genital herpes is the it's next word. All right, words. go ahead, Rick. That's two words. All right, dope. Uh, genital herpes. <laughs> it's G E N I T A L H E R P E S. Genital herpes. Correct. Genital herpes. Yeah. yeah. Both good. of these guys very skilled in the ways of dirty word spelling bee. Holy mother of God! I, I, I. We're almost done. I'm by beside the way. myself here. I'm just. I cannot accept that there are shows like this on the air. I can't. I can't accept that there's a company and PDs out there that are willing to allow our show to be replaced by this. Well, that's it. That's, let them. Let them. Let them fly. <sighs> Josh, your next word in the dirty word spelling bee is erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction. Excellent word, Smitty. Go ahead. Erectile dysfunction. <laughs> Just laugh at e erectile dysfunction. R E C T I L E D I S S U N C 
C T I O N. Erectile dysfunction. Wow. Spelled dysfunction. Incorrect dysfunction is D Y S. F U N C T I O N. All right, to Rick and Gardens for the lead, man. Here you oh go, God. Rick. Your big chance here. Dirty word spelling bee. Smitty with the next word. All right, Rick. Your next word in the dirty word spelling bee. I like is how he does that with his voice. Gonorrhea. Gonorrhea. Everybody loves it. Uh, that's, a, that's a hard one. Why would you just say it's, everybody uh, loves gonorrhea? It? Hard one to get rid of. G O N O. Right. R R H E A. Killed gonorrhea. it. Very nice spelling of gonorrhea. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I I gotta go. I can't. I can't take this. Sometimes you just let the audio play, and it says a lot. Oh, it's so easy just to yell and scream at this point, but uh, why bother? When you can just enjoy the awfulness yourself. This replaced us. This replaced us. Josh, your next word in Dirty Word Spelling Bee is fallopian tube. Fallopian tube. Go ahead, That's Josh. a dirty Green word. Acres, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> that isn't even a dirty word. They, they should call this official medical term spelling word. Right. right? It's not dirty. That's not dirt. Fallopian well, tube is dirty. Let me, let me tell you something, man. Dirty. Yeah. Gaping is dirty. Yeah. <laughs> fucking right. Fist fucking dirty. Fist yeah. fuck. Let's think of a few more dirty words here. Uh, oh, man. You know Balls what? deep. Leaking <laughs> vagina. Mm-hmm. <laughs> pussy. Pussy, pussy oh. cock. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Stretched labia. <laughs> yes. Um. <laughs> a- anything but fallopian tube. That's that's a fucking shit ca- biology. Shit cavity. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, you know I'm listening to this shit and I'm and I'm and I'm you know bobbing in and out you know. But these guys sound like motherfuckers that used to be officially. Like, hey, how are you? Hey, Greg, how are you? And how are you? And someone said, you have to get edgier to come back on air. Right. These guys are forcing edge. There's yeah. some people that do it naturally, like the sports cast. You can hear the ones that do it like they just are, are miserable, but it's for real. <laughs> yeah. And then you get the guys that's trying to go, whoa, hey, I'm going to. Ah. These guys are just trying too hard. This is not them, man. Somebody put them up. Matter of fact, y'all should talk to them. Somebody put them up to fucking with y'all and fucking with Howard Stern. Someone did that. Someone said this oh, is right. Yeah, they didn't want to the do progr- that. They do everything the program director says. They That's what their, that their job is. So the program director tells them what to do, and they will do it. They'll right. fucking jump in Because if you second. notice, they said O and A, and then they go, the comedy little bitch, which is... In radio world, Norton really is the little bitch. Norton, his position is the little bitch, the the comic guy. But Norton's not a little bitch, so they don't listen to the show. They don't know that they shouldn't say certain things. They just go, okay, they have a little comic. They didn't go, O&A, you punk motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah. We're coming after you. They say O&A left, and their little bitch, because that's who they can fuck with, they figure. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, these guys, man, are not. They're not. It ain't even their fault that they on the radio. <laughs> this has nothing to do with them. This is they're a victim of circumstance, and they're gonna get attacked. And the company that's trying to replace y'all with them is gonna realize that they're not gonna be able to handle that shit well, every day coming off the top to, of their head. Welcome to the fucking war. Welcome to the trenches. This is the fucking replacement that gets brought in and fucking gets shot. You see this piece of shit? <laughs> this look at this lump of shit. Lump of shit. Well, I, I got tag him and tag him. I got I got to hear how you spell fallopian. I always wanted to know. Yeah. Josh, your next word in dirty word spelling bee is fallopian tube. Fallopian tube. Go ahead, Josh Green Acres. You're on. F fallopian tube. S A L L. O P E A N space T U B E fallopian tube. Josh, you are absolutely horrible at this game. It is actually F A L L O P I A N T U B E. All right, we have one more here. This will be for the win. 
Oh, thank God. i got to pick a good one. Dirty pick work. A, I mean, make this the best because uh, oh, Rick boy. from Gardens, dude, if you win, oh, we're going to hook you up with a Beowulf IMAX experience, man. You're going to get to check out Beowulf in IMAX 3D. You go to the movies. <laughs> <laughs> they send you to the fucking movies. You save 10 bucks. That's wow. the prizes wow. that they were bragging about? You go to the fucking movie? <laughs> and nobody... Maybe they throw in some popcorn. You never oh, know. Nobody. God. A large soda. Nobody would ever do this bit without sarcasm. Right. Who was really right edgy. Yeah. Like there's no way. Like this is this is ridiculous and this is dead serious. And yeah. here's here's the thing. Listen to the callers, man. This is the fucking simpletons are like, oh fuck. And they're not even, <laughs> look at these motherfuckers, and they're not even, they don't even have a dictionary in front of them or whatever to just spell it right. Like, this is, this is great for them. They're, it's unoffensive because, I'm going to tell you something, dude, and they, I, I'm, you know how I am about this type of shit. It, it's just ballless. They're, they're, <laughs> they're taking ballless. slowly but surely any sem semblance of a guy being a guy. Right. And at, at, at a show the other day, a motherfucker said to me, he said it, what I said was inappropriate. And I said, any guy who says the word inappropriate, men are supposed to be inappropriate. Yeah. Any guy who would say that means that he's a fucking bitch. And the only time you should ever think about the word inappropriate is when you're doing bitchy shit. Like if you, you ever think you had to take a shit and, but you just had to piss and you was just sitting there and with your dick between your legs, pissing in the toilet, and you just looking around like, fuck me, I feel like a bitch. <laughs> this is inappropriate. This is inappropriate right now. <laughs> Bitches think the word inappropriate. Yeah. These guys, for them to do this, they're so company that there's no, fellas, I'm telling you, you should just get these motherfuckers a pass. N no, can't. No. Can't give him a pass. No, it's the way. I implore you they to give these guys to, a pass. It's the way of I Anthony. implore you. They need to be spanked. And they and they are going to be. It's not they even going to be. need to be spanked. It's not even going to be fun. You can hear it, dude. They don't want nothing. I, I want to see them under fire and see how they <laughs> fucking react. They're going to be spanked. Cowering no little no, faggots. No chance. How can they get out of this? Let's talk about this. There ain't no way out. How can they get out? Uh, it's not even a. It's it's a much bigger issue. It's just bigger. Yeah. What's the bigger? I don't know. The first thing about these hacks. What's the What's yeah. the issue? The, the The issue is that uh, the this is where the radio world's going, and we're gonna fight right to the last fucking minute. They represent. They represent what, what radio what this is has become in this day and age. This business has become bitch shit. Bitches. Safe, who gives Bitches. a shit? Radio. There's a There's a trend to go back to local programming and it's like okay if you're gonna go local then you know make it interesting this isn't interesting local programming not to your local but west palm this is with not these, interesting to local fucking it's 80 million anywhere. Anywhere. Okay, white people. You are. Dude, what are they doing not listening to alternative rock. Here we go. Oh, that's so is the yeah. alternative rock. That's right. That's this is right. the last clip. Trust me. Right. Let's see what the <laughs> amazing word they came up with as the okay. final. Uh, and and y'all, I will say this: that you are both officially thoroughly annoyed too, because it's not even a a drop of really joke. <gasps> oh in, no, no, no! It's just it's disgust. Just disgust. It's, cause, cause you and a lot of people out there don't understand, like. I'm telling you, I'll say it again, the meetings, the phone calls, like, ah, oh, fuck, you, you know, we were warned over six, eight months ago we are going to be replaced in West Palm Beach, and I kept, like, fighting for us, going, come on, man, and uh, when does it happen? Well, they haven't really found anyone yet, but when they do, you guys are going to be replaced. I'm like, well, that fucking blows right there. We're being replaced by a show they don't even know about yet. So they finally make their decision. There's a long time coming, and I'm thinking... All right, they finally found some fucking really good show. Heavy, heavy hitter. Heavy hitters. And this, and then you turn around and wake up and you have to hear this is what you were replaced by? It fucking isn't, it hurts. Let me ask you one more question. Honest, this is honest to the core question. Has there ever been in any situation where you guys were replaced and you thought that the people that replaced you were good? Oh, I swear to God, no. I'm trying to think. No. No, not, not one. No. no. I mean, could could there possibly be one that would be no. where you would go, no. oh, he was okay? Not not no. a one. I, I watched the uh, radio stations that replace us, and they're doing nothing since we left. And they, they were 
not that we were getting massive ratings, but we did uh, just as good, if not better, than the, the shows that replaced us at this point. I study this shit. Trust me. There's not a not a fucking show that comes to mind that replaced us. One of your last. Not a one. The final word is blue balls. <laughs> blue balls. <laughs> All right, Rick Gardens, nail it, bro. Blue balls. B L U E. B A L L S. And I believe we have a winner with the proper spelling blue really balls. Rick from Gardens, you are the winner today in Dirty Word Spelling Bee. Josh, I'll tell you what, man, we'll hook you up with the Morning Buzz prize pack. Everybody's a winner. You guys tell me who's rocking it with music uh, and not the new Morning Buzz. The listener. Looper and Smitty on The Morning Buzz <laughs> with Looper and Smitty. Uh, you... <laughs> the Morning Buzz. Uh, Blast it right over the guy <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> Who rocks? Uh, let us know. Um, Loper and the <laughs> yeah, Marty Buzz. I was talking here. We got to use the deep voice guy to make this show sound cool. Yeah. <laughs> Ramon. More lasers to make these guys sound cool and edgy. Let's throw some echo in there as well. Oh, that was. Um, Let's say hi to Drew in Nashville. Good. Drew, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, uh, yeah, I, I think these guys make a pretty good point. You know, they want to establish a base with their audience, talking about their kids, and. <laughs> <laughs> See, everyone's nodding off. Yeah, Louie in Texas, speed round here. We got to take a break. Get and tell the things. What's up, Louie? Uh, well, Lope, I'm just uh, barreling down a Texas highway with about 80,000 pounds with uh, enjoying my morning Lopewiser trying not to kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, that just, change I the station. Did, I just see a connection here, though, Lope, um, to the Opie and Anthony show. Is it just me or do these two douches sound exactly the same and they sound like Ralphie May? They sound exactly the same, and they sound like baby DJs. Like there's a weird thing yeah, going on. Like baby versions of they're, DJs. They're putting on that uh, that voice, but they if you put on yeah. the fake voice, first of all, you're supposed to you know go deep. I guess yeah. they can't go deep. Like uh, it's Opie and Anthony. <laughs> ah, yeah, wow. Opie and Anthony, we're on XM Satellite Radio. Thanks for checking us out today. You go down to this level, not I. Uh, 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 I've been run out of twenty different interviews. Like you, you know, you go to some town, you go to, and and I never have a good interview with those dudes. Yeah, what, what dudes? Like, and, and at the that, deep, what, deep voice guys with the always deal. Never fails. Ready? Yeah. I say something that tries to be halfway uh, comply with the fact I can't swear and halfway edgy, and they go. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, Patrice <laughs> is going to be at the... the okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Patrice. He's going to be at the Chuckle Hut this at week. The, uh, the, the, the laugh cunts. Yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. Well, we uh, we want to make believe we're edgy, but when someone actually is edgy on our show, then there's a real problem. we got to get rid of the guest right away. So okay. coming up, we can bring in the fake edginess. We're going to do your mandatory metallic. and want to thank Patrice O'Neill for stopping by. Make sure you check him out this weekend at the Chuckle Hut because they're a sponsor of our show, and they bring the comedians in every Friday to be edgy. But we don't want actual edgy material. Uh, Brian Springwater. Hey, what's up? Hey. Hey, I want to spell cunt on the air. <laughs> Please spell it with a K just so we can all laugh. <laughs> okay, we can spell it with a K. Because <laughs> that would be outrageous. Off. That's crazy. All hey, right. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Sean, Michigan, what's Glad up? you did, though. I hey, swear are I you sure call. there's uh, two DJs there? Because it sounds like Jimmy Fallon in the Man of the Box. Hey, Man of the Box. Um, hey, we're black. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's what we got replaced by, and it, uh, it doesn't feel good today. Uh, let's go to Patricia, Patricia, uh, North Carolina. Yeah, uh, I was agreeing with Opie. These people are just horrid. I mean, I mean, they sound so fake and stupid, and at least y'all are honest and intelligent. Y'all may be horrid at times, but I just discovered yeah. y'all about two weeks ago. I'm still in love with y'all. I just Does love y'all. Anyone else getting the irony here, please? Love it. Okay. Y'all just love it. And tell Opie. They all sound fake and stupid. <laughs> stupid. Yeah, we sound all stupid, don't we? You sound fake and stupid yourself. <laughs> Opie to make sure he gets a GPS for that stalker lady. Oh, uh... Make her wear... Make, when, he, when he gets a restraining order... Right. ...for that stalker lady from yesterday... Yeah. Make sure they put a bracelet on her. 
Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that uh, that so weirdo. Creepy, man. Right. Thank you, Patricia. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. All right, let's say <laughs> That was so funny. Fiking stupid. Fiking stupid. Stupid. Shane, Kansas, what's up? Hey, I just want to know when uh, Anthony became the pen and teller of, of radio. Uh, let me tell you how this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me, let me. Uh, that was kind of this funny. This is bullshit. All right, let me uh, tell you what's going on here. There's a bad edit that's going to happen right now. You're going to hear the, the bad call, edit, which we and the here. beep you're going to hear. I wonder if that was way too inside because we used to have to cut up phone calls. Yeah, they take all the calls. Every call you hear on that show is taken when the music is playing. Uh, sometimes, as a matter of fact, you might even be able to hear the previous song <laughs> in, the in the background. Because they, which were, is hysterical. they weren't smart enough to turn down the monitor. To turn the monitor down. But, but uh, all the st calls are taken during the songs. And then they edit them during the songs. And then when they come out of songs and talk, they play it back as if it's a call. And he's actually acting when he goes, let's uh, go to the phones. We got some here. Hey, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you're on the air. And then he hits the tape machine, and it's the person going, hi. Wah, 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 wah. Why are you looking at me and explaining it to me? Um, because uh, <laughs> you are the audience. Oh. You are my audience. All right, I'm... good. <laughs> well, let me, let me do the audience then for okay. you. Okay. <laughs> He's making the universal sign for jerking off. <laughs> uh, I'm, just, I'm just fucking so taken by it. All right, let's... People are still doing that. Let's go to Jeff in Tennessee. Jeff? Yeah, the reason why you guys are took off the air is because, uh, and I don't think took you guys him, realize sir. it, took him. you spend more than half your time whining and complaining, so-and-so mm -hmm. said this, so-and-so mm -hmm. did this, I'm upset with them. Who Safe. wants to turn on their radio Safe driving to work Frankus. for an hour? Say Frankus. Nothing but whining little bitches. Say Frankus. Complaining all the fucking time. It gets uh, old. We got uh, you. Say Frankus. Say Frankus. Let me say Frankus. Let me tell you where, let me tell you. Let me tell you where you made your mistake. Oh, no, no, I'm upside. Guess what? Guess what they said. Let me, this. Let me oh, tell no. you where you made your mistake. You said who oh, would no. want to turn on their really radio upset. to hear? And my answer would be you, oh, no, no, Jeff in Tennessee. And then he hangs up. Let uh, the let the let the jury see that uh, he gave up. See, so you're not going to mess with someone else. Because he had I'll, nothing. I'm going to let you said Baba Booey for the next 40 minutes. You tool. That would have been fun just having the background uh, take other calls. You're not uh, going to win the OCD battle ever. Uh, Jeff in Atlanta, what's up? Hey, not much. These guys must be filthy, stinking rich because that voice I hear in every strip club I've ever been in. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Coming to the stage right now is the beautiful Portia. Now you Give her a big hat. It's Portia coming to the stage. But you missed the obvious thing. Though. Yeah. Hey, this is Loper and Schmidt, eh? Loper and Schmidt, we're hosting uh, tonight. We don't get paid enough, so we got to do all these bar games. Here at the Titty Hut. <laughs> we have a lot of loop wisers. We're going to be opening up. Let me get it, a loop wiser. Hey, we got Schmitty oh, Balls. Can't give me house. one at the same time as the song, you faggot. <laughs> <laughs> well, rest assured, we're drinking loop wisers. <laughs> as Portia makes her way out on the stage. No truth oh. to the rumor that um, Sean Taylor took the easy way out, huh? <laughs> mm -mm -mm. All right, well, let's, uh, we got a communique coming in. Oh. If you want, not from me, use this from an industry insider. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. An industry insider says, see, now I'm using it as an industry insider. Yes. That's the brilliance of me. Although I read the first part first. So you know who it's from. Well, not really, though. An industry insider says the following. I have never heard a show full of more cliches in my life. Ant was dead on about the sound effects. Hack. What's uh, MNF theme? What's that? Monday Night Football. Yeah. Oh, the Monday Night Football theme while talking about the game. Jeopardy theme during trivia. Bong sounds during Wake and Bake trivia. Horrendous. They are more of a parody of morning show radio than your weekly bits. Well, we started the weekly bits to make fun of the fact that this shit actually happens. Yeah. Uh, what the hell are they thinking with this? That's from a radio insider. Industry insider. I mean, industry insider. It is a, uh, a parody. Yeah. Of, a, of an actual morning show. Like, you listen to it and can't imagine that that's a real morning show. Yeah, maybe in two weeks they're going to be like, gotcha. 
But. Yeah, yeah. Now that would be genius. To just go, dude, we got you. Fuck. That's we, what we got to do next we time. J- yeah. All right, we'll probably be fired soon. And then when we, like, <laughs> surface, yeah, that's what we do. And then we just get on and do that type of radio, straight-faced, all the production, not one bit of sarcasm. That's for right. For two weeks. And then we just go, uh, we got you. If you are listening to that and enjoyed it, get the fuck off our station. <laughs> Go away. You need to listen to 20 on 20. They're too good at or... doing th- this badly to be putting it on. I don't know. Would we be able to even do it that badly? Mm. We should try one day. We should really just try a day of, of complete hack radio to see if it's even possible, if we're that good of, we could, of actors. We could do it after the break. Yeah. <laughs> We it's, need. We wouldn't even but we need beds. Hour. Yeah, that would, and, and questions. Uh, I don't know if I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! That's that's what that's what um is in West Palm. All the arguing and phone calls, and this is this. And is that's what, what it is. And this is what replaced us. That's it. Holy shit! And then people say that I'm self-destructive and losing my mind. I'm not losing my mind. Oh, Prince Smitty. You're right for yourself. I'm not losing my mind. Smitty Balls, formerly, uh, what? <laughs> Whisker Basket? Biscuit. Biscuit Basket. Whisk. Why doesn't anyone Whisker. ever see it my way? Whisk. Why? The Lopeness yeah. Monster. <laughs> Forgot about the Lopeness Monster. But I'm the one that's insane. Yeah. They told me that. But they replaced us with me. <laughs> I don't get it. Oh my god. Well is that uh is that it? Yeah. Thank God. That might end the Loper and Schmitty bit because Yeah, because I can't see anything new coming out. We played two days and they were exactly the same. All right, look. How about this, Sam? Mm-hmm. If you bring us Loper and Schmitty audio, it has to be like top shelf shit. Top notch. Top, top notch. None right. of that none of that cheap vodka. We gotta go fucking top shelf. Right. No bar rack, Schmitty. No. <laughs> so want a nice Guinness, something nice. Yeah. One more day of listening to... Uh, but it has to be top. One more day. Top shelf vodka. Look, did you, no. I, I think I missed something in the bathroom, but I don't well, know if this suggestion is already made. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you guys, right? This would be yeah. fun. Uh-huh. And if I could possibly join in. Oh, it's just do an entire... Hey, hi, ho, show. <laughs> okay. Did you already suggest that? Are you uh, feeling all right? Yeah. I was That's in the bathroom. exactly what I no, said. No, you were sitting there the whole time. I'm, I, I said, fucking went to take a piss in that smelly bathroom. Oh, You might have Alzheimer's. All right, I'm just making sure. And I'd like to join in. I really would like yeah. to join right, in the Hey, about, Hi, Ho. How about, about Hey, hard. Hi, Four hours of it. How about Hey, Hi, Ho, You we do it next? We I want to hey, do hi, a ho. whole show, but it's... It, we we need prep. Ugh. We need like <laughs> like hack prep, which is hard to come by. Actually, it's pretty easy. You just get that stupid. Oh 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 oh. Yeah. Wait, let's uh, get this on the air. Oh um, my, right. Jim on Long Island. What's up, Jim? O and A. How are you? Hey, buddy. Hi. Listen, I I just had to wake myself up from a nap. I finally got through to this coal screener down there, and this jagged is actually trying to explain to everybody why they're good and why O&A like, really didn't take off down there. I says, I'd rather jam knitting needles in my eyes and listen to these two parents. Well, hold on, let's be, what was his answer? His answer was that we really never got O&A down here. We were really a rock-hard station, and uh, you know, we're really trying to get the rock message across. Plus, he spent about five minutes trying to figure out where I was from. Apparently, uh, the pests are doing their job and getting through to them and uh, annoying them a little but bit. But that's yeah. not rock station type hosts. No. They didn't, they that's didn't. like, I'm not kidding. I, 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 that would be like, I've been around uh, a bit. That would be like top 40 in like the Poconos. Right. That would be I like top 40 radio and possibly the Poconos. Seriously. I remember listening to Opie on BAB when they were rock. Dude, look, man. I've come. Yeah, a, hold on, hold on. I will defend myself. I, I've come a long way since BAB. Absolutely, absolutely. but I absolutely. never, 
fucking did this shit. No way. That's what I'm saying. These guys are a pair of assholes. I always try to be a bit edgy and, and try to be myself. You know, I was I was scared of PDs and stuff back then, so maybe I wasn't able to give it my all back in the day. But I never went down this fucking road like they're doing. Listen, no. guys, keep, keep up the good work. You guys are the best, and uh, the FDNY loves you, all right? All right. Hey, thanks, sir. Okay. Uh, Back in the Thank day, you. back in the day, I actually had a contest where the first person to kidnap a 7-Eleven foreign worker that didn't speak English got Grateful Dead tickets. And, yeah. it wasn't, and it wasn't fake, like, oh, all right, well, let's get some intern or some fucking receptionist to play the part. F fucking two people, I think they were two girls, I don't remember anymore, dragged a lady. She was in her 7-Eleven uniform and barely spoke English. Had no into idea why she was there. Had no fucking idea. <laughs> And, and I handed the, the dead tickets over to the, the girls, and we gave her a few bucks and said, get lost, get back to your job. But these are the people, look, man, these are the dudes that go like this. When you have discussions about things that bother you as a human being, these dudes go, hey, man, it's a paycheck. And and mm. what what's bothering you right now is that you, you have some t type of ethic, and it's fucking you up. Just don't give a fuck and go, hey there, hi there, ho there, unless that's the case. You're going to be all fucked up. These dudes don't, they're just going to go, hey, because there's somebody told, they may have pain in their heart, oh, but they don't give only, a fuck. Can only hope. Dude, we're we're fighting the good fight because we're losing a lot of markets to shows like this right now because uh, the trend is to go local. But I, The trend I, is to go pussy. That's what But all bitchy. I'm saying is if you're going to go local, you know, don't replace us with shitty fucking shows and then expect me to understand and not uh, call you out on it. But if they weren't local, local shows that... Who gives they a shit? No they just did a break of the Dolphins. The Dolphins are 0-11. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? That's what I'm saying. They're not. They. There's no national fucking dudes. They're in fear because they know local dudes will just do what they're told. Yep. You're I, not. They, local and, dudes will just go hey hi ho. That's what they'll fucking do. They're not gonna challenge the system. And you know what? Now we will get in trouble for talking about this over here. I will get calls now today. It's like, but what do you? Shame. And I would, I would say, what do you expect from me? Do you understand our position? How frustrating this this is to us? That we work our balls off to be a little different and, and interesting, and you replace us by hack shit? Hack shit? Why? All right, we'll move on to other things. Yeah, why don't we take a uh, break so I can take a leak? Yeah, leakies. Paging Dr. Leaky. Dr. Leaky. Hey, everybody, we're back here. Don't throw me off the island. <laughs> we're back here with Opie and Anthony in the morning. <laughs> 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 That's our good friend uh, Jimmy Fallon. Uh, Jimmy Fallon. He uh, was able to uh, do that out of the kindness of his heart. He uh, did a little uh, uh, intro for us. That is our right. program for our new radio show. New radio show. <laughs> yeah, we got Patrice O'Neill as well. What a funny guy, man. We were just uh, funny, talking. Very funny. Very, yes, very funny, very gentlemen. Funny. Uh, where are you going to be, Patrice? <laughs> and um, Schnuckles, um, tickle, tickle bar. Schnuckles, tickle bar. I've oh, so many nights down there, popping a few. Uh, Anth Anthizer bushes. <laughs> Anthizer bush. Anthizer bush. Uh, that's right. Would you like a? Would you like yeah. an Opeizer here? Here's an Here's Opeizer. An <laughs> uh, we got Than Adams if you want some of that. Uh, <laughs> and Anth Still Light. <laughs> if you want a light beer. There's plenty of beer that we could actually use our names for. <laughs> uh, we need another uh, music man for our radio show. Well, uh, it's now uh, 1043, That's and what we're right, going to do is uh, play our uh, trivia. Okay. We're going to do our trivia game. What is it called? Ah, uh, we didn't think that... Far oh, ahead, uh, but yeah. We got, but we do got the music bed, so and we're, we're going to be giving away a kind of prize pack. pack. What is the prize we're giving away today, Andy? Well, the prize we're giving away is the uh, Jimmy Fallon edition of Saturday Night Live, oh, featuring Jimmy Fallon, our good friend. That's right. Very appropriate because he was in here recently, boring yeah. the shit out of everybody because he wasn't allowed <laughs> to do his real stuff because we wouldn't allow that on this. That oh. isn't nice, and don't say <laughs> that anymore. Oh wow, we're the new show here, and uh, I don't want. People confuse it with the uh, the old show. Okay, here's a question, and this one is about boats. 
Yeah. Boring. It's about boats. Boats. What is the metal screw-like object that is used to propel a motorboat? That's our question for the prize pack. Uh, once again. Anyone got that? How about once again? It is early. <laughs> you know, people just make it up. <laughs> let's uh, let's go to the phones. Good, Alex. How you doing? <laughs> uh, good. How how are you? Hello. How are you? That's what I said. Did you edit the tape right? Uh, we what happened? You didn't cut we, it properly. We didn't play enough music in between. Oh, uh, damn it. You didn't have time to cut out where you said hello twice? No, I didn't. I'm oh, sorry. Damn it. Okay. We're new at this type of radio. Uh, answer the question. It's a boat propeller. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's a propeller. A propeller. Wow. <laughs> you got to clap. Clap. Because people clap. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Fantastic. I don't know why. You are laughing. correct. I don't know why people are laughing in the background, but it sure helps the radio. I show. don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is suggesting that we give out hepatitis as a prize. You want to give out the hep? <laughs> That would be something Opie and Anthony would do. We're uh, we're friendly here. We're flying to a last wick. We're fake edgy. We're actually broadcasting yeah. to like more of a family audience. Anthony balls with you. That's all I call myself because balls is a funny word. It's dirty. Let's play some dirty word spelling. Dirty word spelling. All right. Dirty word spelling. Dirty word spelling. Belly button. Ho 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 ho! Whoa! Are they gonna uh, kick us off whoa. the air? <laughs> I think we're going to get kicked off the air by the boss. You're outrageous. That's a big one. Belly button uh, is the word. Belly button. All right. Well, we don't have any callers. Oh, well. It's a B-E-L-L-Y-B-U-T-T-O-N. We can do our mandatory Metallica. Why don't we just rock? We can rock a little bit. We rock. We can string some phone calls together, edit them, make them sound very smooth, and one, two, three, and then we can give the prize away. Put beeps in them. What is this? What is this? Just another little bit of bed music? Hey, Sex Bagel, what's this? Ah, it's our own Sex Bagel. Sex Bagel! You know, I just want to tell people what I've been up to the past few years. <laughs> One more. What are you? Uh, because we've been off the air the past few years, I just want to let people know what I'm doing. I, uh, I uh, have two awesome children yeah. that I uh, bought from Thailand, and I <laughs> fuck them every night. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I'm kidding. That's not, that's like an old show. Uh, oh, my God. Let's look at uh, some birthdays today. All right. Uh, Bill Nye, uh, he's a TV personality. He's 52 years old today. And why would I give a shit? Uh, because it's his birthday. Oh, okay. Uh, actor Fisher Stevens is 44. Fisher Stevens? Yeah. What, what movie was I, Fisher Stevens in? I couldn't tell you, and I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> Fine actor Jaleel White. You might remember him as Urkel. Sure. How he's Urkel. He's 52 years old today. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> of course I am. He's 51. <laughs> they had a kidney problem or something. <laughs> uh, oh, that's great. Also on this date, uh, Jimi Hendrix was born. Ah. He would have been 55 years, uh, well, almost uh, 65 years young. Oh, older than Urkel. He would, uh, you know what him and Urkel have in common? Uh, They're uh, both <laughs> <laughs> Oh, shit. I didn't say, did I? Oh, that's insane. Wow. Oh, are we going to get so fired for that one? Oh, 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 oh. Speaking of, uh, we got yeah. Patrice. <laughs> no, holy. <laughs> Don't call Patrice on <laughs> That's not appropriate. Oh, <laughs> Patrice is going to punch you in the face. <laughs> Patrice, we're not really Ovi and Anthony right now, so don't hit him. <laughs> but you can hit the guy he's playing. <laughs> Reenact that high school scene, Ovi, where you're with your basketball friend. Oh, Jesus.
just my soda just exploded on me fellas, like I, a big cock full of jism. <laughs> fellas, I just uh, I want to get a I just want oh, to plug my, my yeah yeah oh, Patrice yeah, O'Neill uh, in studio O'Neil. wants to plug a gig the ninja in studio. Where are you gonna be? <laughs> no, Where are you gonna be? Yeah, I'm gonna be at um you know. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Uh, Unbelievable. I just yeah. wanted to make sure people knew I was gonna be. At That's a- great. Yeah, give your plug. Give your yeah. plug. Uh, Chuckle Hut. Oh, they're gonna love you there. The Chuckle Hut. Trace O'Neill, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, uh, one show uh, Wednesday, one show Thursday. And you can be white and get in, right? Is this uh, true? I just want to know if this is one of those black shows where the white people have to sit there and go, oh, I'm the white guy that's getting well, made fun of. Oh, I Jesus. Can't, uh, I white, mean, I can't guarantee. Oh, white people are crazy. Yeah, oh, white people. Uh, I'll sit up front, you'll pick on me and fuck my girl. <laughs> you know, I've seen it happen. I've seen minute, it happen. What show have you seen a guy fuck I go girl there, and when there's a black guy on stage and the white guy sitting there with his girlfriend, he usually picks her up, and, and the wa- a white girl usually ends up leaving to get Got that big man dingo cock. That's, That's right. Black guys Usually the you know you got the big cocks. Usually the posse takes the boyfriend to the bar and gets him drunk while, while right. girlfriend's getting dang right And then the they back. pick his pockets and use the well, money to play dice out back. <laughs> There's not going to be any gang rape. At no, no, no gang raping. No, no, uh, just just, jokes, any of that just scary wilding. Just scary. Fun. So I know scary. that you people like to wilding. Go wilding. The wilding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that was in 1991. Is that what they call the kids are calling it these days? Wilding? Wilding. 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 That's yes. when you just all go crazy <laughs> and you throw garbage pails through windshields. No. Fellas, I'm just... Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. be a chuckle hut. Because you're outraged. Uh, chuckle hut. Outraged. Scary. Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, wow. Look out. Look out. Oh, oh wow. Oh, no. That's scary. <laughs> look out, Anthony. We got an angry Negro oh, in the studio. Jesus Christ. Ah, you guys oh, might... Uh, you guys, <laughs> yeah, angry negro. You guys uh, mind plugging the show? Uh, yes, of Where's course. Where's our angry course. negro alert? Alert. <laughs> I don't think we have that. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, E Rock. I like this song. It plays the soul music for our soul brother. Well, just want to make him feel today. comfortable on the show. <laughs> yeah. See, we can relate to you, brother. <laughs> Listen, uh, how many more segments? Uh, I think I could keep this up. <laughs> yeah. How many more segments are we uh, doing here? Uh, wait a minute. There it is. <laughs> oh. Hey, we, you, 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 you want to you get Patrice out of the studio? Yeah. Let's... <laughs> Jesus. Yes, and scene. <laughs> and punch. You guys are fucking terrible, man. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Patrice O'Neill, for stopping in today. Thank you so much, Patrice. You know, it's all in good, it's all in good fun. What it's all fun? In good, is nobody having it's fucking fun? It's all in good fun. Yeah, just having fun. You know, it's uh, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it's, it's like uh, uh, the Ebony and Ivory song. <laughs> You know, we can uh, we we have our differences, but we all we can get along get afterwards. Along. We all it's get everything's along. a joke that we say. I didn't really mean you know the, to drop the n bomb uh, when when I said that. What n bomb is that? Like what nigger? Oh, Jesus, girl, we're in trouble now. See, here it is. This will bring everyone together. Let's sing the song. Ebony and Ivory live together like white people and Nick. Oops, I can't. I can't use the word. <laughs> Think outrageousness. One thing though, you never see the black keys on the piano beating up the white keys. <laughs> but that's what happens in real life, right, Patrice? Where are you going to be? Where are you going to be? Because that's what people want to know. Where they can see look, your comedy. Look right there on the piano. Your brand of comedy. The white. Keys living right next to the black. Oh key. my God! Where does that happen? <laughs> and look, the other white keys don't care. What about this white key is dating this black key, and this white key is the father, and he's all upset. <laughs> it's not hysterical, Patrice. You ought to put this in your comedy act. You ever think of putting this in your uh, your comedy act? 
Don't go put it on the I'll charge you. I'll tell Meg we'll charge you. I'll send you a bell. How do our listeners I'll send you a bell? How do our listeners get tickets for the big comedy show? Yeah, the comedy show. Where is that? Uh, <laughs> the chuckle uh, what? I think there's some tickets still available. All right, tickets are available. And what kind of comedy uh, can the people expect? Is it going to be like Chris Rock? Are you like Chris Rock? No, I wouldn't. I like, like that. Chris Rock. No. Chris Rock. I like that guy. He's black too, isn't he? Uh, how about Bill Just Cosby? Sure. A little Bill Cosby. Bill maybe? Cosby. <laughs> he sits down on a stool and talks about. He waxes fantastic about the old days. <laughs> yeah. Something like that, like Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby. Not necessarily. No. I'm trying to think of what comic. Can I uh, get out the numbers? Two one two five 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 zero eight six zero. All right. Zero eight six zero. That's great. Great. Fat. And what a guest he's been today. What he's, a sport. He's been terrific. What a sport. <laughs> he really is. Fant. What a <laughs> <laughs> I like playing a, a sound effect. Oh, no, you know. Chocolate rain in the no, studio. You know. I did. Oh, I God. can't take oh, I can't it. Can't oh, I can't take it anymore. Shoot me. Shoot me. Shoot me. Oos. That's kind of fun to do, though. <laughs> that only took up ten minutes. <laughs> that was it. Imagine having to do that four hours. Four hours? No. <laughs> Line of the day time. Hey, where is that uh, Puerto Rican? <laughs> hey, Puerto Rican, can you get my truck? <laughs> Try not to steal the hubcaps. You know how they are with hubcaps. I don't know what they do with them. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> He's probably too busy playing dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> they sure like that. I hope there are no chickens in the back when I'm trying to drive home with the feathers going. <laughs> oh, Master Puerto Rican. That's what I call him. Dominoes. Uh, <laughs> dominoes and chickens. That's all we know that's about it. the Spanish. That's <laughs> great. Master Puerto Rican. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I love those people. I love the Hispanics. I love it. Yeah. In the delivery room, when a baby girl comes out, they pierce those ears before the umbilical cord's cut. <laughs> what is it with the pierced ears on the little Hispanic children? <laughs> and instead of handing out cigars, they hand out knives to everybody. <laughs> they the like stabbing the kids people. Baby gravy on the side. <laughs> I understand. Oh, good oh, gravy! Wow, wow. fantastic! Oh, fantastic! We screw the ex-embers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to us. Scott, Tennessee. Um, Scott. Scott. Yeah, yeah, let's be honest, guys. Yeah. This last ten minutes, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. it, it, it's not even funny. It's annoying mm -hmm. to the point oh. where my ears hurt listening to this shit. Yeah, that's okay. That's what we were going for, annoying. We were going for we're annoying. We were going for that since the time you came on XM. We were going for annoying with a little were, bit of sarcasm. And maybe a laugh or two. A la and, and, and some... some um, Was there any irony in there, Athan? A little irony. Yeah, yeah, a dash. It, a dash of it, irony. Here's the, here's the thing, guys. You guys do your CBS show. I love it. All right? You hey, time to bang on the drum all day. Thanks for the call. All right, all right. thanks for the call. Thank you. Time to bang yeah. on the drum all day. Want to thank the great for now for stopping by. Make sure you check out his podcast, <laughs> PatriceOneal.com. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody. Yeah. I don't want to work. Oh, wow, oh, oh, you jumped the gun there, pal. Oh, sorry. Here we go now. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to work. I don't want to work. Don't want to play. Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Hey, uh, Patrice O'Neill. We've been checking out his podcast during the uh, commercial break. Yeah. Very funny, Patrice. How many podcasts you got up there? 25. But then they're, they're like... Uh, Damn. It's like a TV show. Yeah, it's not really like your normal podcast with somebody sitting there pontificating about some bullshit. He's doing like funny skits. stuff. Funny skits. Yes, sir. Funny, funny skits. A lot of good ones. Uh, oh wait, we got uh, we got Nick in Canada. Nick, Greg and Tony. Yes. Uh, yeah. I uh, I had to say I don't like the new show. I love it. Linger <laughs> longer. <laughs> linger linger. <laughs> uh, Chris, Minnesota. What's up? Hey, what's going on, boys? Hey. Hey, I can just tell that Patricia just wants to smash you fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he's just got this voice like he just wants to smash his fucking head. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that I'm came out over the radio. Yeah, he, Chris, uh, <laughs> yeah, he writes pissed off just like, nah. Today. Hey, it's not even funny, and I want to smash you fuckers, nah. even though I love you. Hey, it's, it's Patrice's <laughs> idea. Hey. <laughs> All right, here we go. Patrice, uh, we were watching uh, your president, uh, Patrice for President podcast mm -hmm. and just a little taste for the people but they should check out the whole thing on yeah, oh, hell yeah. Com. the visuals great man yeah well, there's a lot of visual stuff but this is one of the ones with some uh this is some funny stuff patrice explains why he trusts white politicians in this clip i've been comfortable my entire life with white presidents old white men presidents i feel more comfortable when i see old white men doing some kind of shit you ever see a black pilot on a plane? You'd be like, where the fuck? Is this motherfucker driving to where the real pilot is? <laughs> <laughs> or a black doctor? Let's be honest. Black doctor come out like, hello, I'm Troy Mafungo, your surgeon. You'd be like, you ain't putting your black hands in my chest. <laughs> a surgeon? What you gonna operate on, my pinky toe? Because that's the only thing I'm gonna let you touch, nigga. <laughs> 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 Holy shit! But the whole, the oh, whole, God damn, you speak the truth. The whole point of that is to let you know that look, there's some white things I I feel comfortable with too. But oh, presidents is one of those fuck. things that tricked us over the years, and they haven't done a fucking thing. Uh, oh <laughs> fuck! That's that is the truth. <laughs> <laughs> wow all right uh patrice for president he talks about gay marriage in this clip it's quick how come being gay is a preference but tying a bitch up and peeing on her is a fetish <laughs> <laughs> uh patrice uh patrice patrice on abortion so you say you're pro-choice you think it's a woman's right to choose? Look, I think a guy should have, during a woman's pregnancy, if he gets a woman pregnant that he don't want to get pregnant, he should have one one time and one time only during the whole pregnancy where he could just punch her in the stomach. Oh. Or do a running, like a, like a straight up running karate kick. <laughs> How about one of these running, like one of these niggas, like I get a running thing, I go, bitch, you pregnant? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Oh, it's nothing else. You, it's nowhere else you can even think about doing anything. Right, right. Kicking a woman in the stomach, and no. I'm just joking. Somehow, I'm just joking. <laughs> somehow, <laughs> somehow, I'm just fucking joking, dude. Wow. And finally, Patrice on the war. If I was your president, I'd be like, nigga, the war's over. Try to get an exit. Why the fuck exit strategy, right? What the fuck is that? Let's just bounce. Be like, hear ye with a worm old bells. Hear ye, hear ye. Get the fuck out this shitty hole. This hot sandy shit. You feel me? I'm dead. Like that shit, right? I'm dead. Smart. I'm oh, smart as a motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's first hoe, by the way. <laughs> first hoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's smart. Uh, yeah. Gotta make Thank it out. Yeah, tongue kissing first hoe. <laughs> mm. Mr. O'Neill. Mm. Um. Nigga. Oh, let me get back to my speech, bitch. Yeah. Damn. That was me slapping the ass. <laughs> How about AIDS statistics? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what uh, I'm doing damn. these days, fellas, until the, right on, the next man. thing. That's but it's 25 shit. of them. There's some cool ones up there. Some are, some are dead, some are great, some are middle. It's all right. I liked know. your uh, motherfucker. Motherfucker. Can we just play the first part of that? Yeah, they've done Which very one? well. The, the, um, well. Can we get it real fast? I can play it real fast. I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah I know. Uh, yes, I know. Okay. The, um... I think he was talking about the word fag or something, but it starts off with the word motherfucker. Oh, the fa oh faggots, faggots, faggots. Yeah, the many, <laughs> the many uses of the word uh, motherfucker, though, is really... <laughs> we'll end with this. We'll do line of the day, and we'll get out of here. PatriceO'Neal.com. O-N-E-A-L, right? Yes, O-N-E-A-L. And if I, in case I don't someone come... just found a white dude. <laughs> O-N-E-A-L. And uh, 
uh, I'll be at uh, Comics um, over on 14th and Comics 9th. is a nice club. I've been there a couple yeah, it's times. It's nice, man. I'll be there uh, December 28th and 29th, two shows. They're trying um, to get something going Friday, down two there. Two shows Saturday. They're trying, but I'm going to be there in case, I don't, in case I don't see you guys before then. When is it again? It's uh, December 28th and 29th, two shows Friday, All two right, shows yeah, Saturday. Right after Comics. Christmas there. Okay. You come down, man. If you, you right know. on. This is uh, Patrice O'Neill uh, talking about uh, the word motherfucker. You can see the rest now. Hey, PatriceO'Neill.com. It, it's long. That's the only reason. <clears throat> yeah, no. Nah, right. Fuck. Thanks for playing a couple, man. Fuck, it's good, man. Yeah, I'm going to go shit. home and check out more of that shit. Uh, line of the Day is brought to you by BodogFantasy.net. Free life scoring, stats, bios, and news that will help you win big this season in fantasy football. All at BodogFantasy.net. Net. Net. Here is a runner-up line of the day. Can you imagine the choices? Old white woman or oats being thrown out of a helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like that's your choice. Right. That's your it's choice. Like, it's like yep. I'm with the rest of the tribe where I got to catch g- giant bags of rice without water and eat, eat that eat that gruel out of that wooden bowl. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> or just it's or eat that gruel. <laughs> or eat that gruel out of a dry wooden bowl. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta think this is a no-brainer, man. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a tag team. <laughs> Gruel. I like that. That, Gruel. Was, that was really funny. Uh, here's a, another runner-up line of the day. I just know one thing about the Greek culture. It's what <laughs> everyone knows about it. <laughs> and the 300 were doing it, too. Right. Found out. The 300. King Leonidas was doing it up, too. <laughs> yeah. Flip over. This one's for Sparta. That's <laughs> sex. That's sex uh, joke. Fucking up the ass joke. Yeah. <laughs> Leonidas. It's significant, though. It's not hack. I thought this shit was just some shit people with Greeks. Mm. They, they love they, fucking they just in the ass. From ass they fucking. love it. What is ass that? fucking. That's because they had all that, like, uh, olive oil around. <laughs> <laughs> they needed it, they needed it for something. It was easy access. I, I've been to Greece, man. There's just olives everywhere. And that just you got to do you... something with all those fucking olives and olive oil. <laughs> with the oil in the pits. Fuck the pitted it. olives and the oil make you just want to fuck something. <laughs> How could you not? It's everywhere. Green, A black pitted olive just looks exactly like an asshole. should look. <laughs> 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 Look at this idiot. Uh, who? Oh, geez. Ellen? Oh, yeah, Ellen Dance. I know. I was just idiot. looking at that, and, and I just... She doesn't have to do that. That's the kicker. weird part. Uh, no, it's sponsored now or something. You know, this is what Look we're... Look at it. What is she doing? This is why I think we'll never, like... I don't know. Maybe I Because dyke bitches are taking over men's places. No, yeah. that's all right. I actually find her funny. I Ugh. really do. But I, I'm like, why would why would you do this? Yeah. Why? why would you dance every day? It, it started out as a goof bit, and now like she's known for that. She has like, to do that. She has yeah, to no, do And if you're a to. guest and you don't come out but dancing, it, you're an asshole. But it goes back. As I found out. <laughs> but it goes Right. <laughs> you, hey, you it's the web dance. jump guy, and it's like she's coochie cooing. I'm like, get out of here, you fucking dyke. I have no chance of making this sexual, so what's the you point? You should have come out tap dancing or something <laughs> really bad, like in 1930s attire. <laughs> It just goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Fucking America eats this shit up. It, yes, but I don't know if they really do. I mean, I look at this and go, wow, are women that dumb? This is what they find entertaining? A, 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 a older lesbian dancing every day? Ones in them? the audience seem to, because they're Hell. clapping and dancing. And, and I think, I, I, I truly believe, even though it's common knowledge at this point, that half the people that go to Ellen's show and are dancing in the audience as Ellen's dancing have no clue that she licks pussy. Stop. I swear to you. I, I, you I know bet what? you I would, that they I would, have no I would, I would fucking argue clue. With I wouldn't argue with them. Because I, you can see how comfortable they are with it. And in general, so like housewives, they're not comfortable with that type of uh, uh, yeah, shit. Yeah, they don't like that, that, that shit. They mm. have, I bet you they have no idea, even though it's, it's common knowledge at this point. They're yeah, dancing, and, and Ellen's, like, getting fucking wet in her pants. Like, oh, my God. I get to dance and rub up against women every day. <laughs> You you're not you're not lying, dude. It's something I bet you. There's a there's a there's an underbelly more... of something that I don't I just don't understand. I just don't think people are looking for that, but they are, man. Tyra Banks and this show and the view. I watched Tim my mother came to visit me for mm-hmm. you know, Thanksgiving. She watched she was watching the view. I watched like five minutes of it. That's this shit. Literally. <laughs> dude, I watch it in front of my mother. This shit is fucking awful. <laughs> dude, I watch it I watch it religiously because it's so bad. 
Right, and I'm like that I'm too. I'm a big fan of watching stuff that is so awful. I'm like I that too. To I'm, I'm the same way. But that was and I get not I, good, I bad. yell at the screen because uh, I've met Joy Behar a few times. You guys know her pretty well, or a bunch of the guys that come in here, and she's not that person that's on the View. Joey Behar is was an old school. She would rip. like cunt, like, <laughs> but but in a good way. Like yeah. one of the dude comics, like dude, she was one of the few women that like dudes was like, oh shit, like she's always a, a fucking soldier. But I don't know why she's not in movies. She's a great actress. She is playing a part on that show. That's it's not a paycheck, her. nigga. It's, it's a her. paycheck. Mm. Every once in a while, she'll let her claws come out a little bit. But that fucking she been in the trenches so long. Somebody gave her a fucking six figures one week. <laughs> And that bitch said, I'll be a, a old Yenta with nothing yeah, to say. Yeah, whatever you want. I don't give a fuck. She bought a house. All right. Uh, fuck that, nigga. I, who the fuck's calling me? Bill Collector's calling me now, and it's just like, it makes you nervous. I used to tell Bill Collector's, lick my asshole. <laughs> lick my fucking asshole. I get tax letters, and I get nervous now, because you got something. It's that handcuff shit. Fuck that. I'm ready to be homeless again. <laughs> Cause it's just I'm your man, manhood is getting fucking shitty, dude. Cause we gotta watch this goofy shit. It's either men like what we like. I saw some thing called Mansers on uh, Spike TV. It's called Mansers, and it's like questions that they ask men like, "How much does a titty weigh?" And it's just like, "All right, that's cool." But that's not us. That's the dumb us that women love. They don't like the fact that we're stronger and play chess. You ever meet a bitch that can play chess? Um, let me Ever. Think. Ever in your no, fucking as a matter life. Of fact, no. no, and you'll never so. will. It's just that's what they turn it into. That she's the man now. Ellen's the man of the relationship. Mm -hmm. That we're just fucking done. Where is there one motherfucking man on TV? One. Well, I mean, a dude like a fucking dude with where well, there can't be dudes on this time of the day. Why? They're all working. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck can you find a dude except this for UFC? But TV, they, they're punching each other though, in the face. I, I I joke, but TV's still old school. They're they're catering to women that are at home. That's no soap fucking, opera mentality. Yeah, there's no fucking dude watching Ellen for the most part. There's Any, no dude watching The View. This is all programming Opie, for women anywhere, that stay home anywhere, even at night. Other than wrestling, boxing, well, you, got your, you got your Jay Leno and uh, David Letterman. I don't do the. You got your Jay Leno's and David Letterman's. There's only one of each. So you got Jay Leno, you got David Letterman and Kimmel and all those guys. They're doing their thing because there's more like dudes uh, that are watching at that time. All right. Mm. This okay. isn't. A, there's no dudes watching TV during the day unless you like do a radio show and you have nothing else to do after you get home. That's the only th reason. It's, I Fuck. guess there's still a lot more women at home than guys. Even Dr. Phil, I watch that shit, and he's always, the oh, woman's always he right. Suck. Like, of course the, the, the woman's woman always is right. Al, it's always the he dude that's no fucking sense. up the world. Like, it's yeah. like. Of course, because. The, the, he's, like, you know women ain't shit, Phil. Why don't you just say it once? Dude. Ball headed asshole. Just say this bitch dude. ain't shit. He's not dumb. His show caters toward women, so of course he's going to take the women's point of view all the time. Of course. That's how it works. When's it going to stop? And that's why, you know, we, we're we here. Because <laughs> we just don't feel like playing the game. It goes oh, back fuck. to the Loper and Schmitty and all that other shit. Fuck. Don't want to play the fuck. That's why game. I don't even... Let me tell you something. That's why Nickelodeon asked me to do something years ago, and I knew I had the propensity in my life to possibly get caught jerking off in a movie theater. <laughs> so I said no. Yeah. For the fact... That I already know I'm fucked up. So I'm not even going to take these goofy jobs that they offer you. If Disney ever made a mistake and offered me a job, I would have to go. And it'd be for millions. I'd go, look, this contract would have to say I get this money up front. Yeah. <laughs> Because I might get beat caught my with dick your somewhere. Suitcase full of glass dildos and airports. Exactly. I might stick it in my grago to Brazil. Some hooker says, "Yeah, yeah." Oh, he I was know you. Double dildo in me at the same time. He does that kids show and uh, he's like <laughs> fucking me in the mouth. Yeah, like <laughs> it's just ridiculous. That's what happened to your boy dog. You know, he knew he was a goddamn racist, dude. He was, phony. He was never dog. My boy. He could have got away with that if he just said, "Look, man, give me a break, nigga. Look at my hair. Yeah, look at my wife. I'm you a redneck." What? I was reading some of the the the, uh, the tabloids today, the really bad ones in the supermarket, and a lot of times they're pretty accurate. That's the weird part about those things. And they said that uh, the Aryan Nation there uh, put a hit on him, trying to kill him. For, you read for, that too? Yeah, for whining. 
for whining about it. For what? Stop whining. For, um, what you call a son uncovered it. Um, I don't. I wonder, Ennis, Roy Ennis' son. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm covered about that. Yeah, Roy Ennis. I wonder is, how true that is. I bet you it is true. Cause they just tired of. I, but but it's like I bet you they're not even tired on the racial level. They just tired of it on a man level to see. Yeah, yeah. This guy Stop. who runs around the world arresting people with no gun. Yeah. And he's just sitting there crying like a bitch instead of going, "Oops, I got caught." Look, I tried to hide as long as I could, but look at. Let's be honest. I'm gonna be buried in an old slave burial ground. And he said that. Like he fucked up. Yeah. Like black people can't even like be happy to see him. Just we would have loved him if he'd have just said, "Yeah, I do." be saying, "Nigga, what you gonna do?" Man? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I say "nigga" sometimes, man. You don't say "cracker." Tell the truth, black people. You don't say "cracker," and I was like, "Yeah, I say cracker all the fucking time." <laughs> and I feel I, I I don't feel bad for him because he just he was a sneak and all that shit, but. Man, what the fuck? Man? This this world is coming. It's, we really getting pussied up, and what's happening is men are now pussying ourselves up. We're now yeah. the ones controlling ourselves, and now women can just sit around and just chill, and just relax, and sit on the toilet and pee and bleed for no reason every month. Well, the nation's doomed. This you think country, so? this country is doomed. We are uh, witness to uh, the um, tail end. Maybe not the fall. Maybe in our lifetime we won't see the actual fall of an empire. That was once great, but uh, had you a will, short run too. You man. will see, yeah. It's only yeah. been what? Was how long has it well, run? The Since nineteen forty-five. The candle that burns twice as bright burns half Nin as long, my friend. Nineteen forty-five. We started 45. running shit. Forty-five. Ever yeah, since uh, that big mushroom came along, we started running shit. But I now would say the beginning of the industrial age. We really, you know, the early nineteen hundreds. We really started. We were doing pretty good, and then uh, yeah, after so uh, the war. Yeah, I gave us like, yeah, yeah, about a hundred years of running things, but you know, we a couple can't even get a main years dynasty of, of, run. We can't get five thousand from beginning to end. <laughs> I'm talking thousand. five thousand. <laughs> we are headed down the road to ruin. And what is the main reason why you think? Uh, well, uh, of all people, um, uh, Pat Buchanan put out a book, and uh, he talks about the things that are just ruining this country. Uh, the the uh, jobs going overseas, the d devaluation of the dollar to the point where foreign countries aren't even going to be on the dollar anymore. They want to go switch to the euro uh, or, or some other denomination. Like everything in the old days used to be the dollar. It was always the dollar. You know, everything was based on it. The stock market, uh, other countries would base their money on the dollar. Now they don't want to anymore. It's like, yeah, go fuck you. What is it, the we war? Got the European, the, the war is a, a part of it. Um, the, uh, just the economy, uh, the influx of, um, immigrants, illegal immigrants coming into the country. There's just a lot of things that are happening that are all pretty much based around this political correctness that's, that's going on. No right, one has the balls right. to really crack a whip and say, yeah. this is what we have to do to really get the country back in the right direction no one wants to do it because they're afraid of making enemies and they want this and that they want to please everybody you don't get anyone anymore like a leader like uh, reagan who didn't give a flying fuck what his opposition said he said no, i'm doing this go fuck yourself and then he did do it well bush yeah, you need a leader like, like that, that. Eh? bush is a douche he isn't like that. So you that. wait for he's, Giuliani to be the president. He's like, ah, you know, I think we might be beyond, we might be beyond the point of no return here. But certain, we're, oh, we're also, what did, what did he say in his book? He was like, we're divided also amongst racial and, um, and, uh, financial lines. Like class. Class and race have separated the country to the point where, you know, there could be a civil war over this shit. It's just, we, we don't, we don't ugly. like each other, basically. Yeah. Basically speaking, uh, uh, we don't actually authentically. Yeah. And definitely we don't like we each other. We just don't like each other <laughs> as a people. You say it's something bad about them, about uh, you say something bad about us. We say something bad about you. We say something bad about Puerto Ricans or Asians or something. And, and everyone flies off the fucking handle. How is a country supposed to be like united when everyone fucking hates each other in the country? And it's just getting worse. And then it's, it's get, also getting to the point where the South, uh, West, will be annexed by Mexico at some point. There's just going to be so many Mexicans they are going to go, we owned this shit a few hundred years ago. We're taking it back. And who the fuck's going to stop them? They're running everything down there. How come we don't make a deal and just go, look, we'll make Mexico the 51st state 
Oh, we don't and, want we and don't hook want... and hook that up. Hook Mexico yeah. up like it's America, so they want to stay. And then, uh, like, would, I think that's gonna would take way too many resources. What it? Some major. It's like taking over. They there. do have some oil down there, though. But I'm that just saying, build a handy. bunch of McDonald's. Just, just you know, America, uh, America, Americanize, uh, Americanize yeah. it. You know what I mean? So you put a couple of, you know, a bunch of Mickey D's and this, that, and that. I, I would imagine yeah. financially we just can't get it done, and that's why we haven't done it. I bet you that's all. It comes down to money. We it, do it, it ain't like we, they don't have workers. They come yeah, over here to work for them. nothing. They're such poverty, man. That's that, true. That would take a, a... There's also so much corruption. Like, you ever see the police force down there? Forget about it. That's what I'm saying. You've got to go throw those guys a couple of bucks. Take over Mexico. Take huh? over. You know what, though? Donkey shows. Yeah, that's a moneymaker. <laughs> right there is a big moneymaker. Franchise. Franchising opportunity right there. <laughs> right? It's, I just, it's just... Uh, yeah, it, it's a very interesting... It uh, stinks because I'm trying to dude, make a little fucking money, man, and it's just nowhere for me to be. Dude, yeah. that's an interesting uh, th uh, thought there, but I don't know. I bet, you the, I bet you it's a financial thing. Just make Mexico the fucking 51st state. I don't think Mexico really wants to be, is what the problem is. But That's the biggest problem. They're not here. just sitting here going, could you please? Yeah, but like the people in charge over there are doing just fine. And they don't, I don't think they want to give it up. I, but I don't think that many Mexicans are coming here fucking shit up. They're coming here doing jobs that no American wants to do. But they live like third world, like a third world country. They come here and they live in a lot of these shack towns you ever see down in the southwest there's like just yeah. shanties that they're living in they work in the fields or wherever yeah. they come back to it and they're they're making this third world uh estate there's down, third, down there's third in world the, conditions everywhere there's poor poor people in this country yeah but you don't want to make you don't want to import more third world country if we have them on our own then we got to fix it our poor i've never seen a, a poor anybody being a delivery person, cleaning up a fucking hotel. I've never seen any Mexicans uh, have cornered the market on well, horse shit employment. But that's why, yeah. and that's why we allow it to happen. You don't think we could stop that if we wanted to? I don't Please. think we could. I absolutely. Cleaning yeah, up Walmart from twelve to eight. Like who the fuck else does that? Do you besides think them? no? Do you? Absolutely think that Walmart wouldn't get clean then. If there were no fucking illegal if immigrants, nobody it, it, you'd would walk clean. into a Walmart and go, Holy shit, no one's here to clean. There is someone that Ooh, would take the no, fucking job. No, it's more than that. It's cheap labor. It's it's uh, you don't have to worry about uh, health insurance, none of that crap. It's still cheap labor. It's all money under the table, my friend. I, I I'll tell no you what accountability for your, I for did, your employees. I did, for fucking from the time I was probably <clears throat> fifteen until uh, my early 20s, I did fucking Mexicans jobs. I did, I did all the illegal immigrant jobs. Dishwashing, can I, can fucking I? Uh, landscaping, all the shit jobs. That's what I fucking did. And I wasn't, I wasn't saying I want $19 a fucking hour. I was just hoping for a little Jack Daniels beer and cigarette money. You want to say N work. What? Yeah. No, it was Mexican work. Yeah, but you you adjusted for you wanted to say I nigga work. I wanted to go. You, I didn't you, say I wanted to go into a life of crime. For our friend, <laughs> did you want to say nigga work? <laughs> no, I think he did. Did you want to say <laughs> coon <laughs> jobs? <laughs> no, I had a feeling that he kind of adjusted that. Let me ask bit. you. Let me ask you this one last question, man. <laughs> I was nigga rich after I did Mexican work. <laughs> let me was, ask you one last money. question. This is I, no, just all drifted into seriousness. I'm gonna ask you this. Yeah, me and my man was having a conversation about this. Is these big corporation white guys, these yeah. these fucking guys that sit on the top and they rubbing their hands together? The harumph guys. The harumph for harumph, harumph, guys. harumph, harumph. Is there, like, it, it was like, okay, Area 51, for instance. Yeah. Are they that evil where there's an alien somewhere and they go, harumph, harumph, yeah. it's an alien, or harumph, harumph, there's a hole in the ozone layer that's killing everyone, but I'm going to not fucking sell you electric cars to make things better it's it, harumph harumph money and no, no matter what the cost is there is there any humanity to these fucking harumph no, harumph guys no not as humanity? far as uh, no. black people know anybody <laughs> no like a fucking no, alien really. is somewhere in a in a bunker and he's going Harumph, harumph. We have to figure out. There's the, no the evil cigarette angle. smoking man. There's no harumph, harumph guy. There's just no, no, 
No. Those guys that sit up in, in the corporations that make a lot of money, uh, they're part of the problem, too, of it, with the country. There's a lot of greed up top that isn't, uh, you know, get, getting the money down to the bottom. Uh, that happens. Is there not one motherfucker at the top of the pile, a run for run for right? Yeah. Who goes, Jesus Christ, man, we're killing everybody. Uh, no, they don't care. They just, it's, it's, it's greed. It's not this big conspiracy or anything. It's just, just 50 million collateral damage. Yeah, fuck yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It's cancer. We That's got the, it. we got the cure for AIDS, but having the cure is, won't make money. So we'll just have something that makes you feel better. I don't better. think they got the cure for AIDS. I they got it somewhere. You think so? Yeah, your people are I don't think it. that. Where is it, Obi? <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Where's the cure it's, for AIDS? <laughs> I, I just know about the, uh, de the Department of Liquor Stores in Black Neighborhoods. I know about that division of well, uh, white I, people. See, I, I know I have about a problem with that. I have a problem with that. It, it's like we, I, I just, sometimes, you know, to be individual and be black is, it's tough. When you, when you stand alone mm -hmm. or you want to, it's like, okay, is it black people or is it me? Right. Now, when somebody says, and, and again, I could be, I'm ignorant on this, but when somebody goes, yo, Motherfucker, you know guns in the in the community, black community, nigga. We don't, nigga. We don't, we ain't Smith and Wesson, nigga. Black people don't make guns. <laughs> Smith and Wesson. Black people don't make guns, and I'm like, well, is that why you shot me? <laughs> it, that's why you shot me, cause we don't make guns. Yo, nigga, I ain't got no motherfucking poppy feel. Is that why you sell me coke? <laughs> I don't understand what, that logic. What about the liquor one? You gotta have one for There's the liquor. There's a liquor store in every neighborhood. Is that why I'm an alcoholic? Is <laughs> because there's a liquor store in every neighborhood. I understand the plot to kill us. Right. But don't drink. <laughs> solve your own problems. Like, don't shoot me. Right. Would we'll solve the problem of guns in the community. Yeah. Don't shoot me. All we are saying. I, I got to agree with you on that one, Patrice. Yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's a, a damn valid point. And with that, here is your line of the Oh. Day. Here, here, here comes the line of the day. Line of the day. Line of the day. I guess they're size queens. Yeah, it's, yeah. They say you know? they, the monster guys are big enough to reverse menopause. <laughs> <laughs> I like the ending. Uh, that's that's the nice. Tiger Woods shot. Thanks, guys. That's nice. <laughs> the cold fish. Cold fish. Patrice, you rock. You know that. Yeah. Patrice O'Neill.com for the podcast. Thanks, man. And comics uh, at the end of December, Thank right you, after man. Christmas, the 28th. That is a on. slick hat. That thing fucking suits you, man. And by the way, if you're trying to look up comics here in New York, it's with an X. Yeah, see you. They made a little mistake yeah. with that. When people are trying to, like, find it. Comics. How many people are going to think comics? It's not, it's not wacky enough just spelling it. Right. It's got to be a little zany. Thanks, fellas. Mr. O'Neill. Y'all can talk about me now. Thank you, sir. But, but I thought, like... We're getting the fuck out of here, too. Yeah, I didn't Are you kidding? N-word action? We got shit happening. Never. We snuck the N-word in today. Kidding? <laughs> Just snuck it in. And we knew we could, because our pal Patrice was in the house. <laughs> oh, man, that's all it takes. That's Jesus. all it takes. All right, man. All right, boys. That was and girls. fun. And, um... That's it, yeah. Yeah, we'll see you. <gasps> Oh, you'll hear us. We'll say manana for all the Mexicans. Manana.